the heat with Hot One's host, Sean Evans. Oh, plus the New York City artist spreading joy on the subways with his one-of-a-kind drawings. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Happy Boxing Day. <laughs>
What is the ripple effect of this disruption? Are we going to see gyms closing and weight loss companies going out of business? Absolutely not. I I don't think so. Expect a year of weight loss advertising, partnerships between wellness and medical companies, and a $75 billion industry facing the biggest disruption in its history. Already pill versions are in the works that could help lower costs for some of these drugs for users. Meanwhile, some companies are considering how the drugs will affect their business. ConAgra Foods has said it might consider changing portion sizes in the future. And Walmart is seeing customers who are filling their weight loss prescriptions at the retailer spending less in the grocery aisle. But experts say it's still a little too early to predict lasting changes. Christine, thank you very much. For more insight, Dr. Natalie Azar is here. We're so lucky to have you. So uh, this was sort of the talk of the table during the holidays, yes. at least in my family. Yeah. Who is a good candidate looking into the new year, perhaps for a reset? Yeah, so when we talk about these medications, first of all, I think it's important to remember what is approved for type 2 diabetes, what is approved for actually for weight loss. But if we're talking about medicines for weight loss, we're talking about individuals who have a BMI, let's say, of 30 or greater, and individuals who are maybe overweight but have uh, other risk factors for heart disease. But just to review, remember that Ozempic is semaglutide, Manjaro is terzepatide. These two are both approved for type 2 diabetes. But then we have their sister drugs or their counterparts. Wagovi is the same ingredient as Ozempic, but it's approved for weight loss. And Zepbound is the same medication that is Manjaro, but it is approved for weight loss. So let's talk about the strategies here for so many yeah. people who are now beginning these weight loss drugs or plan to as they head into the new mm -hmm. year. Can you eat the same way? What do you have to do differently? What should your strategy be? Right. And so and I just want to call attention to this. We, oh, sorry. We, we sort of, we, we sort of, I, I, I got excited we sort of here. answered. No, no, no. We, we kind of answered both in, in, in one. I just want to remind everybody that for for an able, in order for you to be able to get the medicines for weight loss specifically, you need to either be uh, obese or which is a BMI over 30, or be overweight and have another risk factor for heart disease. You need disease. to have certain categories. Exactly. Now, when we talk about what to do and what not to do, the experts will say the the number one thing to, to remember is that anything that upset your stomach mm. before taking those medications will also do so when you start to take these medicines. They slow down how quickly the food is moving through your gut. And so things like red meat, soda, alcohol, especially things that are ultra processed, have a high sugar content, really are going to be difficult to digest. The things to do, one of the biggest things is to go really slowly, meaning that you want to start with a low dose. You want to increase the dose very slowly. You also want to make sure that you're increasing the water content of the things that you are eating, and that is going to help you a lot. A lot of experts will say that it's also very similar to what you do, for example, when you're pregnant, that you want to eat a lot of smaller meals throughout the day and also if you take a walk after you eat that also helps a lot of people will say also to enlist the help of a nutritionist or some experts mm. to help you handle those side effects so we've talked about these drugs a lot yes. this year but now with more and more people considering them do you have to stay on them forever say it works for you is it then and a thing you stay on indefinitely right and so I think I'm not sure we think we have a graphic on this but um, unfortunately um, most individuals will probably regain some weight. The, the number to think about is about two thirds of the weight you lost. You are very, very likely to regain as when the medicine get is off. stopped. Yeah. These are not medicines that are resetting you for life. Mm. I think it's important that people understand that this that these medications are never really meant to be taken without doing appropriate diet and exercise interventions also. If you think about it very simply, there's two pathways in our brain. One pathway says eat less, store less, and the other pathway kind of triggers you to want to eat more and store more. And it's basically an imbalance of those things that contributes to obesity in a lot of people. It's more of a neurological issue than, than behavioral, certainly. And I think if you think these keeps you, those things in mind, you can see how these work together in harmony to actually help you lose weight. All right. New Year's resolutions. Not a panacea, but can certainly help exactly. for the right people. It's nice to see you, Dr. Nice Azar. Thank you guys. so much.
We are back now with today's consumer, and it has been a rough year for many aspiring homeowners as listing prices and interest rates surged in 2023. So will buying get any easier in the new year? Real estate expert and broker Fran Katzen with Douglas Elliman is here for predictions for 2024. So nice to see you. Nice to have Thank you. you. So any trends that you sense ch changing in the new year? You know, I think 2024 is going to mirror 2023 for the first quarter. You're going to see the same price positioning. You're going to see the same type of negotiability. And then I think as the rates start to go down, you're going to start to see movement. I think you're going to see the rental market soften, too. It's already mm. down 2%. Fran, let's talk about the interest rates. This was a rough year. They were hitting 8% in a lot of places. We've yep. seen it start to come down a bit in the 7 range right now. What are your expectations as we go ahead to this new year? Well, it seems that Christmas came early because about mm. a week and a half ago, when the 10-year Treasury yield dipped below 4%, we saw the rates immediately drop from 8% at the top end for a 30-year all the way down to the mid sixes. And I think it's going to continue. And I think that's going to spur a lot of movement back into sale markets. OK, so let's talk about that a little bit more. If the rates go down, exactly what will happen? I think you're going to see people come back into the market. I think you're going to see a lot of movement. The, the big issue here is people have to say goodbye to holding really good rates currently. Mm -hmm. But I, can, I will say this, that you can always renegotiate your rate. You can't renegotiate your buying. Well, and the capitulation in the market is so good right now, you can get a really good deal. That's why a lot of people are recommending these adjustable rate mortgages, right, where you get in a little high, but over time, maybe you watch it come down. Something to talk about with your brokers before you do anything. For sure. If you are looking to buy right now, you're committed. Where are some of the best places to buy? I love that question. Well, we know that Texas is hot. So Austin, Texas, Green Bay, for sure. Um, and then we've got uh, Boulder, Colorado, and we've got Huntsville, Alabama. Now, I recognize that these are all a little bit off the grid and mm -hmm. not your usual. But keep in mind, they're very proximate to the big, big cities that have good infrastructure, great culture, and it's still got the small town vibe. Yeah, those are some of the most popular cities in the country. Austin and Boulder among them are really great places. Beautiful as well. places. I do notice New York City is not on that list. <laughs> is there anything you absolutely should not settle on? Obviously, buyers are, and sellers are making deals right now. Anything you shouldn't settle on? I think the big one is location. Mm -hmm. When the market is soft, the fringe neighborhoods are the first to recede, and those prime locations hold value. And when things are really strong in the market, those markets, those neighborhoods take off. So location is pivotal. Mm -hmm. Number two, I would say, is proximity to school and work. Gas is expensive. Schools are really great. So if you've done a nice renovation in your home, you don't want to have to now move. Right. So it's all about location and proximity. And then lastly, but definitely not least, is light. Mm -hmm. To be able to not turn a light on during the day is a big plus. Yeah, so, you want yeah. good light in that house. That's a strategy <laughs> I could have considered before we bought this one. Um, when, when you're talking, we've been talking a lot about, about buying here. How about for sellers? What are the strategies for sellers? It's a great question. I think depending on the market, right now we're down on inventory 20.8%, which means that the sellers who have really good product that are strategic in their pricing and positioning, they will drive it up. That's what we're seeing because there's no inventory. We're down 20.8%. Mm. And then I think for the sellers in a hot market, you know how to sit back when your product's looking good and drive it up. All right. A lot of good information you can use. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Always nice to see you, friend. Nice Thank you, you so much. Straight ahead right here, Jacob has the story of a new life-changing medical device for people with ALS, how artificial intelligence can help translate their thoughts into spoken word with amazing results. But first, this is Today on NBC.
good day. We are back with your health, taking a look at a new medical advancement that could help tens of thousands of ALS patients who have difficulty speaking. Researchers at Stanford University have developed new technology that could lead to game-changing advancements in assisted speech devices. And Jacob, you recently got a look at the AI-powered software that is helping one patient to be able to think out loud. Yeah, this stuff is really, really remarkable. You know, it's estimated that more than 31,000 Americans are living with ALS, and 80 to 95% of them will eventually lose their ability to use their natural speech to communicate. Well, now researchers at Stanford have proven a small computer implanted in the brain could help speech disabled patients carry out a conversation. This is the sensor. It might be tough to see, but this tiny sensor, smaller than a coffee bean, may soon lead to the next big advancement in assistive speech technology. The device is part of a new brain-computer interface, or BCI, developed by researchers at Stanford University to translate brain waves into words, allowing an ALS patient with impaired speech to simulate speaking for the first time. Hello, how are you? We're just really excited about how far we've come. Dr. Jamie Henderson and his team of researchers first worked to pinpoint the specific regions of the brain responsible for speech. Then Henderson performed neurosurgery, implanting the sensor into a patient's brain. As they try to speak, the brain fires off signals that are captured by the device. Then, with the help of AI, they're translated into text on a screen that can be spoken by a computer. I have faith. We met up with Pat Bennett. Bring my glasses, please. She's the first person to train with the software that's bringing a voice to her thoughts. How does it make you feel to see that the machine can understand you? Huh? It makes you feel heard. Since being diagnosed with ALS in 2012, Bennett has lost the ability to use the muscles in her lips, tongue, larynx, and jaws, making her speech difficult to understand and forcing her to rely on writing notes to communicate, something she continues to do while working with the research team to perfect the software. When ALS started to impact your ability to speak, what was your thought process like? You knew it, you knew it was bad. Speaking is everything human. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The relatively slow progression of the disease in Bennett's case has made her the perfect test patient. She's been part of the clinical trial since March of last year and has been able to provide invaluable feedback to the team every step of the way, something that may not be possible with a patient with a faster progression. What's really exciting about this is we think it's an opportunity to restore fluent conversational speech. After just four months of training, the sensors were able to translate 64 words a minute. That's three times faster than the previous record for a BCI and at least eight times faster than older versions of the tech that rely on eye tracking to type words. I think it really is the next stage. It really does demonstrate that we can elevate the performance to the, to the point where it could be a clinically usable device. Does it seem far away? I think we'll see these systems in people's homes within the next five to 10 years. In that time, with the development of AI language models like ChatGPT, the software could become more accurate. One of the things that we noted in the study was the ability to distinguish between 125,000 words with about a 25% error rate, which is too high. But as you use more and more sophisticated language models, that number can come from 24% to 11% to even single digits. For now, though, the machine isn't perfect. I am nervous. But it's good enough to give Bennett a sense of what might soon be possible. You're going to give a lot of people hope. Ah. Can I, can I show the camera that? That's the best outcome, hope. Awesome. That, that was awesome. Man, I loved, I loved spending time with Pat. And it, it really was honestly remarkable to see all of this in action. You guys saw Pat really trying to verbalize the prompts in front of her doctor. Dr. Henderson says that's actually not even necessary for the device to work, but the, the more brain power that Pat puts towards speaking, the more accurate the, the results will be. And the thing that actually, to me, I thought was most interesting is 
We're also scared of AI, but with yeah. artificial intelligence, you could have this exponential increase in the ability of this thing to translate words, mm -hmm. and it really could be, you know, remarkable transformative for people it's who have ALS. For good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, ALS is such a cruel disorder, and just the idea that there is hope, and the researchers and Pat herself helping provide that is such a difference maker. She was an equestrian, and she was showing us, I mean, all of the things from her her riding life, and mm -hmm. the ability to be able to do that while talking through this technology basically makes all of that possible you know she's used to writing on that on that pad yeah. this is a game changer for somebody like her talking is human yeah. i love that I love yeah. she said that. Human. I love she that was too. she was fantastic great story Jay. Pat, thank you sharing that coming up next right here how a world-renowned restaurant owner and chef is bringing hope to women in her native india supporting their dreams for a better education but first this is today on nbc Now to a pioneering restaurant owner who is changing women's lives all over the world. NBC's Kelly Cobier has the inspiring story of the Darjeeling Express in London. A meal at Asma Khan's Darjeeling Express is a journey into an Indian mother's home. The smells flowing out of the kitchen, the walls covered in family photos, the recipes passed down for generations. Head Chef Khan's not-so-secret ingredient, putting women at the heart of everything she does. I am the only Indian restaurant with an all-female kitchen at this level in the world. That's shocking, isn't it? Yeah. Her team of nine female chefs are all South Asian immigrants, former nannies and cleaners. Not a single one of them, including Khan, is professionally trained. There is no written recipe over here. We measure with our eyes, we measure with our hands. But there is a rhythm that all of us know. This is an incredible plate of food. But it's so much more than just a meal. It's about tradition, it's about memories, it's about women. A mission Khan was born for, the second daughter in an Indian royal family. She says her mother cried the day she gave birth because Asma wasn't a boy. I was made to feel by extended family, by relatives, neighbors, not being wanted, the unloved one, the spare. Khan says her parents loved and supported her. She was educated, moved to London, started a family, earned a PhD in law, but felt her new life was missing a certain flavor. I was homesick. I didn't know how to cook. And I yearned for the food of home. And when I cooked, I realized that this is the one thing. It's a game changer because I can then feel complete. So she started a supper club from her home kitchen in 2012, taking friends and neighbors on a journey into her past through food. Word spread through social media. Her supper clubs becoming so popular, she decided to open her own restaurant. In 2019, she took the global food scene by storm, becoming the first British chef to feature on Netflix's acclaimed Chef's Table. This restaurant is theirs as much as mine. 
She's since judged Top Chef, written two cookbooks, all while championing women's causes globally, traveling to Iraq for her 50th birthday, where she opened a cafe helping Yazidi women who survived ISIS. You have a window where you can walk into a woman's life and change it. My freedom only counts if I break the chains of others. You have a chance to actually put your hand around the flickering flame of a young girl. And when the flame is steady, remove your hands. She will glow and she'll bring light and radiance everywhere. Kelly Kobiea, NBC News. Amazing. That image of the hands around the flickering flame, right, mm -hmm. of a young girl, and to watch them prosper like that, what a difference she is making for so many young women, yeah. women of all ages around the world right yeah. now. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, flickering flame, birthdays coming up, we hear. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Good transition. Well done, Laura. All right, let's spin around those Smucker's jars and see who's turning 100. First up, happy 100th birthday to Emily Walton, a baker from Woodbridge, Virginia. She is known for her famous sticky buns. I'd love to try those. John uh, Nusevich of Honolulu, Hawaii is also 100. He served our country during World War II, and we for that salute you for your service, sir. Happy 100th birthday to Helen Swig, a big fan of naps from right here in New York. I couldn't agree more. She enjoys trying to keep up with her 21 great grandkids, which explains the nap. Francis Ziegenhorn is from Park Ridge, Illinois. This crossword puzzle whiz is 100, and her drink of choice, red wine. I agree with that too. Good choice, Francis. Charlotte Kephart of Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania, is also 100 years old. She worked as a nurse's assistant until she was 80. That's incredible. And last but certainly not least, happy 100th birthday to Mary Jane Humphreys of Detroit, Michigan. She likes to send greeting cards to her 13 kids and dozens of grandkids. Just lumped it into dozens. Well, Mary Jane, <laughs> now it's your turn to get those cards too. Happy birthday. If you have a loved one turning 100 or more, let us know at today.com slash celebrates. For Francis's sake, I'm hoping three down is Cabernet today. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Red wine and a crossword. I'll drink a glass to that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Thank you so much. This was fun, you guys. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, coming up on Hoda and Jenna, a rare look inside Victoria Beckham's fashion empire. But first on our third hour, country star Brad Paisley performs his new hit song right here in Studio 1A. It is going to be a great day. Stick around. You're not going to want to miss it. That is all coming up after your local news and weather. See you guys tomorrow. This morning on the third hour of today, on the job in the great outdoors. This is your office. Not a bad office if I do say so myself. I ventured out of my neck of the woods to find out what it takes to be a national park ranger. Then, a chemistry professor experimenting with a new way to teach kids science. Bringing pop culture and dance moves into the lab, wait till you see the reaction from his students. Then behind a brand that went from an idea to sweet success. We knew that we were onto something. Dylan getting the scoop on Van Leeuwen ice cream and country superstar Brad Paisley stopping by Studio 1A performing his brand new hit song. All that and more today, Tuesday, December 26th, 2023. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third hour of today. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas day. Everybody, have a uh, yes, it was delightful. Thinking it was great, and we're yeah. happy you're with us this morning. Absolutely, the after Christmas. <laughs> All right, so we we want to begin the hour with a question uh, okay. for you. If you go out to dinner with somebody, who should pick up the check? Or well, do you, are you asking it? Craig? Like, if you two went out to dinner, he picks it up. He's got more money. What? Is that the rule? That's the rule. And you have shorter That's not arms. The rule. But that is kind of what some people do. They I thought that was the rule. I mean, but I feel like it shouldn't be, but it is kind of. Yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah. yeah. You know what I do? If I enjoy the person's company, I'll offer to pay, and then I'll say, you can do it next time. And then that way, you know, there will be a next, a next time. time. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Well, according to Southern Clearly, Living, yeah. which, uh, uh, of course, is the, like the Bible. That's the gold standard. Yeah, what, Betty do they, Joe, what do they say? Uh, they says, 
whoever they, they say <laughs> whoever initiate the, initiated the meal should offer oh, cover the bill uh, that's unless fair. it's a birthday celebration group gathering or or something that's been yeah formally if I invite hosted. you yeah I'm going to treat you to a meal yes. I think that's true yeah. how many interns have invited me to lunch and dinner but you don't make them pay no, no that's okay. what I'm saying that's a, you can't no. so do you pay always because you I make do. more I feel money. like it's the price of playing ball yeah I, I generally yeah. I mean listen. We've been blessed. Yeah. Yes. We typically get stuck with a check as a result. <laughs> when you it's go, okay. But you know why I like to pay sometimes? Why? why? This is going to sound, I, this is gonna sound terrible. Why you said it. Because I like to go to the restaurants I enjoy. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Sure. No, so you, you like to order the bottle of wine you yeah. want. Right. And so if I'm paying for it, I don't right. have to feel guilty. Yes, I, I agree. It's a bougie katuji place. He yeah. can just, he'll pay for it. What did you just call it? Bougie katuji. I just it's made a, that up. It's a Chanelism. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now, but when Al goes out. You, you know you're going to be treated to a nice meal. There you go. Yes. Well, usually hey. I just have people over. <laughs> uh, that's why I don't have to pay for it. He has like bougie katuji lettuce. It's, it's <laughs> from where? Tahiti? From Tahiti. <laughs> don't, we were you not did make go. us the best tuna yeah. fish it sandwich like I've ever had in my life. It was the best sandwich we've ever had. What was the secret to it? Dylan? It, tuna from Tahiti. The it tuna was tuna. not Here's from the thing. Tahiti. Dylan was like, oh my God, these tomatoes are so good. Well, I bought them on this island. <laughs> and this, and then the <laughs> I got them. I got them at Fairway, for know. gosh sake. Fairway's anyway. a great grocery store. <laughs> but he yeah. is able to source ingredients yeah, sure. that the average person can't source. Yeah. What? Are they, can, they can't no. walk to a grocery store? I go to the same Ow. place everybody goes. You have a, we don't all have a farmer. What? A farm. You have the farm. It's a farm. You do have a farm. You okay. call a farmer. All right. You, you guys have places where you could plant things? We do. I have, uh, I I have my olive tree that we got on the show. Can you believe it? <laughs> It's National Thank You No Day. Yes. Oh, oh, this is your yes. day. This is but your according house. to a recent Wall Street Journal article, that. well, you haven't said anything. <laughs> uh, Just a nice letter. They oh, say no. it's time to give the handwritten thank you note a rest. They, no. say, what? they say this is the Wall Street no, Journal. No, 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 no. no. A, a respected publication <laughs> says that writing a thank you note can feel like a chore on a growing to do I disagree. list. Yeah, I, disagree. Oh, I disagree with that. I too. Absolutely. With that. Wow, where are you now? Yeah, and here's that. the thing: I would I would maintain that now the handwritten thank you note is even more, more important. More than ever. Yeah. Absolutely. Because everyone's always texting. I was actually going to just start having Calvin write thank you notes. Yes. And putting them in the mail yes. and yes. learning how to write a letter and yes. address an envelope. Going to the post office. Yes. Mailing them. Yeah. I took the boys to the post office the other day. They were like, this, what is this I just place? realized this story is not that interesting. When's that yeah. going to stop you? But it was fascinating because it was Rusty and Ollie, and I brought them into, like, the big post office, and I was like, and that's where you put the letters, and that's where they sort the mail, and it was... Oh, that's good. Well, that's that's, nice. that's story. fine. That's good story. Well, no, there was, in fact, there was another story. I'm glad you didn't give us that. It was less interesting. Yeah. I wanted to buy nice Christmas stamps, but the line was really oh, long. Okay. The All line right. was really long, so I went to one of the self-service kiosks, right? Because you and have to use that. Years. Woo! <laughs> no, and then it made, I needed 100 stamps, and it made me print out each individual stamp that wasn't Christmassy, like that wasn't nice. No, and I and I had to wait for about 20 minutes for each individual stamp to print out, and it was like a It's kind of what this feels like right now. <laughs> You should go with your gut on that one. Okay. When you stopped your stuff at the beginning, you're like, oh, I'm not gonna, and you just yeah. kept going. But she like doubled down and kept going. <laughs> so if you if you got my Christmas card, it didn't have a nice Christmas stamp on it. Oh God! <laughs> well, this is a fun one. An online tutoring company called Preply yes. surveyed nearly 1,000 people to find out the most popular positive phrases that they can't stand. Oh. Okay. So here's uh, some results. Oh, this is, this is like your mantra. I know. Yeah. I'm like, ooh. Live, laugh, love. I don't have that yeah. on a piece of wood. It is what it is. I do say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, happiness it is, is a is. choice. You do say it is I do what it say is. That. I find it very what? annoying. It is uh, what it is. No, it, I find it's it very off. dismissive. Yes. Yeah. It is what it is. It is that's what right. it is. What are you going to well, do? That's how it's meant. Uh, good vibes. <laughs> Sorry. Good vibes <laughs> only and carpe diem. I didn't know people were still saying carpe diem. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's that. those are those guys who are still, uh, you know, thinking about the Roman Empire. Right. Yeah. Sure. Every day. <laughs> Every day. Is See, there a phrase that gets on your nerves? Um, no, not really. No. Look, people say what they say. <laughs> you know? <It's> exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. just irritating. You know, although one of my favorites is from The Incredibles, Mr. Incredible. We get there when we get there. <laughs> I, I, um, I do find the older I get, the more I use a lot of the same phrases. Yeah, yeah. Like in my house, I, one of the things I always say, also a variation of the Incredibles, if everything is special, nothing <laughs> is special. Shit. 
Yeah, you know. Can't miss you if you don't leave. I have That's a right. favorite. I have a Al favorite from 2023. What's that? Netflix. I'll do it no. I'll do it I'll no. do it we no. We do that all the time. I don't fun. know where did it do. I don't even know where that came from. Well, it's it's an old it's an old joke. Goes back. Flip Wilson told this years ago. Oh, uh, we and, pull that and it, it's uh, it was basically about uh, the thermos keeps hot stuff hot, cold Cold stuff cold. How do it know? Oh, I know. It's funny. We started using it during a segment. Earlier, I think it was earlier this year, maybe and last year. It. I think it was last yeah, year. I did. I did. I did. That's I did. Funny. Okay, so here's what, here's another one. Okay, are you a fan of or sent of sending or receiving voice notes or no. audio messages? No. God, no. stop doing. If that. I wanted yeah. to listen to your voice. <laughs> I would call you. That's right. Get the voice machine. Yes. Get bring back the voice machine. Exactly. I hate the message. Voice. I feel bad I if you do I that. Don't. I'm sorry. In behalf of all of them, do I you, don't do want do to. I don't. I can't figure out how they do it. And then how do we do it? You beat me. You beat me too. See, to me, just a short text. I don't want to have to listen yeah, no. to it. Now, listen. If it was something where somebody leaves you something, you know, sentimental or but something. Then call and leave a but typical can, voice. Man. Exactly. Although if, 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 uh, Vox conducted a survey and yeah. found that 62% of Americans say that they've sent a voice message. I can't figure out how to 30% do it. communicate <laughs> by voice messages weekly, daily, or multiple times a day. I would find I that so call. annoying. Yeah. Just call. Just, just a text. Time. Just or, or a short yeah. text. There are people who do that in my DMs on my Instagram. Is that these videos? Yeah, do you guys get that? That's what? weird. <laughs> like the voice notes. They call, no. What do they call and tell you on your D, in your yeah. DMs? Are they strangers? <laughs> like, do you know these people? Sometimes I know them. <laughs> and they're sending you voices? What do they say? Give me an example. Like, hey, no, Chanel. No, because then you'll, you'll figure out who it is. Oh. 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 Wow. So maybe what you could do yeah. is write a letter. To her? <laughs> give it to Dylan. <laughs> And she could take the boys to the post post office office. and wait in line for some (laughs) some festive. I should have just waited in line. That's the moral of the story. I should have waited in line instead of going to a kiosk. See, things worthwhile are worth waiting for. I thought they'd put the stamps in the kiosk. How do you not put just basic stamps I, you know, in the computerized kiosk? This harkens back to harkens back to our long national nightmare. From several months ago. Oh my God, with those suitcases, if you the, the luggage. There are herself. ways that societies should work, and I run into often deal. occasions but, but, where but here's the deal. doesn't the, work as it should. The, the stamps that you go when you go up to the line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are many, you know, uh, uh, philatelists like to beli- like Whoa, to collect, no like today. to collect stamps. So those stamps, those stamps that you get, those are well-made stamps. Yes. The stamps that you get at the kiosk are just laser but, printed. But, so they're they're, right, they're not why special. Can't they put a, oh, why can't they just like put nice? Stamps. I want a nice. Stamp. Then you wait in line. I didn't know that, and I already put in my order, and I couldn't cancel oh, my order, so, so I had to get like there for a hundred oh. stamps. And you get all those kids too. Yes. That's, that's yeah. That's a lot. That's well, I hope you enjoyed your day this morning. The day this morning. No, this, the, the people are just starting their day. <laughs> <laughs> we it got just, you off it to the right It just feels start. like the day is over oh. because this has gone on forever. Are you getting stabbed by these, like, pine? They're, like, going right into my They're leg. screaming rap. That, you know it's time to rap when you're complaining about stuff poking you. <laughs> with a great story of love and family from our series, Dad's Got This. I recently met a man who made a life-changing decision, not just for himself. He's now a single father of three young brothers, and his journey is guided by the memory of his own father. Hi. Oh! This isn't just a dad and his three boys passing the pigskin. There's so much more to this story. <laughs> I discovered um, a path where you can foster to adopt. What better way than to, to 
change the trajectory of someone's life by bringing them into your home and just trying to show them that somebody cares for them, yeah. right? At age 45, Jason Smith took a leap into the unknown by fostering three brothers, Tavon, Irion, and Tavion, ages 9, 10, and 11. His home would be their sixth foster placement in the last five years. You didn't decide to just foster one child. No, no. <laughs> no, you decided, you know what? I think I could do three. <laughs> was, was that the plan from the beginning? Craig, that was not the plan from the beginning. So when you swing, your hand will go right over this, right? right in between Jason took a nine-week training program with the Department of Family Services in his home state of Nevada. They prepare you almost for the worst, right? To help you understand this is a different type of kid. Yep. And here's what they may come with. And here's how you deal with that. You have a lot of choice and decision in that process. Yeah. And so do you want a boy? Do you want a girl? Do you want a kid with special needs? Do you, you know, so I was looking for a son, right? That I can potentially be a great match for. And in the process of looking at children, their profiles, I saw this sibling group. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that, that's some handsome kids. And I read their stories, cool. And I clicked on them and it seemed like fate and destiny wanted us to be connected. During this time, Jason was freshly grieving the death of his own father, Tucker. I lost him in June 30th, 2021. I dealt with it, I flew home, did the arrangements, and um, I think I'm still dealing with that a little bit. Each day is better, yeah. but I feel pretty strongly that uh, his spirit is with me and guiding me and making things happen. It would seem to me that out of that tragedy, you decided to turn it into something good. Is, is that how you would describe your journey to fatherhood? It inspired me to take action. Um, I'd always toyed with the idea of having kids, right? And in the moment where he passed, I was like, damn, yeah, I never gave him grandkids. After a six month foster, Jason jumped at the opportunity to adopt the brothers. They call him Papa Jay. Three, two, one, family. family! Before we were living with Papa Jay, we, we always used to like hop from foster home to foster home. He's actually funny, nice, super nice actually. And like, he's just like the, like the big dad that I never actually had before. And most importantly, he loves us and we love him. What's your hope for your family going forward? I just want to see them grow up to be smart, intelligent, great black men to, to make a difference, to take their experience and use that mm. to do some amazing things. What do you think Tucker would, would say about all of this? I'm so proud. He'd be so elated. No one in the street could tell him that those are not his grandkids <laughs> by blood. He is proud of you, so. I think so. I don't think a lot of folks are, so. Myself included. Thank you. So Jason and his family are thriving, uh, and he's even now working on starting his own nonprofit. It was one of my great. favorite dads yeah. got this. Yeah, uh, a good one. One stories of the year. So yeah. what a great story. Thank All right. You. Well, just ahead, we're going to take you to one of the most beautiful places in the country. When I get to go on the job as a national park ranger, and then Dylan's going to bring us a sweet story, taking us behind the brand that began with a simple idea: ice cream for all.
Back now with our series on the job. So yesterday, Dylan took us to Fenway Park. This morning, we're going to head to the Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. Over a million people visit each year. Recently, I got to visit and found out why when I spent the day as a park ranger. This is Shenandoah National Park, nearly 200,000 acres of protected land extending along the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, just 75 miles outside of Washington, D.C. Good, Carl, nice to meet you. Great to meet you, too. Great to have you in the park. I am so excited. My guide slash instructor for the day, Ranger Carl Rand, to show me what it takes to protect this land. I understand, Carl, that you were once a junior ranger. I was. I grew up visiting national parks. That's kind of what sparked my passion for the outdoors. And essentially, that's what put me in the big hat here today. Ranger Rand growing up, taking family vacations to national parks, later becoming a park ranger at Yellowstone, Olympic, and now Shenandoah National Park. First order of business, getting officially sworn in as a junior ranger. I will teach all of my friends. I will teach all of my friends. How to protect. How to protect. The natural world. The natural world. All right, thank you very much, Junior Ranger, for all of your hard work. Oh. And welcome to Shenandoah Rangers. I've got a badge, and I've got power, and I'm going to use it. My first task as a Junior Ranger, raising the flag to open the park, a tradition started by the Civilian Conservation Corps. We'll raise it swift. Next. We packed up to go on what the rangers call a rove. What that means is we're hiking, talking to visitors, making sure people are being safe, they know where they're going. Our checklist was? First and foremost, being water. water. Yes. Navigation, bug spray, first aid kit, fluorescent safety vest, flashlight, sunglasses. Mm -hmm. A little snack. All right, let's rove. And now we're on this, this iconic road, uh, Skyline Drive. Yeah. How long is this thing? Skyline Drive is 105 miles. So there's about 75 different overlooks overlooking the iconic Shenandoah Valley. Our road began at mile 917 of the famous Appalachian Trail. There's something here, what, this scat. What, what kind of... It, <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked because that's going to be a domestic dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's not any wildlife. It's just... Well, no. Besides the wildlife, there's the, all this plant life as well. Over 2,000 different species of flora here in the parks. Why are the park rangers such an integral part, so important to the National Park Service? One thing that people expect when they come to a National Park Service site mm -hmm. is a ranger. Right. They mm -hmm. are protecting the visitors. They are protecting the resource. This is your office. Not a bad office, if I do say so myself. In fact, hold on just a sec, just... I mean, <laughs> this is crazy. This is complete silence. Yep. Finally running into some visitors. Do you have bug spray? No. <laughs> hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I I, I, got one for you on your right. There you go, right here. <laughs> Actually really need this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> have a great time, enjoy the park. Thanks. Thank you. Alrighty. <laughs> so exciting, my first park goers. <laughs> we continued the rove at the Dark Hollow Falls Trail. You've got water to go in and everything yeah. like that? Yep, we're prepared. Have a wonderful trip. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. And by trip, we don't mean falling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and my final duty as a junior ranger. Who's ready to become a junior ranger? Mm -hmm. Let's see your hands. Swearing in the next cohort. So I'm going to have all of you stand up straight and tall for me. Raise your favorite hand and repeat after me. As junior rangers, as junior rangers, we promise, we promise to do everything we can to help preserve and protect Shenandoah National Park. Thank you very much, junior rangers, for all of your hard work. Let's give the junior ranger salute. Salute! And with that, my job was done. Passing on the torch. I want to send out a huge thank you to Ranger Carl Rand, the staff at Shenandoah National Park, for letting me tag along. They also say winter is a great time mm -hmm. to visit the park because of the spectacular views, and it's a heck of a lot less yeah, crowded. Yeah. Uh, so to go there, just check their website to make sure the Skyline Drive is open. One of the best parts of this country. Yes. Our national Park. National Park. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think we wish the kids are a little older so we could just visit them on yeah. trips. Yeah. yeah.
is winter break for kids across the country, and teachers are getting a well-deserved break, too. Earlier this year, we shined a light on a college professor who is spreading joy beyond the classroom. He's using dance with science and creating a new kind of chemistry with his students. When I got into teaching, I did not think I would become a dancer in the chemistry lab with my students. Every week, Professor Andre Isaacs and his students are conducting research. So what are yields looking like? And learning choreography. All right, I think I can do that. You got it. The Associate Professor of Chemistry at the College of the Holy Cross is fusing pop culture with science lessons on TikTok. The reaction? More than 480,000 followers and more than 4 million views. As an elder millennial, I don't think my body moves the way in which Gen Z's um, do. And in that moment, we're kind of flipping the switch, right? The student became the teacher and the teacher became the student. Can somebody call 5678 under their breath when she pulls me in? His videos often feature an experiment. I'm going to take this rosé and I'm going to turn it into milk. A history lesson? Let me introduce you to African-American chemist Alma Hayden. And a trending dance, complete with his popular rainbow lab coat. 80 degrees. 65, actually. 65. But it's not all play. We spend a significant amount of time doing research, and in our downtime, we, we like to create videos. For Professor Isaacs, engaging his students through social media has strengthened his bond with them. They come into our classrooms and they have to make themselves vulnerable about their, you know, intelligence, about, you know, what they know. But that doesn't happen on the other side, right? The faculty member doesn't have to be vulnerable. It was so important to students for me to have like a growth mindset to remind them that I believe in them. They can do this much as my students said, I think you can handle this stance. And that's been kind of a, a guiding principle because now the, you've been, you're more vulnerable with, with your students and so they trust you more. The whole point of the dancing is to meet students where they're at in whatever way ways they need. As a black and queer scientist, the professor is using his platform to create more interest and inclusivity in STEM. I think for a lot of students, seeing someone who holds all these intersectional identities thriving in the space and, and having that sense of belonging is, is really inspiring um, a lot of younger folk. Professor Isaac's mentorship and fun approach to chemistry is what drew his students to the subject. He sees the students and the people in his research groups as true people and really tries to kind of cultivate their interests and passions and what they want to do beyond chemistry. Chemistry in, its, in of itself is difficult and just being able to do chemistry while having fun uh, is something to really enjoy. And for the chemistry professor, that's what success looks like to him. It's very important for us to realize that science can be conducted by anyone, right? And, and it doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter how you identify. I want students to realize that their, whatever they bring is an asset, right? And that science is better when people bring their, their unique qualities and skills to the table. But as far as his dancing goes... He is a little bit of a slow learner, but he is a great dancer. For now, Professor Isaacs is encouraging the next generation of scientists to step into their element. All right, let's do it. Showtime. In recent years, Professor Isaacs has seen an increase in applications to be part of his lab crew and an increase in students declaring chemistry huh. as their major. He's not sure if that's because of his social media, but his videos are definitely bringing awareness to the subject. Did you major in chemistry or you had a chemistry interest? I I was interested in math, physics, and all so. that math, kind of stuff. Math, physics, yeah. science, chemistry, yeah. all that good stuff. Making chemistry cool. Listen, there you it's go. important. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. All right, well, now to a sweet story from our series Behind the Brand. A few months ago, I had the chance to meet the team behind Van Leeuwen. I got the scoop on how they grew their business from a tiny truck to an ice cream empire. We want to make products that people taste and want to keep eating. Ben Van Leeuwen, Pete Van Leeuwen, and Laura O'Neill are the minds behind the artisanal ice cream company, Van Leeuwen. Just touch on the dynamics of, of this trio here. Pete, you're the older brother. Ben, you're the younger brother. Laura, you're Ben's ex-wife. Yes, so, <laughs> and he's my ex-husband. And he's your ex-husband, <laughs> yes. So how does this work to keep this company running? There's no filter, there's no inhibition which sometimes makes things hard, but what's even better and what cancels that out is like, there's complete and utter trust. 
It all started with Ben's sweet gig, driving an ice cream truck as a teenager. After college, I said, huh, I want to do something in food. The only thing I know about is running an ice cream truck. <laughs> and at that time, there weren't ice cream trucks serving super high quality ice cream. So I said, let's do this. I called these guys and that was kind of the start. The co-founders bought two 1980s decommissioned step vans off of eBay, renovated them inside and out, and got the wheels rolling. It all started in my apartment on Driggs Avenue right here in Greenpoint, so Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Ben and Laura <laughs> moved in. We wrote a business plan. We developed some of our first formulations and then sort of ruminated on the dream for a little while. We invited 30 or maybe 40 friends over and they tasted probably 100 ice cream. Yeah. Like wow. 15 chocolates, 15 different vanillas, Sicilian pistachio, Turkish pistachio, strawberries from different places. Pete, how would you say it was received right off the bat? From day one when we drove up to the corner of Princeton Green and a line formed and it really didn't stop for that entire summer, we knew that we were onto something and doing something right. A year or so later, Van Leeuwen opened their first brick and mortar location, right in the Brooklyn neighborhood where it all began. But the team doesn't want to sugarcoat the journey. It's right here, eight years into the business, at this factory, our entire company's inventory sat in one walk-in freezer, and somebody left the door of that walk-in freezer open. I entered the factory to see a beautiful river of pink, white, brown oh, ice no. cream pouring in and I walked into the freezer <laughs> and there were hundreds and hundreds maybe thousands of tubs collapsing upon collapsed, themselves crushed oh. and I don't know what we did I guess we made more ice cream I know what we did we, we all yeah. came here and we salvaged what we could and we cleaned it all up and we Snow shoveled dusted and we ourselves going. off yeah, and we enough. kept on going today Van Leeuwen is celebrating 15 years in business has nearly 50 scoop shops across the country and can be found in the freezer aisle at stores like Walmart, Whole Foods, and Sprouts. They're also known for their surprising brand collaborations and unique flavors like honeycomb, black cherry chip, and lemon poppy seed muffin. What advice do you have for someone who's, you know, whether it's in the food industry or just in general, to start a business? Make sure it's your passion because running a business is not, it's not a quick thing. You'll wake up one day and you've been doing it for 15 years and you want to still be excited about it. It's also important to stay like reinvigorated. Uh, we always work scoop shop, mm, like really shifts. You actually work there. We We still do, all of really? us. There is nothing in this business to me that's more rewarding and fulfilling than like handing off an ice cream cone to somebody. Well, I'd love to see how this all gets made. Yeah. Can I get a little tour? Absolutely. Let's take a look. Ben treated me to a factory tour and put me right to work, helping the crew mix the flavor of the day, Earl Grey tea. Oh my gosh, it is a giant tea bag. Yeah. That's really good. For a cherry on top, we hopped on board the iconic ice cream truck with Pete and Laura for my very own scoop shift. What can I get for you? A recipe for a perfect day. Guys, thanks for letting me crash the party. Thank you so much for coming. 15 years, congratulations. Thanks. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Now, naturally, Van Leeuwen is embracing the holiday season, too, with a limited time peppermint Ooh. stick flavor. You know, they've got a store right downstairs. It's so, so good. good. Is it it's yummy? good ice cream. Yeah, it's yeah. very good. Good ice cream. All right, coming up, we're going to shine a light on a piece of waterfront property Ooh. with spectacular views and a pretty long history. And then later, country superstar Brad Paisley is here to perform his brand new song, Just For Us.
we are back with our series, The Upside, with a, with a bright idea. How would you like to own a lighthouse? Mm. Mm. NBC's <laughs> Jesse Kirsch recently found out about a, a very unique piece of waterfront property. Mm. They're big, bright symbols of summer, protecting mariners from perilous coastlines and attracting tourists with stunning panoramas. But it turns out lighthouses can be even more. You might live by the water. You might even have a spiral staircase like this in your vacation home. But how many of you have something like this on the top floor? An actual working beacon. That's because I'm not just at the top of a house right now. I'm on top of a lighthouse. Sheila Consol thought this Lake Erie lighthouse was such a great escape, she bought it for about $71,000. That might sound like a steal, but this Cleveland area home has no heat or air conditioning. Electricity largely comes by generator, and Sheila says showers meant jumping in the lake for nine years before she could get running water. Once you found out you could own a lighthouse, at that point, did you need to own a lighthouse? No, and a lot of people ask me if I always loved lighthouses. I mean, I liked lighthouses, they were fine, but once I saw this, the historic opportunity there was to save it, what it could become, knowing that this was gonna be my front yard, then I was sold. So come on in. The nearly 100-year-old house has some quintessential historic lighthouse charm. Upstairs, serenity. Here we are, Lake County, Ohio. Sheila added some creature comforts too. Granite countertops, appliances, cabinets. This was all brought in by boat. That's because her front yard is in Ohio State Park. Running errands means a roughly 20 minute walk to her car each way. But the walk alone, a lot of people would look at this and be like, I don't have time for this. Yes. No, but once you get out there, there's 360 degrees of water. The views are unbelievable from the top. You add that to the intrigue and to the uniqueness. It's what I call the ultimate summer home. Intrigued? Well, good news. You can own a lighthouse too, thanks to the National Historic Lighthouse Preservation Act. With improved navigation technology available, the federal government publicly auctions off lighthouses. Robin Carnahan is administrator of the U.S. General Services Administration. The Coast Guard didn't need all of these lighthouses, but knew they were important for our communities and for our history. So we went historic house hunting with a twist. You thought walking the better part of 20 minutes to your lighthouse was tough? Try having to get there by boat. We hitched a ride with the U.S. Coast Guard into Cleveland's Harbor. That was the easy part. <laughs> I will stay on land. I will take the one on land. Another challenge, this lighthouse comes as is. Tough considering the Coast Guard doesn't focus on peeling paint. Our mission, unfortunately, isn't the preservation of historical aspects. It is the safety of the mariners, i.e. the light, the sound. But if you buy the lighthouse, you have to maintain it. Many of them are over 100 years old, so it's not like they're falling down, but they need some TLC. This lighthouse needs a lot of TLC. One of the first things you might want to do if you move in is take care of the spider webs. Still, picture perfect views with some curveballs. Scenery. Whoa, that's a big bug. Not intimidated? Right now, there are four lighthouses up for auction, including this one. With minimum bids ranging from ten dollars to $50,000, you can help history live on. Just like how Sheila Consul sees herself preserving a community icon. I am really a steward of this lighthouse. There's only so many lighthouses in the United States. And if people don't step up and take care of them, they're going to be gone. Jesse Kirsch, thank you, sir. Since that story first aired, by the way, those four lighthouses were auctioned off for more than a million dollars, wow. making 2023 the most active lighthouse season ever. Didn't even know you could buy a lighthouse. I didn't, I didn't either. But you noticed when like a lot of work mentioned it, we all said, Ooh, I'd love yes. to spend the night in a lighthouse. Yeah, I'm surprised. Ooh, that's you a good buddy yeah. up. That would be a good one. We could all, you know, uh, we, we'd we have to bring our own bulb. Ghost story. <laughs> <laughs> bring our own what? Bring our own bulb. For the lighthouse. Light house. <laughs> but I'll fall. <laughs>
The City Music Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. We are back with a special performance from one of country music's most talented and award-winning solo artists. We are talking about Brad Paisley, the three-time Grammy winner's highly anticipated new album, Son of the Mountains, comes out next year. And we are getting a preview this morning, a performance of that title track. So without further ado, here's Brad Paisley with Son of the Mountains. Been making shine. I had an uncle go to prison running jugs across state lines. He told the judge, You let him out. You'll never catch me doing that again. They got a faster car and they never did. I'm a son of the mountains. I'm a son of a gun. I'm as free as the river through this hollow run. Blame who I Time they make it leave You're a long way down that road Hell, I don't care who you marry Or what you brew or what you grow Up here we believe in freedom If there's a hill to die on Well, that's mine It might be an uphill climb But I'm a son of the mountains I'm a son of a gun Would you like a little moonshine? I think I've got some a little of hill climb don't scare me none I'm a son, I'm a son of the mountains Well, and the creek don't rise It don't matter when you're up this high Dog on the porch, kicking in a pan Come on, baby, take my hand Brad, that was terrific. Oh, Thanks so much. And don't forget, his album, Son of the Mountains, comes out early next year. Third album today will be right back. <laughs>
the third hour of today behind a delicious brand, Crumble Cookies. Hoda and Jenna are up next. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Today, designer and trendsetter Victoria Beckham takes us inside her beauty empire. Plus, a big reunion for style stars Clinton Kelly and Stacey London. And our girl Allie Love shares a very personal hair journey that led to acceptance and confidence. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. Hey guys, welcome. It is Tuesday. It is December the 26th. We hope you guys had a great Christmas. Yes. And you're kind of easing into New Year. Hopefully you have this time off. Yeah, and this can week can be in. lazy. And I kind of love this time of year yes, when you're just kind of cozied in. Yes. Boxing Day. <laughs> Who doesn't love it? We do. What? But Boxing Day. Oh, when you return things? Well, I don't what's, know. It's called Boxing Day. It's a British holiday. Did you not see Love Actually? I love, Love Actually is my movie. Rainy knows. They told what is it? Rainy, tell us. You're allowed to speak. Please yell. You're, they're boxing up gifts to give to the poor. And oh, see. Oh. Giving back. Giving You're back. You're giving back. It's a day to give back, Hoda. I told you. <laughs> no, you didn't. You <laughs> said I thought you thought it meant boxing gloves. That's what well, you thought. Well, sometimes <laughs> if you spend a lot of time with family, that too could come out. Um, but you know what? Today's show is all about fashion, beauty, and style. So the editors at Who, What, Where mm -hmm. are out with their predictions for the for all of the fashion twins trends of 2024. All right. First up, do you want to know what the color of 2024 will yes, be? Yes, I do. According to this group. Please tell me. Ox, ox blood. blood. <laughs> I love ox blood, first of all. I don't love the actual blood, but see, I'm wearing it. Like right here. Yeah, I see it. One of these colors is ox okay. blood. Okay, look, I'm happy that ox blood is the color. I just wish, given the time of year, that we didn't have something called ox blood well, as it's our an, color. You know what else? We could just I call it burgundy. But it's, it's similar to burgundy, but it moves toward a deeper red. Like the blood of an ox. <laughs> Did someone look at the blood of an ox and go, oh, why, yeah, why couldn't we have called it Merlot or something nice? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Next up, they said the Capri pant will be back. Okay, does that mean like the cropped See, Capri? Right there. Like, oh, that, right. You don't like that? No, I think it's cute. I think it's, but where does the Capri cut? Mid calf? I thought it, I thought it was a little longer. I Me thought it was too. A, those seem short. Those seem shorter. But that's because well, the models are taller. Right, so it seems <laughs> short because they're tall. Yeah. Okay, finally, they say the print of the year, if you're wondering, will be polka dots. I polka of, dots great. I feel like it's a it's a staple every year. Well, yes, because well polka dot makes me feel like happy. Do you remember oh, do you remember the movie with Julie Roberts and Richard Gere? Yes, where she wears Pretty the woman. blue polka dot. I mean, the brown, brown polka, dot, polka dress. dot dress. That's a that's a great That's movie. iconic. And by the way, I don't remember clothes and that's I don't remember true. movies. <laughs> but I that's do true, remember because she doesn't remember <laughs> Boxing Day. <laughs> you didn't know what it was. I just know that it's celebrated. <gasps> All right, um, you okay. rocked polka Polka dots. I remember. Do you remember your first day back from maternity leave? Wow, that's a, you wow. Went, you went full. Remember when we were sitting like that because of COVID nineteen? That's a real <laughs> statement, isn't it? You know what? That's how you do. When you come back, you like to you like to splash down. That's a real statement. All right. Now let's let's talk trends. And we have the ultimate trendsetter in the house. Our girl Bobby Thomas is Yay. here. Bobby, is Bo I'm sorry. Bobby, is this a trend? Uh, Bobby, you're just cool. You look called the trend. I liked it. You look really fashionable. Cute. We need you, you really here do. because we know okay. nothing okay. about We're going to quiz us on a game. The biggest beauty and fashion trends of 2023. Oh, what we're going got? backwards. Okay. We're going backwards. We're going to yeah. recap this year. So we thought it would be fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number one. Yes. We have a prize, by the way, too. Um, name this makeup trend that recently became oh, popular on TikTok. A, latte makeup. B, farmhouse foundation. Or C, Midnight mascara. Definitely latte makeup. Yes. Ooh, click, click. Hoda. Somebody's trendy. She's in pink. <laughs> what is latte makeup? It's just to know. look like a latte. Well, chromatic. It's another word for naked mm -hmm. or nude. It okay. seem to continue with okay. the, the food trends. Um, okay. So GRWM is an abbreviation for Wait. what? It's a, a fashion thing. Get real with makeup. 
B, get ready with get me. Get ready no, wait, with let, me. Let her finish, Get please. ready with me. Or C, girl routine with me. Get Sorry, ready with get me. ready with me. Remember, we yeah, have that get she, girl. We very good. She was so yeah. sweet. Okay. Okay. So, next what was her name? <laughs> three, which was a 2023 beauty trend? A, strawberries. B, croissant. C, wait, a beauty tomatoes. Trend. Or D, all of the above. A, a beauty trend? Yeah. The food? How could a food be a I love you both so much right now. <laughs> we yes. understand. So do you want it to be strawberries, croissant, tomatoes? Because apparently anybody can choose these days. Strawberries. <laughs> you were going to say all the above, but yeah, I'm going to say all the above. All of the above, yes. Yeah. And I have another PSA. <coughs> we told America to step away from the skinny brow. I would like people to step away from the kitchen. Wait, what can are you somebody talking explain about? how these were? So, strawberry was when Hailey Bieber, you know, promoted her strawberry makeup look. And then What's when we did croissant? croissant, it was Versed at Target put out this headband that, by the way, it was the get unready with me trend mm -hmm. that went viral because of this croissant headband that sold out. Right. And people knocked it off. And people then knocked it off. tomatoes. Knock yeah, Billy Eilish. The, the tomato trend's one. even better, Hoda. Um, this was all about being inspired by Italy, where it was wearing lemons, okay. Okay. doing pasta. Okay, something. then what's the next one? Okay. So. <laughs> Who wore this fashion moment of the year? So take a look at the photo. Was it Taylor Swift? A. Beyonce. Beyonce. Did you ring your bell? In? Yes, I did. <laughs> Heck yeah. Boom. I think yeah. we're going to give it. To we could we all recognize that outfit anywhere. Yeah, yes, of course. I think that was probably the outfit of the year. And number five, the 2022 coastal grandmother trend. Oh, you want you to get way on this what? To what new Go coastal trend? One, two, three. three. Coastal, coastal cowgirl. Cow oh. <laughs> I thought we were going to say it in unison. It was the cowgirl. Coastal cowgirl. Cow girl. Remember we yes. talked about it? Coastal okay. cowgirl. Oh, and so we had the prize. Okay. I think we tied. This was what I thought should be the prize of You're the year. You're my for, happy thought, it Yeah, says. this is from May May, a little company. Ooh. I think oh. it, yes, We love needs, Sage. We so do in our house. Some of that. In our house, we love Sage. And a good sage. luck charm. So I think that's the best Ooh, trend of next year. Let's look. <laughs> that's... <laughs> Okay. And why are we? Well, you're actually gonna really love this one. Oh, it's so cute! Oh my God, the little and look Buna. what it says. You can give it to the girls. I have another oh, one. Prosperity. Do you put him up? What is, is this? The thing? greatest gift of contentment. Mm. Another saying bye. Oh, bye. Okay, hey. on. Coming up next, two uh, style stars sweet. reunited. All right, Stacey London and Clinton Kelly on the forgiveness that brought them back together. Coming up after this. Two people who had an eye for style, it is Clinton Kelly and Stacey London. They became breakout stars 20 years ago on the hit fashion makeover show, What Not to Wear. Yeah, the duo seemed inseparable until a very public falling out that lasted nearly a decade. Recently, Stacey and Clinton reunited on our show. But first, let's take a look back at their journey. Yeah, we're from TLC. TLC's What Not to Wear. For 10 years, TLC's fan favorite reality show, What Not to Wear, had viewers glued to their TVs, thanks to the host's brutal honesty. Your clothes look cheap. Participants were nominated by friends and family who rendered them in need of a fashion makeover. And the always stylish and chic Stacey London and Clinton Kelly would transform them, throwing away the old. How do you feel seeing all of your clothes in the garbage? And introducing new fashion rules for the participant to follow clothes that are cut in a feminine, sophisticated way. But while the duo were winning over viewers one style makeover at a time, there was tension behind the scenes. Years after the show came to an end in 2012, the rift between Clinton and Stacey became a public feud. 
In 2017, Clinton dished about his former co-star in his tell-all book, writing in part, I either adored her or despised her, and never anything in between. In response, Stacey blocked Clinton on Twitter. I literally don't know whether she blocked me yesterday or a year ago or a month ago. Or uh, by accident. Or by accident. Yeah. Well, she could have unblocked me, which she hasn't, so. <laughs> they each moved on with their careers in separate directions and haven't been seen together until now. <laughs> Stacey London and Clinton Kelly are here. Okay, wow. you all need to unpack some business. Yeah. We, do. <laughs> do. we, we do. are confused. Okay, so you had this very public falling out based on what you had written in your book. It's kind of either I loved her or I hated her. Yes. So how did you take what he had written in his book, Stace? Well, I stayed real quiet and uh, blocked him on Twitter. Were you, but, what, what, were you mad? What were you, I, I, were you know what, look, I, I'm gonna be totally honest. I think there was justification for what Clinton said. I think we we both grew up on what not to wear. Yeah. We handled fame a little bit differently. Yeah. Clinton was maybe a little bit more mature about it than I was. Yeah. I, I really found it very nerve wracking. I yeah. felt like I was supposed to be ambitious and I didn't know, you know, yeah. if it was a small window of opportunity. And yeah. he kind of, he kind of got in into it a little bit easier than I did. Okay. So I, I don't think that what he wrote was unjustified. What I was more upset about was that if it's public, then the audiences who thought we were best friends, some of us, some some people even thought we were married. Yeah. Uh, you know, that illusion was broken. So I did not say anything, but I did block him on Twitter. When you blocked him, were you thinking to yourself, that's it, buddy? Yeah, that's it. You were, we're done. You, were you thought that was it. So no communication for a long, long time. And we the show was already done. Yeah, but still. Okay. But you were friends. So, Clinton, we yes. need to hear your side of the story. The, and, and also, what it feels like to reconcile. Like, mm -hmm. how has this been for you? It's been amazing, actually. You know, it feels like a giant weight has been lifted off my yeah. shoulders. But to go back to that quote for just a second, yeah. I said when I said I loved her or hated her, that was the truth, right? And I wrote a, <laughs> I wrote a book, and, you know, Stacy knows it, I know it. Everybody who worked on What Not to Wear knows that we had a love-hate relationship. So it was my personal truth that I wanted to put out there in the world. And in that book, I never said anything about Stacy's behavior. Yeah. I never, like, told any tales out of school, anything like that. And it, the quote was taken out of context so many times. Click sure. bait. There, click, 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 click bait. There were hundreds of sentences before that that explained how difficult what not to wear was behind the scenes, not just about us. And then I also said at the end that we ended up being friends at work for the last five years of the show. So yeah. we had mm -hmm. one ba really bad season, but out of 10, that's not so well, terrible. So why, why didn't, didn't you call oh, him? Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't why just, you call yeah. each other? And like, say what? what you know what? I, I think we were, that was a point of pride, a yeah. little bit of a point of pride. And, and, and you know, look, I read the clickbait. I didn't read the, the book. book. Yeah. So when I saw the clickbait, I was, I was hurt. I was definitely hurt, and and it was hard to kind of reconcile that, especially you know because we had spent ten years on a show when reality television was very new. We were yeah. both show thrust was in, very popular. It was very popular. popular, and we were thrust into the spotlight yeah. very quickly. Yeah. I, I think it was a lot to acclimate to, and if you change somebody. <laughs> To each other. I mean, you look. Yeah, you know, yeah. we we were together every day every for day. ten years. And yes. our work days were sixteen hours long. People don't get that. Yeah. We were like this together, sixteen hours a day for ten years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my my regret is that you know I wish that we had been sort of the United Nations against a lot of what was thrown at us. Yeah. Instead, I think that a lot of the tension was caused because we were tense. There was yeah. a lot yeah. going on. So forgiveness is a big word, and we yeah. talk about that. So how did, did, did you consider it a misunderstanding or was there a real forgiveness how that did, needed yeah, to happen? Who reached out to who? What happened? I, I started by um, by um, writing to Clinton, I yeah. think after after season five or after season, season five, six, yeah. like we had had a really tough time. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that I had a moment in the shower where I was thinking about going back to work and I thought, oh, I don't want to see this person. I don't want to see that yeah. person. I don't want to see. And then I was like, wait, what is the common denominator yeah. here? Yeah. I am the one who's saying, I don't want to see anybody. Could I? potentially be the problem. Wow. And it was uh, a moment of real clarity and real shame. Wow. And I wrote a lot of letters, not just to Clinton, about about apologizing and my behavior and recognizing but you know my part in creating that environment. Good for you oh, to a take a moment and also to, to, to you know reckon with you, with you. Uh, you, well, you have to evolve, yeah. right? I mean, when you realize that you've done something wrong, all you can do is it's do apologize. better. And yeah. was it just diva behavior? What was it that yeah, you were apologizing for? It was total for? diva behavior. But, okay. but also, I think it was out of really thinking that I was being told, you know, you better take every job you get. I mean, yeah. I was taking jobs outside of what not to wear. You've got a small window of opportunity 
you know, now or women, never. Much pressure. And also for women, yeah. it was different. Yes. Yes. You know, I mean, this was, I, I did not know how to respond. And my anxiety really presented more as diva behavior than anxiety. Uh, I was afraid to appear weak. There was a lot of stuff yeah, going yeah, on for yeah. me. Yeah. But Clinton was receptive to that apology, and it did make all the difference. And then, you know... You well, wrote that book. So, Clinton, we got to the point where you'd published the book. How have y'all reconciled? What happened? After seeing the same clickbait story over and over and over on Instagram about how much we hated each other, <laughs> I was like, I can't take this anymore because we don't really hate each other. Yeah. Um, we love each other, yeah. as a matter of fact. We have a str we have very strong feelings toward each other. Yeah. So I reached out to Stacey and I was like, can we put this behind us? Let's talk it out. And we had a really emotional conversation. It was during the pandemic, sort of as the pandemic was ending. And we just talked through it all. And you forgave each other. Forgave oh my, each other. Uh, uh, Were you crying? What, what was happening? Oh, I, I sobbed my, my yeah. eyes out. But that <laughs> must have been very Cathartic. healing for yes. anybody that has it, an issue it with was. a friend. And I think part of that is, you know, what I said about evolution, yeah. right? When you grow up a little bit, and we did grow up together on television, there was a lot of points of pride that I don't think either of us were willing to, like, cop to. Yeah. I mean, I let it all hang out. I, yep. I, I, I told Clinton everything that made me sad, everything that mm. hurt me, every way that I thought I hurt him. All the petty grudges. Would y'all ever agree. do TV together again? We want to do a TV show with me someday? Okay, maybe. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> maybe. The one thing that I'll say, and definitely about this, about about forgiveness, right, is if you don't let go of it, it's the, the famous line is, it's like drinking poison, expecting totally. the other person to die. Yes. yes. Totally. So do not hold on to grudges. Yes. Don't do it. Find guys, a way this through. this has been really meaningful it is. for a what's lot your, of people. What's your necklace, Andy? And, it, and it's the most um, hopeful word in the English language to me. It means there's always something else something coming. Something and something. And, and, and a new dawn, a new day. We hope they team up on more projects. Maybe they will. They have, we have a feeling they might. Coming up next, Zana Roberts Rossi sits down with designer Victoria Beckham and gives us a peek inside her famous fashion house. That's right after this. Morning, get into the holiday spirit with today. We're gonna spread some holiday cheer. Some added inspiration to give back this holiday season. We are launching today's toy drive. Holiday gifts for everybody on the list. That is delicious. Our biggest holiday crowd yet. Three, two, one. Make today your home for the holidays. Victoria Beckham has come a long way since her Spice Girls days. The mom of four has also built a very successful fashion and beauty brand. Yeah, recently she sat down with E-Style host Zana Roberts Rossi to give us a rare inside look at her empire. And Victoria opened up about what inspires her. Take a look. Thank you for opening your private space. This is where I am five days a week. You'll see a few little pictures of my children. I love it, and the awards. Just a little memorabilia, <laughs> back in the day, you know, when I was a Spice Girl, yeah. So MTV Awards, American Music Awards, Amazing. something quite nostalgic. It's here Victoria works to build her beauty empire and eponymous fashion label, which was first launched in 2008. Okay, that's 15 years mm -hmm. of relentless hard work. 100%. The fashion community have really opened their arms and welcomed me. That hasn't happened overnight. It's constantly about 
proving yourself. It's very fitting to be in a very private space to talk about one of your most private, most personal launches to date. Fragrance is inspired by your most precious memories. These are stories that I haven't told before. Right. So these are intimate details about myself and my husband and, and our family and our journey. I think we have to go back in time. Portofino 97. These have um, never been seen before and you're showing yeah. them exclusively to us here. It was the first time we'd ever been on a trip together. We didn't want anyone to know about the relationship. Yeah. I was busy with the Spice Girls. David was playing for Manchester United. Right. So the fact that we had 48 hours together, just the two of us, was super special. I mean, we were, and still are, obsessed with each other. Sweet 302. When we were living in Spain, we were doing the school run one day, and David said, we're gonna, we're gonna go somewhere for the afternoon. We land in London get off the plane and we're met by the same car that drove us on our wedding day. We drive to our house in, uh, in London um, and we had a little chapel in the garden. We got remarried with <gasps> the priest that married us all those years ago. I think, how can this get any better? Oh my we get on the plane and we fly to Paris where we had 24 hour honeymoon and we stayed in suite 302. The product launch inspired Victoria to step in front of the camera as the face of her brand for the first time. I've never seen you more comfortable and confident in your own skin. I think the good thing about getting older, you accept who you are. Yeah. You stop fighting, you stop picking holes in yourself, you just want to be the best version of yourself. It's not about looking younger or changing yourself. Speaking of our younger selves, you were bullied, you say you had bad acne, mm -hmm. you say you were an introvert. Do you think that gave you more drive to work harder. I've never been the best at anything. I've just worked really, really hard. I remember being at dancing college, phoning my mum, crying. I want to come home. My dad then got on the phone and said, absolutely not. You oh, really? stay there, you work hard. And thankfully I listened to my dad, but nothing has ever been easy. And I was bullied a lot. I often talk to Harper about that. I say, you know, if there's a little girl on her own in the playground, that little girl was mummy. And that hurts. She finds making friends very, very easily. I never did. Go and talk to that little girl. What I'm loving right now is the new shade of amber. Social media, you keep it so real. Is it nice to be able to put stuff out there? I think before social media, you know, people had this impression of me that I, you know, I didn't smile, which to be honest, it's fine. I never got upset about those things, but that was very much the media painting that picture of me. Through my social platforms, I can show who I am. I work very hard, but I like to have fun as well. We're gonna talk about your collection and you're gonna mm -hmm. give us a little walk through the atelier, which yes. no one has ever been in with cameras. This is where the magic happens. These are the boards at the moment, but a lot can change, right up until the minute say, that you put the, the Literally before they walk out. Yeah. If we're gonna take away a few trends from this collection that's coming up, what are we gonna talk about? We have lots of denim, but this season it's about reinventing that a little bit. They look like they're worn back to the front. We've got a jersey story where we have these jersey dresses. Then we go into this English countryside story as well. So we have some tweeds. Can we just talk a bit about the makeup look? I want to create a cool look with mascara. It's something that we all wear every day, but how do we make a real fashion statement out of that as well? You will obviously have a stellar front row wearing your clothes. What are you most looking forward to about the end of the show? We're going to have a fun party. My whole family is going to be there. A lot of work goes into it, so to have that moment where we can just enjoy it with our friends and family. I love how we get to see a whole different side of Victoria. Coming up next, our girl Ali Love shares her very personal beauty journey after this.
Now to our series with love and recently today contributor Ali Love opened up with a very personal story. Of course, she's well known for her beautiful and varied hairstyles and she shared with us her lifelong journey of learning to love mm -hmm. her hair. Take a look. Let's go. For the last seven years, Allie Love has inspired millions of members in her love squad with motivational Peloton rides. It's the time to remember your self-worth. And while she's known for her affirming messages, she's also known for her incredible hair. My hair has its own personality. I look at it as an accessory. I'm really proud of my hair. My hair is a unique representation of who I am internally in that it is so versatile. I would love to say, yes, I've always had a great relationship with my hair, but the reality is growing up as a mixed child, one of the big pieces that I had to unlock was my hair and how the outside world looked at it and how I felt about it. I remember going to elementary school and coming home and telling my mom, I want my hair to look like this. And I would press my hand against my face and make sure it was straight or smooth. I didn't want my hair to stand away from my head. I want it to fall like all the girls in class. Then in high school, there was a girl next to me and she would always play with her hair. She would always like her hair straight and she would always like rub it. And I think like subconsciously, I didn't realize how it affected me because as I look back, I remember one day, it was like a breaking point where I asked the teacher to go to the restroom, I went to the supply closet on the way out, I took scissors, went in the bathroom, and I cut my ponytail off because my hair was so frizzy and big and afro-y. I was agitated. It was like a release. It was like, I'm going to take control of the situation and you're no longer going to talk about me or my hair. In college, I got my first job, which was modeling, and it was a big deal. So I was learning the ropes. I would show up on set, and time and time again, the person doing my hair didn't know how to do my textured hair. And I would end up bringing my own product to do my hair, redo my hair in the bathroom, and then just run on set. I was protecting my piece, I was protecting my hair, and I was protecting my energy. I want to sit in the chair knowing that this person has my back, they have my hair. For me, that was important. India and Shermer are my hairstylists and I love them to death because I think they know my personality. I found two women that, that are so passionate about their craft. For Ali and, and my situation, I met her before and I feel like she had some time to get to know me before we, I started doing her hair. And I think that's where our trust started from. I understand that she wants to look her true self, so we're not trying to change that but enhance that. Having this dialogue about women, hair, and celebrating all different types and textures is so important. You know, we think, oh, Ali, she's in front of the camera all the time. She doesn't have these problems. But no, we all have, you know, insecurities. Oh my gosh, I have so many moments as an adult where I question my hair. I don't think that there is an event. I don't think there is a moment of even coming on the Today Show of how I look as an on-air contributor where I don't question, is this okay? Like, are people gonna turn off their TV because, yeah, I wore my hair out? Or like, are people gonna comment, like, she didn't get dressed for work today? You know, I'm not gonna cry. This is the one thing I'm not gonna cry. But it, it's true because it's, again, you walk in a room and it's like, what are, what's the one thing unlike the other? Yeah, I mean, a little part of me cries for the little girl who wanted to look different because what she doesn't know is that as she grows up, her identity, which is really beautiful, is wrapped in. She's not only her hair, but it is a part of who she is. It makes her different, it makes her powerful and strong. There's a saying where it's like, the higher the heels, the bigger the hair, the closer to God. That's when I feel my best. <laughs> when my hair is like doing the most, I feel my best. <laughs> Another reason to love Allie oh Love, gosh, right? We love her mm. and speaking of beautiful hair. Up next, three of our viewers get new looks as they start new chapters in their lives after this.
morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names. Only on today. See, we're coming to this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today. All right, if you want to start the new year with a new look, this might just serve as your inspiration. Celebrity hairstylist and founder of Archive Head Care, Adam Reed, worked his magic on three of our viewers and gave them gorgeous makeovers. Take a look. Nice. All right, so we're going to look, get a look at our first viewer. Her name's Aida. She's from Long uh, Bristol, Rhode Island. Let's see what she has to say about her current hairstyle. Hi, Hoda and Jenna. I'm Aida and I'm looking for a new look to go with a new chapter in my life. Within the last year and a half, I got married. We welcomed a second grandson into our lives. I lost 25 pounds and I just celebrated my 60th birthday. So as you can see, my hair is damaged, discolored a bit, and I've got some grays coming through. So I need you, Hoda and Jenna, to help this grandma feel 60 and sexy. Yes! Girl, we already <laughs> like her. <laughs> She's amazing. All right, well, let's take a look at Ida's uh, hair one more time. Okay, so we had some issues there. So we are gonna bring out the new Ida. Come on in! Ida! Is... Wait, you are Wait, gorgeous! Will you tell us what you did? Wow. So what we've done here is we've created this beautiful chocolate tone. Hot chocolate is the color hot, of the season. Chocolate. So she's our hot it's chocolate beautiful. today. I love that. A rich, beautiful dark chocolate tone. We put those mm. layers in a la Cindy Crawford. We're seeing this resurgence of the supermodels. She, yes. Doesn't she just? Oh my gosh. And she's that our lady. supermodel. How do you feel? <laughs> Fabulous. I want, you know, in my video, I wanted to feel sexy. Yeah. You are sexy. girl. To wow. see her look yesterday, at, look yes. at that shine and the movement. There was a yeah. little bit of breakage in there, but actually what we've done is softened through with the color. You can still see that nuance of tone, so it's yes. not a yeah. flat, heavy color. Yes. And it's rich and healthy for fall, which is absolutely that's, perfect. That's for the Ida. haircut I want. Gorgeous. You look beautiful. Gorgeous. That's what I said. You're on the Okay, point. thank you. Okay, <laughs> thank up you. next, y'all, we have Lourdes from Queens, New York. Let's see what Lourdes had to say about her new hairstyle. Hi, Hoda and Jenna. My name is Lourdes. I am hoping to get a refresh before my next and last baby is due. I've been growing out my hair for about 10 months now, so the highlights are pretty much grown out. My hair is flat, my hair is frizzy. I'm looking for a style that flatters my face shape. I want to try something different and impress my oldest who wants to see me in something new. Thanks. Okay, oh Adam, what did wait, you... Wait, Oh, we got to see Lourdes <laughs> I've got the, Yes. Here's your performance. Come picture. on, Now Adam. let's see the new Lourdes Are hairstyle. we ready? Are we oh, ready? Oh, I love it. I <laughs> Lourdes, love it. It's beautiful. Adam. How beautiful you is Lourdes gorgeous. as well? The most incredible skin, the most amazing cheeks. So this is our milk chocolate. So it's a little bit softer. Oh, We've sort beautiful. of taken our Hailey Bieber. I know we did that last time I was here yeah. showing you. But what I wanted to do is create this beautiful glam Hailey Bieber-esque oh. style and the richness of the color next to the skin tone. Absolutely incredible. And it again sits within our chocolate palette. So it's a slightly softer, creamier chocolate. One of the most beautiful souls as well, Lord. It's incredible. You look, you look gorgeous. Six Way months new. pregnant. Yeah. Wow. You look beautiful. <laughs> How do you feel? You feel great. Completely new person. Okay. What did your daughter say? Oh, they loved it. Of she course loved she did. it. Wow. We're so happy. And again, you. we were saying when you color your hair, seek your advice to make sure that it's good for when you're pregnant. But yes. we used oh, yeah. a semi permanent color here yeah. to get that beautiful gloss. Yeah. And shine so and enhance, soften down those highlights and rich and everything. All up. right, Beautiful. way to go, Lourdes. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, finally, we have Sarah from Manhattan, New York. Let's see what she has to say about her current hairstyle. Hi, Jenna and Hoda. My name is Sarah, and I'm really excited to get a new haircut. I've been wanting to do something new with my hair for a while now. I think as winter is approaching, right before the new year, is the perfect time for me to do a little personal reset and try something new. I'm really interested in sort of a Parisian look with some bangs. I think that would look really good if I paired it with a red lip. And I think that would be very sophisticated and that's how I want to feel. I'm really excited to see how my hair comes out and I can't wait. 
All right, let's check out Sarah's look one more time, Adam. So this is Sarah yesterday when she All came right, in. All right, Sarah. Yes, beautiful. A curtain bang. Uh, this is actually a Birkin bang. Oh, so Birkin. this is inspired Birkin. by Jane Birkin. and it has that Parisian chic. So it sits a little further oh, down yeah. on the face where a curtain gives that flick. Oh. But what's lovely, Sarah can create a curtain with a tongue. Okay. Again, we've gone a little bit red velvet in here, so we put red a beautiful... Velvet. I'm all about the food today. You are. Um, but you can just see this beautiful depth and tone in the hair, and we've created that shattered uh -huh. soft edge. So it is that Parisian chic. Yeah. But again, when it's curly, you're going to have this beautiful tousled soft curl. So it's got the versatility uh. of that modern Birkin bang, but the key trend for bangs this season. Look at oh, Adam. Birkin bang. And Adam's going to cut your hair. We love I Adam. Am. He's going to do it. <laughs> How do you feel about doing it live on TV? I'd absolutely do okay. it live on TV. All right. Done and Right. Sarah, you look gorgeous. All three ladies looked amazing. We love Adam around here. Yeah, he's awesome. Okay, can we also thank Gia Dandria for helping with the makeup? Coming up next, dress like Gigi and JLo without the high price tag. We're going to show you how to get their stylish looks for less right after this. So if you want to up your style game, sometimes all you need is one or two statement pieces to help you stand out. Yeah, that's where fashion expert Janae Naylor comes in. She's the influencer behind the blog Hi Low Lux, and she stopped by recently to show us how to get the looks of some A-list celebs. Check it out. The okay. ballet flat is back. back. It's back. It, who says so? Our Everybody. Feet are happy. Everyone. Our who? feet are happy. Yes. yes. We eat them. Show I us mean, who's wearing. Yeah. Celebs like Gigi Hadid, yeah. J Lo, Michelle Williams. Gives you comfort. This pair, you still get like that razzle dazzle. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. But comfort is back. Okay. How do you what, what do you wear this with? I never know what to wear Put a ballet, ballet flat, flat with. with. I love a good cropped pant. So if you're taking it to work, uh, you can cute. do a cropped pant, you can do a cropped jean. But also if you want something a little more relaxed, oversized jeans with the uh -huh. ballet flat just sticking out. Yeah. That's kind of like a different twist on it. Okay. I love that. Okay, well these are adorable and adorable. nice price. Yeah, great price. They're from Zara. Uh oh, yeah, anything bucks. Zara <laughs> is awesome. always okay, good. Okay, for jewelry, these gold chains are really in. Yes, like a vintage inspired necklace. We've seen this on Tracy Ellis Ross. Look at Tracy Ellis Bieber. Ross. I mean, gorgeous. And this is from Anthropology. Great price point. Uh -huh. It gives you that bold statement piece without it being too flashy. Okay. Yeah, it's vintage really kind of beautiful. Details. Yeah. Now, could Looks you like layer someone this? It down to you. Yeah, totally. Do <laughs> yeah. you layer this or do you go ahead and just wear it with? I, I think it depends on where you're going. Yeah. Right? yeah. During the day, it dresses up a super basic, simple outfit. But then at night, it's a super elegant piece. You can wear this with a ball gown. Yeah. Who, who's somebody you look to and you say, I love that style. I love her style. Tracy Ellis Ross. Tracy yeah. Yeah. Ross, we feel it? the same is way. It's it confidence. Yes. It's effortlessness. Yes. And she loves fashion. She and loves. What about the color? And she, she yes. rocks Risks. every color. Yeah. Yeah. And she makes it look easy. It's just like, oh, this whole thing. Everything it, looks like. Did you love fashion since you were a little girl? Yes. You I always to, did. Yes, yes. I used to draw pictures or read magazines. I would do this thing where I just like every time I read a magazine, I would pick a page and like, if I could have one thing, what would it be? Oh my God, we played that game. Barbara and I played that game. What's your favorite dress? Yeah, yeah. Like you have, you could pick something. You pick have anything on the page. Okay. Okay. The other thing you I like these belts. These chain belts. Yeah. Statement belts. So Look. this is doing double duty, right? You could put this over a coat. You could put this, you tailor in something. It cinches in your waist. Kim but K also has it like, on a midriff. It's like mm -hmm. jewelry, too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you can do less accessorizing because you got this big, bold statement belt. Okay. Well, some of those belts looked expensive that the stars and were wearing. And this is yeah. a great price point. From Express, around 35 bucks. 
Nice. You got that. Yeah, these are all a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah, totally. All right. And so, what if you were going to wear this? What would you style this with? Immediately a blazer, especially if you have something a little oversized. You want it to be a little more tailored. Absolutely. I would I would unbutton it, take the flower off, and then just cinch in the waist. Just cinch it in. You could also put this on a slip dress. Kind of like do it a little low. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot to do with that. All right. Which is nice because you don't want to buy one thing that you're only going to wear once. Cost per wear. Let's talk tweed. CPW. Tweed. I love this jacket. I have this jacket. Uh, Meghan Markle, Katie Holmes. This mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. for this transitional time, this is a great option if you don't want to wear a denim jacket. If you don't want to wear a blazer, this gives you that polished look. Yeah. So what would you, you, wear, what would you wear that with right now? Jeans and my flats. That's it. Jeans and flats. your new flat. <laughs> Literally. And, your brand new and maybe flat. your chain. <laughs> your chain. And you're ready to go. You can go anywhere. This now, who makes this one? This is from Urban Revival. $69. Great price point. Amazing quality. It looks beautiful. And this is my favorite color in it, too. By the way, Green. this is your first time on our show. It sure yes. And you did you, a plus. Thanks. So congratulations. I mean, I'm doing my favorite thing. I know you can. By, by the way, you can tell. You <laughs> totally. can tell how much you love it. You did such a great job. So thank you. Thank you, Janae. I mean, those were great looks, right? So cute. We'll be back after this. Tomorrow, our favorite vocal coach, Cheryl Porter, who helped us create our original Christmas song. And we turn up the heat with Hot One Toast, Sean Evans. Oh, plus the New York City artist spreading joy on the subways with his one-of-a-kind drawings. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye. Happy Boxing Day. <laughs> We are so excited to get started with cooking and today food. But before we do, before we do that, we're just going to take one second and shout out our new executive yes, producer. Talia is in the house. We just want to say, hey, welcome Happy to today. First day. It's your first day of school. Go, Talia. We're so happy happy you're here. She's here. You know who else we're so happy to have? Oh. Well, she's not at the ranch hanging out yeah. with her family or filming <laughs> episodes of her hit Food Network show. Reed Drummond is busy coming up with easy meals for and your family. Marie's the star of The Pioneer Woman and a best-selling author of seven cookbooks. Her latest is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks Super Easy. It's 120 shortcut recipes for dinners, desserts, and more. We've missed yes, you. Oh, we're so we're happy, happy you you're guys. here. It is so, I just feel like I'm seeing old friends and it's just so happy. I'm so happy to be here. Well, Love it. Yeah. We, okay, first of all, we have to say congratulations. Yes. Your, your daughter got married. Oh my gosh, How thank sweet. you. How I was know. that? It was so much fun. I mean, oh. it, it was. We did it on the ranch, which was a crazy idea. We <laughs> sort of built this huge tent out there, but it was fun. And the the great thing is, it was a lot of work. But the day of, we were just able to let the process happen and enjoy it. It wasn't stressful. Did you and do any? Did, you didn't do any cooking for it, did you? No. Good. You just no, relaxed. No, no, no. Sure. I know. I was going to say, who does sure. rehire as the no, That's why I was able to relax and have fun. Well, and right. to so. watch your husband walk her down the aisle. Oh, we yes. know he's been recovering yeah. from an accident. It must yeah. have been special. It, it was wonderful. I mean, it was a blessing. We, it, that's my favorite picture of the two oh, of them. Um, he was a little stiff then. He's, he's <laughs> doing much better. He's on his horse today, so everything's okay, great. Back on the horse. All right. What are we going to cook? Oh, my gosh. 
Okay, so now that Hoda has eaten a whole chocolate I know cake what? today, that um, is really good. Why was everybody making fun of you? I don't, I don't appreciate that. I don't, thank you, Jen. If I think I you would have supported me. Out, it was really quiet, and then all of a sudden, the cake was gone. And <laughs> <laughs> but you I, should see what she does to chips. Oh, I well, you know, you know it's what? morning. It's happening again. You have the rest of the day to work it off, right? Exactly. So will. after the cake, I thought it'd be great to make some vegetables. So I'm going to do a sheet pan gnocchi Yummy. dinner. And okay. what I love about it, my cookbook really, I'm not afraid to use shortcut ingredients. So. My favorite ingredient is this is store bought gnocchi. Oh, so and is this frozen or you just no, get it? No, it's actually shelf stable, believe oh. it or not. So you can uh, you just buy wait, it. Throw it in there. Wait, yeah. are you, is this a joke? <laughs> what you just did? Out. You just dumped everything on the sheet everything pan? Everything on the sheet I pan. I thought you had to boil oh, it. Oh, no, 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 because we're going to roast it. Oh. So then What's I've that, got. Pesto? Yes, pesto. <gasps> I'm going to mix it with olive oil. Oh, did I'm trying not to get pesto on you, so I moved it away from your beautiful. Marie, can you buy the pesto or did you make that? No, bought the pesto. See, I like everything. So yeah, she's speaking happened. our language. Yeah, I mean, during the pandemic, you know, mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. kind of burned out on cooking a little bit because there were Didn't so we many all? kids around. Is that it? Yeah, so they, that's it. Because pesto is so flavorful, it has garlic and, and you know, And do you need to oil the, the pan? Did you already oil it? You don't it? have to because there's oh. plenty of olive oil in the pesto mixture. So you basically, mix it all around mix like it all that. Around, and then look how Wait. beautiful it looks. Oh, my gosh, Jenna. we have to pull taste. it out of the oven. So. I like to do a little balsamic Do you want us to help oh, you? Yes, glaze. Yes, help me and grab some go. Parmesan shavings. So do you just, that? I love balsamic glaze. Yes. I do everything I do. on anything. And you know what? I used to make my own by just reducing balsamic mm, for yeah. hours and the house would smell like vinegar and my kids would be like, what, what is that doing? smell? This is so, kind of crispy. It's delicious, isn't it? And see how all the oh veggies got beautiful color. Mm. Mm. But it's such We're, an easy meal and I would totally just eat this. But wait. We could do this too, which is huge. Look at what we just in did. In one second. Put it in the oven, is dress this basil? it. basil? What did you put it basil. Oh, tore basil. Just, basil. Yep. And I, I'm so lazy, I don't even want to chop basil anymore. You just chop <laughs> it. By the way, I, I like it in exactly. the fridge. Oh, we go around the back. Yeah, there's more? we have another recipe. Okay, okay great. Honestly, so mm -hmm. sheet pans are kind of my thing. I okay. love them. They're, they're just, I, I get nervous if I don't have 20 ready to go at mm -hmm. all times. So this is a sheet pan salad, and I love this concept mm. because you basically roast. Any veggie you want, it's it's the squash time of year. Oh, so yes. this is a mixture of cubed butternut squash Yum. and delicata squash. I love delicata what squash. What is that? I'm, I'm obsessed know. What is it? with it. Me too. Do you ever so put it on it? toast? Oh, Wait. yeah. Mash, mash yes. it up. Yes. What are you talking it's about? It's just so a squash. At, this is what it looks like. And oh, it's and basically store? kind oh. of an heirloom type okay. of squash. But the great thing is you can eat the skin. It gets really tender. So ah. butternut, it can be a little bit tough, Should not do, very tasty. Add yes. Some? Drizzle and then we're salt gonna do pepper. another roasted vegetable situation: salt and pepper, Italian seasoning. This is so brilliant. Wow. And this then is just so toss. brilliant. But here's what's fun about wow. it: so roast it, and it's like 450, 25, 30 minutes. Okay. And look how gorgeous. So that's delicious on its own. But I build a salad oh, out of this. Thank you. So basically, you make your own dressing too, don't you? Well, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I doctor up bottle dressing. So. But I'm using the roasted vegetables as a base for mm, a salad. That's delicious. Mm, isn't it good? Yes. And the dressing mm. is tahini, mm. mustard, lemon juice, olive oil, honey. Okay. And then, isn't it pretty? 10 okay. plus. 10 plus plus. Pomegranate seeds. seeds. Yep. Mm. yep. Pistachios. Pistachios, pomegranates. Mm. So this I love is, pomegranates. It's pretty at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then goat cheese, which Hoda Great. doesn't love. Thank you. Well, Hoda well, likes it. It, it just doesn't love her. Yeah. Okay. There's thank a lot of you TMI so in much. this segment. <laughs> There's a lot about Hoda. Anyway. <laughs> Bree, thank you so much for these recipes. Head today.com slash food. And for Bree's new book, it has recipes just like this one. Head today.com slash shop. I predict a bestseller. Me too. Okay.
And we're back with today's food. Thrilled to say good morning to our next guest. Finally, after all of those teases, the pioneer woman herself, <laughs> Reed Drummond, has made it all the way from her ranch in Oklahoma. Are you near Blake's Ranch in Oklahoma? Not so much. Not so much but, you know, we're in the sta same state. Yeah. So, so, you know, we, we know each other. When I was there marrying him and Gwen, I would have stopped by your ranch. Seriously, and next time. Or yes, your 25th wedding true. anniversary. I could have you, you, renewed you. your vows. <laughs> oh, well, we're also out pretty. with a brand new cookbook. It's called Super Easy. It features more than 100 mm. shortcut recipes, which we like the sound of that. Actually, lots of them going on in the ranch in Oklahoma. You look absolutely stunning. You've got oh, a daughter who just got married, right? Yes. Hard to believe. Yeah, and you're about to celebrate your 25th anniversary, and Carson's going to do your renew your vows for you. That, that's that's hard lovely. to believe too. I know I'm only 29. I don't know how I can <laughs> get married. For you look 29. Years. What happened you to you? during COVID? All I did was eat and drink and not work out. And, and listen, same. I I was wearing pandemic pants this time last year. I don't know if you remember, but. But, uh, yeah, I just, you know, the wedding was a great inspiration and motivation. But then once I started kind of uh, exercising more and getting healthier, it felt so good yeah. that I just kept going. So I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm over that hump. And now it's about just maintaining and, and yeah. enjoying. Well, I don't so. know if these delicious recipes are going to be um, on any maintenance, but they are really smell good. Uh, speaking of my wellness journey, yes. let's eat some tots yes. Uh, yes. with cheese let's. all over them. So, yeah. It starts with chicken. Yep. Yes. So, I'm going to make tachos. Now, do you know what tachos are, Carson? No. No idea. You need to know. So, <laughs> tachos are just like nachos, but they're made with tots. Oh. Yum. So, oh. I, baked, I baked some tots with a little we cumin have the gang and eating chili already. powder. Oh, Cook right. some chicken. Add some celery. So, these are buffalo chicken tachos. Yum. Celery, garlic, and green onions. Did and you make up tachos or is that a thing? I never heard of tachos. It's kind of a thing, but it hasn't okay. swept the nation yet. Yeah, so it's going now to. Will. I'm It'll. kind of hoping uh, It'll that be anything trending by the end of the segment. on nachos, you can put on tots okay. and call them tachos. So Love it. Then, of course, buffalo sauce, and then you just let oh. this simmer. Mm. I started Delicious. with raw no. chicken, but you can do rotisserie chicken to okay. make it easier. Yeah. Mm. So simmer that until it's luscious. Have you and changed saucy. what you cook now because of your sort of wellness journey? Is it, has it put no. you on a different path? Or you <laughs> no. And you know, the thing is, is I have, I have teenage boys, college students, uh, lad. Right. A, mm -hmm. Ranchers. Know, yeah. Cowboy. And so I have to make food that everybody loves. Right. And yeah. I don't, I'm not good when I deny myself, yeah. you know, whole Butter categories of food. So mm -hmm. I'm just kind of learning to eat I like to say I eat a Rhode Island-sized piece of cake instead of a Texas-sized piece <laughs> right. of cake. That's the best way you get the flavors and the taste. How does that it's taste? It's delicious. Really good. Everything's good. So, yeah. good. so yeah. you, you pull the tots out of the oven. Mm -hmm. They're seasoned, so they're a little bit elevated. I mm -hmm. kind of push them into a pile. Yeah. Pepper jack cheese yeah. all over. I okay. mean, this this is what life's all about right Oh, here. right here, yeah. And then you spoon the saucy chicken all oh, yeah. over. Mm -hmm. And so you Woo. can do ground beef that? and got some hit. you know right. black beans and do sort of a is the chicken mix. gonna because it's hot melt that cheese or are you putting this back in the no, oven? No, it's going back in the oven. Okay, yeah. I so because okay. okay. you want to melt the cheese like uh, nachos. So all the cheese you want, melt it. Mine? Oh, here we go. That's okay. all the yeah. cheese. Actually, Pepper jack cheese, the yeah. buffalo sauce. Mm. It's, it's hearty. It's, it's got a kick, uh -huh. but oh jeez! Did you know redheads can tolerate uh, spicy food more than anybody really? else? Really? Is that true? Yeah. True. yeah so this is good. Is that true? We love it. That's we'll delve good. into the genealogy Chicken. of that some other time. But, wow. but basically, you garnish with. Uh, Blue cheese, mm -hmm. and to make blue cheese dressing, I just take ranch dressing and mm -hmm. add blue cheese to it. Oh, oh and clever. It's Another very shortcut. easy. You can do bottled ranch or you can make your own, but Brilliant. nice little shortcut. Mm -hmm. So this is what, uh, this is why my teenage boys love me. Oh, I can see I mean, why. that is delicious. Hey, Carson. Really, yeah. really good. Hey, this is gone. I mean, just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. What happened? Oda. Oda's eating a whole bunt cake already. Oda, we have wow. not started the cake at, segment yet. Hey, take a breath. No one's missed these eating segments more than Hodes. So good. Uh, remember, Rhode Island, not Texas. <laughs> She's going state by state. <laughs> All right, well, that does bring us to our cake. chocolate cake. Now, this is your secret recipe, right? Okay, yes. Yeah. So, confession, my, my top secret ingredient in my top secret cake is dark chocolate cake mix. Oh, okay. And what? listen, I had my house full of humans during the pandemic yeah. and large six, you know, six foot five humans yeah. and football players. And I had... I was making so much food that I was about to lose my religion. I mean, <laughs> every day I was just like, I can't do it anymore. So I'm not afraid to whip out the chocolate cake. I doctored it with 
uh, you know, bittersweet chocolate chips just to make it a little bit more uh, rich. Wow. But the thing <laughs> is. This is the secret. It's a box cake. Well, it's what, oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. But the thing is, I'm topping it with ganache, oh, no. which is Ooh, heavy cream wow. and good oh, well, quality go. chips. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. all two ingredients. Yes. And then it turns into this Here. luscious. Ooh. And are these oh, inside, Drew, exactly. or is this like a topping this thing becomes, situation? So, well, you can just eat one if you like. So you just made, okay, yeah. So you made the, the we cake. We gotta go. Oh, we're out of time. Okay, yeah. I really want to understand this. And then drizzle. Drizzle. Uh, I do sprinkles on top, <laughs> but after Halloween, you can take Beautiful leftover cake. candy, chop oh, it up, and top. put it on top. So hold up. Hold oh, my God. Happy plate. She's Wait a minute. The plate. Oh, yeah. Show her, show it. Clean Literally. plate club. Clean plate club. Clean plate Done. club. Yes, you left a And she's going to eat out. And also, she's going to move in with you. And she's she's giggling. She's giggling a lot over there. Congratulations on everything. Love your show. Thank yes, you great. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, of course, you can find all these recipes at today.com slash food and pick up a copy of Super Easy at today.com slash shop. This morning on Today Food, lasagna two ways with layers of pasta, meat sauce, and creamy cheese. Lasagna is one of the ultimate comfort foods. But get ready for something a little new this morning. Reed Drummond a.k.a. The Pioneer Woman, has created two recipes. They're going to become your favorites. Her latest book is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks the New Frontier. Wait, good morning. Hi, Savannah. It's good to see you. Now, I, I can't, you're doing something really different with lasagna, which is risky. Well, it's a little risky, but when you see these recipes, you will totally understand. I like to mash things up, and yep. you know, you don't want to make lasagna over and over and over. So we are going to make shrimp scampi lasagna roll-ups. I like it. Which mm -hmm. are as good as they sound. So okay. I cooked some shrimp in butter, onion, garlic, a little thyme, and... Um, Chopped it up. Okay. So I'm going to make a sort of a shrimpy, cheesy filling, and this is cream cheese, ricotta, egg, and parmesan. I mean, what could you, what could possibly go wrong? I know. It looks I so mean, good. it's all right. Sign me up. Yes. So I'll let you stir this together, okay. and I'm going to start on the white sauce. Um, my new cookbook has lots of fun recipes like this. Yeah, where, I like that. It's different. Yeah, and buffalo chicken quesadillas, for instance. I have two teenage boys at home. Yeah. Um, my girls grew up and left me. So, so, <laughs> so mean. you got those brutes at home. To so see. rude of them. You still got Charlie the dog? Well, Charlie's not with us oh, anymore, but I have I have Walter. Okay. Oh, Walter. And I have a couple of other little bassets running around. Look so. at the whole crew over there. It's like, so oh my God, could you ask that? But, it. Okay. Oh, no, it's okay. Charlie lives on in his books. Yes, he ends. does. We read his book all the time. Oh, I love hearing that. Okay, so I, I stirred it. So that's all stirred together, and I am making just a beautiful white sauce, and okay. it's... I started with the roux, and it has cream and milk. Mm -hmm. And so you cook and cook and cook until and you're this trying is to thick. thicken it up, right? Thicken it up. Is that thick enough or not really? This looks great. Okay. This isn't quite there, but right. I have I have Magic some already television. finished. Yes. So I'm going to have you help me build a oh, roll up. Okay. So this is the filling you just stirred together. Mm -hmm. Take about a generous third a cup. Okay. And put it on the end of the... Oh, this has the... Okay, the whole thing is in here. Our yeah. shrimp, our everything. And these are cooked lasagna noodles. Mm -hmm. I cooked them about half the time mm -hmm. that the package says. Right. And then just roll it up. Yes, the name, lasagna roll-ups. They're so cute and pretty. What do they you think? They are so cute. Amazing. Amazing. Are you it's dying? Oh, yeah. my goodness. It's between bisque and a lasagna. Oh. A good oh. point. That's exactly what it is. Oh. And then I always put the seam side down. Yeah, of course, to make it look pretty. I poured the white sauce in the bottom of the dish. Oh. And then I'll let you pour and the rest gonna, of it. Am I pouring over. or am I drizzling? No, pour. Okay, pour, pour that sucker. Get in there. Okay, yeah. Why not? Look at that creamy yummy. It is Isn't so that gorgeous. Good. Yes. And then top it with mozzarella. Mm -hmm. And you can see the finished dish right here with parsley on top. That doesn't look crazy difficult either. No, it's not. And my daughter who lives in Dallas now uh, saw my new cookbook and she said, when I come home, will you make me the shrimp oh. scampi lasagna roll-up? So I mean, why not look at it? It's okay. gorgeous. I want to taste that. So that's lasagna one way, and the now this shocked way, me. Lasagna soup. I mean, it's it's really earth shattering. Okay, it's, tell me, tell me. I'm gonna have a bite. It's beautiful. So started with ground beef, mm -hmm. sausage, uh, onion, oh. garlic, yeah. thyme, oregano, and I just cooked it, and then added. Mm. Oh my God! Uh, right? Let's try that. Wait, Savannah, just take your Delayed time. Delayed reaction. So good. <laughs> take okay. Your time. And just turned it into a really delicious uh, whole tomatoes. Tomato paste, mm -hmm. uh, parsley, and you can see the whole tomatoes. I actually like to let them cook down a little bit yep. and then break them up because oh. they're a little softer. Mm -hmm. Anytime I try to squeeze them with my hand, it winds up in my eye. Yeah. Or, <laughs> That's not fun. Or on my shirt, which is even worse. Even worse, exactly. <laughs> so you just kind of, you browned up the, the uh, beef and then... Oh. Yes. And then you put in the Drain the, the excess fat and then turn it into a beautiful soup. Mm -hmm. And then I cooked some 
broken up lasagna noodles. Oh. So this is that, and they're down at the bottom. Mm. It's like a hug. In. It is. Oh, <laughs> so really wait, what about point. the cheese? Where's the cheese? Okay, so okay. once you simmer away the soup yes. and the noodles are perfect, I make this little ricotta dumpling mixture. Oh, wow. And all it is is ricotta, Parmesan, salt, pepper, basil, and oh parsley. Mm -hmm. Stir it together. Mm -hmm. And then when you serve up the soup, you just put little dollops right in the middle. Oh and it's just, mm -hmm. if the soup is really piping hot, the yep. ricotta dumpling Start just kind melt. of melts Can I come over it. to your house, mm -hmm. Reed? Yes, yes. Is this yes. what we make there? Because it sounds fab. <laughs> Bring your kids and uh, Lad will put them to work on the ranch. <laughs> yeah, I would love it. I love it. Thank you so much. We, how do you like Fantastic. the soup? It's amazing. amazing. Which one do you like I love, better? The, I love oh. the soup. Yeah. It's crazy. We, we're torn, can I you tell? I, I like one vote for soup and... Uh -huh. Well, you know what, though? And then you get a piece Switzerland of shrimp on this one. Yeah. That's the thing. Oh. And all that shrimp scampi oh. flavor is in there. And you really redesigned it. lasagna. Yeah. That's, that's next level. Yeah. My wife I, loves your shit. I get bored really easily. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I have to have some fun in the kitchen. Thank that's you so great. much, Rhea. I know you're coming back for the fourth yes. hour. More food. You can find all of these recipes at today.com slash food. And for more on Rhea's book, go to today.com slash shop. You can buy it there. Thank you, honey. is busier than ever. Not only is she a mom of four, she's a New York Times best-selling author. She has three million Instagram followers and she's a star of the hugely popular Food Network show. It's called The Pioneer Woman. And somehow she's also managed to find time to put together a new cookbook called The Pioneer Woman Cooks the New Frontier, which features a couple of recipes that we're going to be making today. And she took all the photos for the book. It's, of course, she you does did everything. That too? She did that too. My Please. camera's a mess. My camera's sticky. Yes. <laughs> I it all over it. <laughs> so she's got roast chicken for us. Look at this. Yes, I. I'm so happy to cook we're, with you both. So I'm a big happy. fan of both of you. We so love thank you, you for having me. So wait, I can't cook. Yeah, me either. But wait, you're based in Oklahoma, and you just do your sh everything from your home. Is that pretty much? Works? We we film the show at our guest lodge, so yeah. at least they don't have to trip over my teenager's laundry, <laughs> yeah. you know, dirty socks in our real house. I was house, telling but. her that my daughter Christina is like she is the most incredible woman. I her oh, voice puts me to sleep. I watch her. Her life is oh, idyllic. Yeah, my she, voice puts my husband to sleep too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're making chicken today. Yes, I just want to show you my favorite way to roast chicken. Okay. Uh, I'm wearing gloves just for the spatchcocking. Yeah. So do you know what spatchcocking no, a chicken is? No, no, so no. it's super no. easy. Basically, okay. you have to put on gloves, cut okay. the backbone out, which is just snip on either side. Okay. That's the unpleasant and splay part. splay it out. But then you splay it out, and the whole point is to kind of... <laughs> The whole point is right. to get it as flat as possible. You can use your palm and uh -huh. kind of push, mm -hmm. but that way a chicken that would normally
normally take um, a lot longer to roast. Yes. Just takes uh, really a fraction of the time. So then you wind up with uh, a beautiful roasted chicken. So what I like to do is make sort of an herb dressing. Ooh, and it's just uh, simple olive oil mm -hmm. herbs. Cut some baby gold potatoes in half and just toss them in the herb mixture. How long does this take you to make? You want to help me oh, just sure, kind of scatter sure. them around? And then you would brush the same mixture on the chicken. Now, is this Good a job. greased pan or is this not? It doesn't have doesn't to be have because to be. the chicken has so much, so much uh, beautiful grease as it cooks. Okay. So just really about 30 minutes total. You start with a high heat and then lower it and then look what you wind up with. <laughs> wow. Halfway through, I add cherry tomatoes mm. and zucchini and then put it back in and finish it up. And you have this beautiful roasted chicken, which I like to serve as roasted chicken, mm -hmm. but I also like leftover roasted Can chicken. Can we try this? Yes, of Maria, course. That's like your perfect meal, by the way. That's right, that Have is. Have yeah. Chicken. I mean, I like French fries, but yes. that, we're not having that. But I'm sorry, Maria. No. <laughs> I should have made no, we're fries. Not, we're not allowed to eat that. Mm. I think roasted chicken is the perfect mm. food. And that is yummy. It's good for weeknight family mm -hmm. meals. But Are you surprised at how your cooking, your passion, has turned into this incredible success? Well, you know, I think you nailed it. Just passion. If you if you are passionate about what you do, mm -hmm. it can you take you in directions you never thought you'd you'd go in. And that's um, I've had so much fun with Pioneer Woman because it started as mm -hmm. blogging. Mm -hmm. So come around. Oh um, and I want to show you what you can do with the chicken okay. if you don't want to slice it up and right. serve it as roast chicken. So you can shred it, mm -hmm. which is my favorite thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a beautiful chicken and wild rice soup. Soup? Oh, Onion, yum. celery, and carrots. Okay. And then I'm going to deglaze with some white wine, which okay. I love in any soup. It just adds mm. beautiful flavor. And it's okay. getting to be soup weather out there. It's, yeah, it's getting to be. Finally, did you have a hot summer here well, like we did? We had, we had a scorcher. <laughs> it seemed to go on forever. And then add some flour just to thicken it okay. up. And then you'll cook this for a bit. Do all and your then, kids cook? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sadly, no. My daughter Paige loves to cook and she's a great cook. The rest mm. of my kids love to eat. So, uh, welcome to my plight. But I love to cook and so it's, it's, uh, What's it's that? chicken stock. Chicken stock okay. and then water. Mm -hmm. And this is so easy is wild that? rice. It's, oh, I didn't know it was that color. Yeah, it's not the mix that you buy in a box, oh. it's real wild rice. Um, Minnesota has, has wild rice okay. that kind of comes from Minnesota. And then you basically cook it until the rice is done. And mm -hmm. look how beautiful it looks. That's gorgeous. Oh. And then you add the chicken in, obviously. Um, and I like to kind of cream a it up cream. a little bit. Yeah, you got I to. mean, I, d I can't think of many dishes that I make that aren't made better with a little cream. <laughs> exactly. So you can add a little or a lot and then let it simmer some more mm -hmm. with some aromatics, sage, and rosemary and thyme. Yes. And then I love to add Ooh. kale also to at the, the soup? to the soup. Oh, yeah, at the end is that kind of the kind last of at touch? the end. You yeah. just let it uh, simmer in the last few minutes. Tell us what this pasta situation yeah. is. Okay, so again, what you can do with the leftover chicken yeah. is make a chicken spaghetti casserole, and it's I think casseroles are just the ultimate comfort food and mm. this has mushrooms and mm. a little bit of wine mm. of course so mm. if you can spatchcock a chicken you can <laughs> do anything in life <laughs> you can spatchcock a chicken we need a t-shirt that says that <laughs> yeah but really you can make soup and casseroles enchiladas Marie, so. this was these were all delicious awesome meals I and mean, they seem easy enough too very easy Thank if you. it's not easy i won't do it awesome oh, that's good for these recipes head to today.com slash food and for more about reese cookbook go to today.com slash shop.
And welcome back. We're back with Today Food. This morning's guest, you know her, you love her, Ree Drummond. She is known as the pioneer woman, and today she's showing us two easy recipes for a family feast. You've got a, a simple, easy pasta recipe. What are we cooking? Yes, yeah, so I am so into shortcut homemade ravioli. And what makes it shortcut is that I use wonton wrappers. So these are just in the store. And I made a little mixture of ricotta, parmesan, salt, pepper, lemon zest. Wow. And I just put a little, I mm. can't get too close to you guys, but put a little dollop in the middle of the wonton wrapper. And then I just take my clean finger mm -hmm. <laughs> and rub a little egg wash around the edge. Oh. And then take a second wonton wrapper and put it on top, line up the edges. And then you just want to press it together. Oops, I grabbed three. That's okay. It's, I'm doing this on the fly. And then just force all the air out. And honestly, if you can't make, make homemade pasta dough or you don't have time, this is such a great shortcut. I like that. And then you just can get an assembly line with your kids, make as many of these as you want, and then just drop them into salted water one by one. And look. All right, I love those. Little pieces of ravioli. Just Delicious. Fresh hey, and ready to go. Hey, Ree, can we, we only have a minute, but we want to get to that dessert, that, what is it? Ice it's box, ice yeah. box cake. Oh, yeah. Blackberry ice box cake. So the frozen pound cakes that we all know and love, I shave the top off, crumble it into crumbs, pour in butter. Very easy. And then just put this on the stove top, toast the crumbs. Mm. And then the cake that's left, you slice the cake into three slices lengthwise. I already started a layer and it's cake, a mixture of jam, blackberries, and lemon juice Yum. and lemon zest. Yum. Oh. It's so fun to use a frozen pound cake because then you cut that whole well, step. Oh my gosh, uh, you it know, doesn't even look hard to re, re, it looks delicious. Something Savannah so, and I could make, we're happy. Yeah. All right. We you just layer it kind of like lasagna. All right. Cake, jam, cream. Re, and then you wind we up. love you. We love you. We can't wait for your book to come out. Thank you for cooking for us. Uh, you can check out Thank her you, recipes girl. at today.com slash food. This morning on Today Food, we're so excited. We're going to take a big bite out of our favorite fall fruits with the one, the only, the returning Martha Stewart. Hi. Hi. Oh, oh, so good. great to be here. Oh. I can't well, believe it. Martha Stewart's fruit desserts. And we are so and excited the, to have you here in person. The recipes are so good in this book, and I've been baking every single one of them, and they're delicious. But I want to show you how to make apple pot pies. Yes. Can you imagine a riff on the chicken pot pie? I love it, but it's, it's sweet, not savory, it's sweet. right? It's a Can dessert. I ask you first, though, how's your leg? Did you my hurt, legs you all hurt better. yourself? You had a surgery? Yeah, my Achilles. Yeah, okay. Don't ever hurt your Achilles, please. Uh, yes, but you're all good, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm all good. So, the apples, you need 12 to 13 gorgeous autumnal apples. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're using Granny Smith's and Rome's. Uh, peel them, cut them into like six pieces. Mm -hmm. Add lemon juice yeah. to stop the discoloration and add flavor. Oh, okay. A third of a cup of sugar and a little bit of salt. Just mm. kosher quarter, salt. Yeah, kosher salt, three quarters of a teaspoon, and allspice, which okay. adds a very nice flavor. Half a teaspoon. You can stir that up All some. Right. And then you saute half of them in a pan. Add two mm. tablespoons of flour. Mm. Oh yes, a third of a cup of bourbon. Mm. That's good. That's <laughs> He's good. Like, yeah, well you a little bit more won't hurt. And you cook <laughs> that up until it thickens just slightly. Mm -hmm. really and then add okay. this. I guess it's cooking. Yeah. Is it hot? It's yeah. cooking. Yeah, it's a little too. So you want it to get it like a thickened up sauce well, kind it'll, of. It'll, the, it'll thicken up yeah. in the oven. Will it too. absorb that ultimately? Uh, oh, yeah. Ultimately, okay. it will absorb it. You add that to your other apples. Mm -hmm. This is half and a half of the apples. Mm -hmm. Can I and stop then, Okay. Off mm -hmm. and then these stir all together. Ooh, yum. Oh my God. Spoon them into. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> he just added more. Spoon Boom. those into a pot pie dish. Oh, that's cute. You see this cute? And this okay. is one no, okay. serving. So uh, You didn't put the pastry under, I know. Uh, no, no, no. Pot pies always have the pastry on <laughs> oh, top. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know? So here's a square of puff pastry, just mm. like that. Can you pre-buy that or? It's store oh, yeah, yeah. It's okay. a store, but you can buy it. They, there's very good home, uh, frozen frozen puff. Make a vent hole in the top or two. Mm -hmm. 
and put that easy. like that. And then egg wash. Mm -hmm. Just a uh, wow, uh, softly eggs. beaten egg. Yeah, the beautiful color, beautiful. isn't it? Uh, these are farm eggs. Really, really great. When do these things sit in water? I see water sometimes in these well, pans. Oh, no, not here. No, no, not here. It's you don't want yet. to do okay. because you want this to, to uh, puff up, and the finished dessert will look like that. Top, How long in the oven? Top with 375 for about uh, 40 minutes. Okay, yum. And so delicious. A really cute uh, single serving dessert. Wow. That's now, easier than it, Martha, actually. Oh, my gosh. I would never these are them. awesome, by this the way. This is my happy place. Oh, my right God. Here. No. It's very impressive. We can't even talk. Yeah. So now, delicious. do you know what this is? Do you know what that is? The Granny is? Smith apple? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? A I'm afraid, an apple? This is a quince. But it's oh. kind of a cross between an apple and a pear. Oh, OK. But oh, it's yeah. not edible it's uncooked. Edible. It's really, oh. they're very sour, very hard, very fibrous. So we cut them into uh, five quinces. We cut them, take the pits out, peel them, mm -hmm. and poach them in a wonderful syrup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Here we go, Half uh, one cup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. And about a quart of water. Watch Carson try to put bourbon in. A that. vanilla bean. <laughs> I already did. Boy, this is you have to split the vanilla bean. It's a little oh. hard over here. Oh, that's cool. And let the vanilla bean and scrape it. You want to get all those seeds out. Do you know how to do that? No. Yeah, see the Never seeds? Done that. Those oh, are vanilla wow. bean seeds, oh, see? Good. And you leave the thing in. But then you yeah. put the seeds in. And poach all of these until they're tender. <laughs> Look what they look the color they. Why turn. did you take the seeds out and then you put them back in? No, no, no seeds. Oh, okay. I thought you put them in there. No, no the okay. vanilla bean seeds. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Oh okay. no, because that's the flavor. Oh, okay. Now here are your cooked quince. Wow. And you add to this cooked quince just a little bit of the reduced poaching liquid, mm -hmm. and is that the one the liquid from your pot? Yes. Okay. And you boil it down, yeah. and you uh, add two teaspoons of cornstarch. Mm. Cornstarch will again thicken the juices. So you don't have a very runny dessert. Okay. And these, <laughs> that Woodford Reserve is going to love you. That's a good bourbon I love them. too. That's made right down in Kentucky. Mm. I know. Yeah. My people. Okay. So now this goes right into your baking dish. Okay. Let's take all that all thicken up, and this is the topping, which is flour, oh. cornmeal. And you can just oh, I love that. Put this it's just all a crumble. Over the top. Yeah, it's oh. sort of a crumble. Mm -hmm. All over the top like this. Had a quince in your this life? You know, taste oh, it. You're going to love it. It's fantastic. Yeah, have you tasted it? Is it good? Someday yeah, my quince will come. This is a quince crumble. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a quince, Martha. Oh, it is We're so having our first good. quince. Have you had a quince before? I, I grew. No, you. Oh, I grew quince. I've never heard of it. It's been a best quince year too. No, really beautiful. Really good. Put this all over the top. And sprinkle your almonds, sliced almonds, on top of this. Today.com slash food is where you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pick up Martha's book. It's yeah. fantastic. We and ran out of time. Book number, book number 100. Have you written your tell-all yet? It's coming. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It'll be a good one. Uh, Thanks, <laughs> Martha. I bet it'll tell some tales, Martha. And cranberry. So don't, don't forget the cranberry skillet cake. That looks so good. And the recipes are on the website. And fruit desserts is out right now. Delicious. Thank you, Thank Martha. You. Thank you. Mm. Martha Stewart, she's making one of her favorites. It's a classic fish burger, and with more than 50 cookbooks full of recipes, for you to say this is one of your personal favorites, I mean, it's got to be good, Martha. Well, I I really like the fish hake. It's a an expensive fish compared hake, hake. Huh. and uh, it's a member of the codfish family, and and it's a wonderful white fish. And when you cut it up into nice little cubes like this, it comes like that. That's a uh -huh. that's a fillet. Mm. Um, just is it like a halibut? I've never heard of hake. No, no, it's it's lighter than a halibut. Okay. Uh, and and as I say, less expensive. Breadcrumbs. Uh huh. Nice fresh breadcrumbs. So just take a white loaf and grind it up in the food processor. Okay. Two eggs. Yeah. Mm. Really easy. Are those eggs from your farm? Yes, they are. Of course they are. <laughs> yes, they are. The, oh, the hens are laying really well right now because of the warm use, like, weather. By the way, can you use the boxed uh, uh, Italian breadcrumbs or panko or something like that? Uh, work, yes, or? you could. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. I, but, I know you uh, make everything fresh. Though. But so this is a delicious and a little bit of cayenne pepper, which is very nice. Did you catch the hake in your little lake out there? <laughs> no, the no, hake is or? a saltwater fish. Okay. Not a fish. How come you don't have a saltwater pond? Um, well, I'm so sorry, but in Maine I do. Okay. In Maine I do. In Maine you do. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, then don't apologize if you have one. Incredible. A teaspoon of salt. Yep. Some. 
um, freshly um, ground ch uh, chopped chives. Right from the garden, no oh, doubt. Yes. And uh, don't forget capers. Yeah. Capers. Ooh, are those a, crushed capers? A quarter of a cup mm -hmm. of chopped capers. Chopped oh. capers, okay. Rinse them on, out of the jar and then... Uh, How about some and, uh, mayo? Are you going to bind uh, this thing? Definitely. You're making like a crab cake, basically. It here. is. It's like a crab cake, but it's a burger. This because is we're not gonna, amazing. Yeah. And here's the mayo. We have so our taster. Chanel's already finished. Oh my gosh, I'm almost oh, finished. Oh, this so is almost, phenomenal. What do you, so what do you good. think, guys? It's so good. It's so good. Oh, Carson, wait until you try this. Why don't we eat more fish burgers in America? I don't know. Oh, it's not that be. hard to make. No, no. it's not hard at all. And it's all. a nice alternative to red meat. Uh -huh. exactly. It is. Or chicken. It uh -huh. is. And, or turkey. Right. Turkey burgers are good, too. They're one of my favorites. So this is a very nice mixture. Um, make the burgers. The nice way to make them uniform in size is to use a little ring like this, yep. like a biscuit ring. Okay. And uh, just take some of the nice mixture mm -hmm. and put mm. it in here. Pack it. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to put this on parchment paper and chill it before I oh. um, oh, actually that, cook mm -hmm. the burgers. Look at that perfect burger. That's ideal. See how nice? Yeah. So I have, some, home, I have some that are already chilled. Okay. Yum. And they're going to go and why, right Why do we chill a, it, Martha? Why, a little why? olive oil. Why do you chill yeah. the burger? They hold their shape. Just hold oh, it together. Hold it together. together. Oh. Yeah, because the breadcrumbs and the mayo, it, it all it. gets mm -hmm. a little bit uh, firmer. It's a cold plunge. It's all the rage. And then just brown these. Yeah. Uh, and it takes oh, about eight minutes or ten minutes to cook. I gotta go back to the hake. How come I don't see hake well, at the, my you. local market? Is but it? you're not asking. You haven't looked. Oh, you have to ask for it. Yes, ask for it's it. It's there. What do they hold stuff They're, in the back? No, no, they have the salmon. They have the cod. Right. They have the halibut. That's right. Some of these. Just asking for the halibut. Just asking for the halibut. Okay. Pound now. For the halibut. Just for the halibut. And now this is this one of the one of the garnishes is pickled onions. Yeah. So this is Japanese rice wine vinegar. Okay. A little bit of sugar and mm -hmm. a little bit of salt. It's like a sake. Almost. A red, a red mm -hmm. onion, sliced, mm. peeled and sliced. You make and it. just let that stay for oh a day or two, and look what happens. It look pickles right up. Pickles. Yummy. Wow. See how pretty. What other sort of toppings do you like to put oh, on your fish? Oh well, burger? I like I like the onions. First, a little mayo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. They're not yeah, ready. I, I'm just kind of. So you're not ready. They really aren't. I thought they'd be yeah. sticky. This is a mustard part, mayo, oh, a mustard. buttered, a buttered brioche bun, oh. mustard mayo. So oh, add about gosh. a couple tablespoons of Dijon mm. mustard to your oh, mayo. Of course you would. It's so and good. And the brioche bun. Get that bun. ready, and Carson, then put a couple Perfect. pickled onions I'm on. Idea. Carson, How pretty try these. Let me, while I have you, let me ask you just two quick business questions okay. here. Okay. Uh, book number one hundred, I believe, is in the workshop on biography. I'm running home right after this to to take more pictures. My hundred favorite recipes will be my hundredth wow. book. Wow. Oh, and I'm we learned ready. a little bit about you too in your uh, past. And oh yes, and a lot of a lot of when historic you were a pictures. Never a Marine. Okay. No. <laughs> Always a Girl Scout. Okay, right. Yes, definitely a Girl Scout. And how about the Roku show, Martha and, Cooks? Oh, gosh, we're doing that. Um, we have so many wonderful shows on Roku now. We They have my whole library, yeah, too. That's um, nice. On Channel 448. Mm -hmm. I live at 48. <laughs> Right. I lived at 48 well, Turkey Hill people, Road. Well, don't and tell I people live your at, address, Martha. Well, I live at 48. She's, she's I'm not currently? Not, I'm not. Yeah, two houses, both okay, numbers. I'm going to edit that out. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> don't edit ridiculous. it out. 448. Well, they don't question. know where it is. I'll take care of it on the West Coast, it's, but we're, it's you're in, in trouble now. It, it's, in, it's in Hudson, New York. No, no, yes, all right, just keep telling people. Has Snoop Dogg moved in yet? You're going to need his help here. No, not yet, but he, yeah, his bodyguard, Tiny, is this Tiny, Tiny, of course. Martha, as always, thank you so much. Thank you. Are you enjoying it? This is
help us kick off the outdoor cooking season, who better than America's favorite lifestyle maven, Martha Stewart. She's out with a, a new book. It's a guide to all things grilling. It's called What Else? But Martha Stewart's Grilling. Yes. The 95th cookbook. Yeah, well, 95th book. 95th yeah. book. Lots of those are cookbooks. But grilling, it's its the season. The weather has finally gotten beautiful. Yes. And, uh, and people really like to cook outdoors. I enjoy cooking outdoors yes. as well. In fact, now, do you have a less, grill like this, a charcoal? I, or? I'm a gas guy. You're a gas guy. Because it's faster for me. Okay. I've got small kids. I'm just trying to get in, get out. Right. But I know you love charcoal. I love, I love real hard charcoal, the kind the jewelers use. It gets up to 900 degrees. I like it really hot. And I really like pure. So I don't want to use any starter. Don't use those starter fluids. Okay. You know, start with, you know, with... How do you keep your grates clean? I well, mean, your... first, of course, put your grill away clean. Every okay. time you use it, use a brush like this. Scrub that grate so it's nice and clean. Okay. You can use a little bit of oil on a piece of paper towel and a, and a tong like this and yeah. clean, your, clean your grill. And then you cook. Now, this chicken has been cooking for... Oh, about 20 minutes. You want chicken, this is for the first, the first recipe, you want the chicken 165 degrees. 165, yes. you need your outdoor thermometer. Yes, sure yes. You, you have it. your little th re instant read there thermometer and you just use that. All right, let's get then, cooking here, Martha. Okay, let's so this, this chicken. is chicken with green chili dressing. It is so delicious. Once it's cooked, you make a dressing of cilantro, uh, zest of lime, juice of one lime, olive oil, and we can make this dressing ahead of time. Oh, yes. Okay. And you can say it gets, actually gets better ahead of time. Some scallions, some serrano peppers. That's your dressing. That's pretty simple. And, oh, it's so simple. How long do you marinate? Uh, well, you don't marinate. This is cooked on the grill, just oh. salt and pepper. Okay. And then you put the dressing on after it's cooked. Oh. And there it is. And everybody's going to have a taste. You're going to have a taste of this. You're going to love it. They're already this. tasting that. Oh, yeah. What's the verdict, now, Carson Daly? What do you think? Oh, I mean, come on. Chicken, Martha. good. What can't you do? It's amazing. Good. The next thing is the Korean uh, skirt oh, yeah. steak. That's the best. And now these are, it's sort of like a skirt steak, but it is a uh, short rib cut in the flank style. See this? See how beautiful I love ribs. Is? They're my favorite to yes. cook on the grill, but so traditional ribs So instead of the long forever. ribs, yes. This is cut in a, a, the opposite direction, and boy, is it good. This is marinated. And the marinade is soy sauce. Not marinade, no, no, marinade. Mar marinade. Marinade. <laughs> and it's, uh, it is rice vinegar, sesame seeds, white or black, soy sauce, scallion, a little bit of light brown sugar, and freshly grated um, ginger and garlic. Okay. You want to grate a little ginger? Yes, ma'am. How, uh, how much ginger do we use? Well, you just, just grate it like that, yep. You know, a lot. Go back and forth, yes. And then you Don't be afraid, all... Melvin. Just grate it. I'm grating it. Yeah. I'm grating it. Martha, <laughs> is that enough? Yeah, that's good. And okay. put that all in there, yep. And then your short ribs go right in here. Those short ribs go right in here. And you put them on the grill. How long? How long? Uh, I do this overnight or okay. a couple hours before. So if you're if you're a late night, you know, if you you want to come home and cook, yes, these should be marinated overnight. What's the verdict on the short ribs? So, yeah. My favorite. Yeah. It's really good. Good. They are all Very marinated. Nice. Clean plate club. And then you just put these three minutes aside. I'll do that for you. Yep, you do that. I'll make myself useful here. Three minutes aside. Oh yeah, nice and flat. Uh, yes, ma'am. And you can also use these protective gloves. These have a little bit of silicon on them. So if you want to pick stuff Look up. Look at Guthrie helping out there. That's right. Oh, good. Do the we, got a, we got a burner over Five here. Five minutes aside. Oh, okay. We got okay. about 20 minutes on this. Okay. Side. The others, yeah, do it that way. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's I got pretty, there just in time. Pretty well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this is served on lettuce leaves with kimchi and the, um, the wonderful um, fermented chili now. sauce. Do you like that? And scallions and cucumber. Really and this is one. so, so delicious. That's how you serve it. All right. What so do you think? I'm a big fan of uh, Korean And then grilled food. salmon is uh, my favorite because I love light salads in the summertime. And a grilled salmon, this is a salmon that's been overcooked. <laughs> Not really. No, that's that's, fine. Fine. That is so beautiful. Look how nice. Use one of these baskets for doing fish. Cooking fish can be a bit intimidating on the grill. It, it, I yeah, find that it falls apart. Yeah, or, but this is this great, that's why you this have one great of those. basket. Yeah. Use one of your, this yeah. is Martha Stewart basket. It is, but uh, but uh, you can find these in uh, other brands too. What's in the salmon salad and really quickly? Salmon salad is the, is the uh, salmon that's been cooked with a little bit of lemon zest. Always squeeze wow. fresh lemon juice over it. Flake it up. You want to flake it up or you can stir. 
I'll stir it. Yes, ma'am. And there's a great dressing. Do you like anchovy? I, I do, in oh, moderation. Good. So there's, there's a dressing with olive oil, anchovy, a little mustard, salt, and pepper. Just pour that all over the whole thing. Whole thing, whole bottle? Yep. Okay. And then flake the salmon into big flakes. Al, what's the verdict? This is terrific. Delicious. Like a salmon dish. Where'd you get these here? eggs, Martha? Martha those eggs, those are eggs those right at. Fresh. You can find all the recipes today.com slash Martha Stewart Stewart for Martha's book. Yep. Today.com slash shop. We're back today, food. We're heading to this 4th of July weekend. We have called in the expert to sweeten the celebration. Martha Stewart's here. She's going to show us how to make a sour cherry pie with three different spins on the crust. Is that right? right? Exactly. Sour cherries can be hard to find in the grocery store, no? Well, they're, they all, it's a very short season. Okay. So maybe two weeks, three weeks at the most. All right. And most of them come from places like New York State or Michigan, and they're beautiful. They're like little rubies, oh. and but you have to pit them. Okay. Because otherwise, your family or your friends will break their teeth. They have already. These have already been. Yeah, pitted, this is so this is a silly little pitter. Okay, that there's is a not better, the pitter you want. No, because there's a better pitter that I don't have with me, and it, it does multiples at, at the okay. same time. So, oh, this is aren't the they good? Today's show pitter, we won't be. Using <laughs> okay. And so here is. The f it's the pits, exactly. <laughs> so this is the first crust with a nice fluted edge. Always make your pastry cold, cold butter, cold flour, okay. cold water, and then uh, roll it out, keep cold it chilled. Heart. Fill it with the filling, which is sugar, a little bit of flour, a little bit of butter, and this is the crumb topping. Mm. This is, is this the easiest of the toppings, Martha, the crumb topping? Yeah, very easy. It's just butter, flour, uh, brown sugar, and a pinch of salt. And so you just crumble the crumble over the top of the pie, bake it hot, like in a 400 degree oven. It is so good. I love Let's a crumble. See. Yeah, isn't it great? Crust in general. So yeah, yummy. crumble, crisp, yeah. whatever you want to call it. But put a lot on because it really does yeah. enhance the sourness of those delicious cherries. Okay. Now here is a very cute topping. This is the solid crust pie. Okay. And this is you cut the you cut the a little. If you have a round cookie cutter, you can do that. Yeah. But you can also use a pastry cutter like that to cut the rounds. This lets the steam escape, oh. and your crust will get nice and crispy. Do you have a favorite? Top, a favorite crust top? No, no, no I make all of these. Okay, all you're agnostic these. when it and comes to And now the, okay. this is the most complicated. You roll out your dough and you uh, lattice top. Mm. The lattice top. Lattice top. Now, that looks intimidating. So you can fake it and oh, just put it good. over, put them one way and then the other way. But if you're very particular, you can actually oh, weave wow. the lattice, see? 
What's the hardest part about it? The weaving or getting the pieces to be rolling uniform? it out, rolling yeah. it out, and then cutting it with a little pastry wheel like this? Oh, yeah. How's what's that? Would you like that pastry wheel? No, not so, no. Yeah. There's, there's, no. There's, Why'd you ask? Because you, you knew what she was going to say. Because Martha and I've been you. together a long time. There are, there are better. There are better pastry I'm wheels. I'm just stirring the pot. Yeah. But, it, a but it spoon. works. It works. It don't you know? And so now remember, this one has to go way under here. Okay. So because you're going to weave it. And say. do you bake bake the pies all for the same amount of time, regardless of uh, the, the crust topping? No. Oh, some of them take a little longer than others, okay. like the solid crust will take a little longer than the lattice. But look how pretty when you really weave it. Okay. I want really to talk good. About this lemonade is what? This, this. Well, this is sour cherry lemonade. Oh. Very so sour. you can put your sour cherries, make a make a uh, syrup a of, of the sour cherries. Well, that's good. And, and that's you refreshing. mix it with lemon and orange and a little bit of mint, and that is so good. Sour cherries are just one of my favorite fruits. Martha Stewart, you're one of our favorite people. And here, this is for you. Oh, Martha made me cherry pie, y'all. So Aren't these cute napkins? So cool. Did you make these uh, too? Yes, these are these are bandanas, and then you can stencil the names on them. Oh. That is so you got cute. Your Martha, thank you. you go. Recipes today. Today. Like com really slash cool. food. <laughs>back with today food the one the only Martha Stewart Martha Martha yeah. Martha we all know she's the queen of decorating cake baking <laughs> and gardening well now she's sharing an up close and personal look at her many talents and interesting stories she's got a new show I cannot get over this title Martha gets down and dirty take a look the best use of a chainsaw I ever heard though a couple was getting divorced and they could not decide about what to do with their home furnishings and the wife just said okay well you take half of everything and she <laughs> went away and her husband used the chainsaw and cut everything in half <laughs> So That's it's a feel-good so show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't bode well for the dog. Yeah. Martha, good morning. You're out in uh, your, your, st your house out there in the country. We love it. So how'd you come up with this title? I mean, I think we knew you were down and dirty, we deep did down know. inside. But everybody else thinks of you as like the queen well, of clean. Well, I am the queen of, queen of clean inside the house, but out in the garden, it is kind of dirty. You're working in the dirt, right? <laughs> yeah. So it gets me a chance to just just kind of be myself and, and, uh, and show all the great gardening tips how to grow things, how to cook things outdoors. And, uh, and today we're grilling all kinds of fantastic uh, sausages, um, which which I know Al Roker would really like. Mm. And the guests on our show are fantastic. We have Kim Kardashian. Tiffany Haddish is a hoot. Mm -hmm. And there's some guy called Al Roker. Oh, Al Roker, Roker you were on the show, it. too. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I forgot because it was and during the pandemic. But, yes, I, we were talking about yep. the, the rub. Yep, and he, and he does a great rub. <laughs> so <laughs> barbecue rub. Fun. Barbecue well, rub. They did and say it was yeah. Martha down and, and bar dirty. Barbecue rub. Yeah. <laughs> well, Martha, tell yeah, us the show's about these on Discovery Plus. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about these dogs you're grilling. Like, it, is there an art to it? Oh well, all kinds of dogs. 
you know, if you're going to have a grilling party, why not make it really interesting? Not just hot dogs, but special all beef hot dogs, kielbasa, uh, a Greek sausage we just found called Ooh. called uh, Lucanico. It's it's a combination of uh, meat and uh, oregano and lemon, mm. and we have beautiful cheddar bratwurst. Oh. These are so Yum. pretty. And uh, and then, of course, don't forget the rolls. The rolls have to be uh, beautifully buttered uh, before you put them on the grill. Oh, and yeah. make sure roll, yeah. you don't burn stuff. Yeah. You know, Al Roker, he's he's also a proponent of not burning stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, if the flame is up high like that, just move the stuff or spray it with a, a little spray bottle. But get your, your rolls nicely, just slightly charred. Mm -hmm. And the condiments, oh my gosh, look at all the condiments we have on here. Bread and butter pickles. French mustard. Um, this is the uh, you know the baseball stadium mustard, of course. Mm -hmm. Chopped onions, red relish, green relish, sauerkraut, my favorite. Mm. Sour cream. Uh, you have nice um, uh, spicy mustard, tomatoes chopped up, and this is fantastic. A, a beet horseradish mustard. Oh, wow. So horseradish. and bacon and dill pickles. Yum. And doesn't that make your mouth water? Don't you want Looks one good. of these right now? I wish you were here. Martha, maybe you ought to close the lid, Martha, just to kind of knock that fire down. Yeah, that's yeah, a good idea. Yeah, for one second, you're right. And I love this grill dome. This is a custom colored. You can get it any color you uh -oh. want. I love mm. this. So you, yeah, you can have it match your house, your backyard, whatever. It's a really clever, clever thing. Yeah. Oh, so there let's it goes. Uh, let that hey, Martha, cool down a little bit. Hey, Martha, yeah. what's your per describe how you would prepare your perfect hot dog. What what are your condiments? What do you like on yours? Oh, well, let's let's get one right here. Here's a hot dog. And on a buttered bun, and I would put first, I like French mustard, so mm -hmm. I would put a nice mm -hmm. Dijon mustard on. Oh, I love relish, mm -hmm. and I would put relish. Do you know I have a hot dog at every hot dog stand? It's called a Martha dog. What? And, uh, and every place is a little bit Different from yeah, Rutz Hut has a Martha dog, uh, Raleigh's in Fairfield has a Martha what? dog, uh, the great hot dogs, the hot dog place in California and L.A. has a oh, hot Pink's? dog called the Martha dog. Oh yeah, Pink's. Yeah, I have. A, does Al Roker have a hot dog at Pink's? I do not. I do you not. Have not. Roker Roker. I'm not Martha oh, Stewart. Well, Come on. I think I think I think you should be working on that one, Al, because those are very famous. Uh -huh. And so that's what I have: pickles, and I love bacon on my. Oh, I'm wow. going to put a piece of bacon in oh, there. That's a good one. So there there's you go. my hot that's dog. A good one. Well, I love and Martha. Martha, <laughs> Martha, one more thing. What do you call them when it gets really crispy, when your dogs get really crispy? Oh, snappies. These snap. snappies. Oh, yeah. Oh, and okay. I right. love those. Yeah, um, Raleigh's is famous for snappers, as well as Rut Hut, Rutt's Hut is also uh, famous for snappers. Okay. Really? That you get, you know, snaps, snappers, you put in hot oil first. Oh, you know, you, you fry right. them a little What's bit. What's happening then, to that Martha, that's, that's the, the secret. Right. Right. Okay. 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 A little flame going on. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right, Martha, okay. thank you so no, much. No, no, this is good. <laughs> okay. Our guide this morning, the one and only Padma Lakshmi. Hi, everybody. Uh, Padma, of course, host on Bravo's Top Chef. Tonight is that hit show's 19th season finale. Chef's getting one last chance to compete for the grand prize. Padma, you've been there from the very beginning with the exception of that first season. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and it's been a really long, long, great ride. Yeah. I never thought that it would last this long, but I mean, you know, we're doing well, the show is better than ever, and yeah. the critics still like it, so I'm very lucky. And not to give away too much, but the scuttle, but is next season, you guys are going to do something you've never done before, is that right? Yes, we're going to go international for the whole season. We have been international for finales. Okay. Uh, we've but the whole to season Singapore and Macau and everywhere else, but the whole season is outside America. Don't ask me where yet. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's let's cook. Let's let's eat. What are we making this morning? Uh, we are making the healthiest dish possible. So I'm going to make a sauce, and it's a Balinese baked fish. I first had this dish when I was in Bali okay. over 20 years ago, and it's so simple. And the reason I like it is because it's very low effort. Okay. You'll see. We love that. It's very healthy. It's very high protein, and it's easy to make. Okay. You know, people always ask me how I stay lean yes. as, you know when I do all this eating on Top Chef it's not easy but it's eating like this okay. that helps after I finish so we're gonna start with onions in the blender and to the onions we're gonna add garlic ginger okay. a little bit of tamarind paste now tamarind, tamarind paste. paste 
is wonderful. You can get it at any good supermarket. It'll last in your pantry. It's going to add like a, a, ta a tart and sweet tang to it. Okay. Also, I'm adding toasted sesame oil All right. and cumin powder. Cumin powder. And a little salt to taste. That is really it. And about a, two or three tablespoons of water. Okay. Go ahead. We'll mix that up. You're going to mix that up. I'm not going to do it because of sure. the noise. But this is this what, what it looks, looks like. like. And what kind of fish are we using here? We're using red snapper, but honestly, you could use cod, you could use flounder. Any white fish. Any white fish. This is so easy. And, and they're already digging in over there. What's what's the verdict? How taste? is it? Cod yummy. Got a lot of umami to it. Oh, you love the umami. And love then the umami. I'm, all I'm doing is pouring this. That's and it. this is going to go into an oven at 350 degrees for 20 or 25 minutes, and that's all. Foil? And then we'll, no foil. Foil. Okay. Foil. So you cook it covered. Cook it covered. Right. And then when it's done, I know it doesn't look very appetizing, but it's so <laughs> delicious. All you're going to do is take fresh mint. Uh -huh. Oh, mint. And, and garnish. garnish. Okay. And a little bit of lemon juice. And, and this has literally like less than 250 calories a wow. serving. Wow. Yeah. And you're going to pair it with protein. bok choy? I am. I so. find cooking bok choy intimidating. Why? I, I don't know. It's probably because <laughs> I'm not a very good <laughs> cook. So good. So you want to get bok choy and you just want to quarter it like this. Depending on the size, you can cut it smaller. Okay. And all we're going to do is dump this bok choy and That's blanch it, it literally bok for 90 seconds. And why okay? do you blanch it? So that it cooks evenly and you don't get weird spots when you're sauteing it. Okay. But you don't want to cook it for that long. Like this is going to cook for literally 90 seconds, two minutes. And then you take it out and you you're immersing it in the cold. You don't even have to. Oh. I mean, look, if it's a weeknight and the kids are hungry and you okay. got to go, don't worry about emergency. So you're not in a restaurant. It's, it's got fine. a little kick. So Yummy. this is what it looks like when it's blanched about 90 seconds. I have butter melting here. This is so easy as well. And again, all I'm doing is adding some Asian ingredients to it, which is the toasted sesame oil. What? See a theme emerging. Soy sauce. Well, it's going to go with that fish, right? Onions. Garlic. No onions, sorry. That was garlic. Garlic. That was ginger and a little bit of red chili. There's your bite. It's There's really your bite. Good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then you just saute this up. And I mean, I literally made it in real time. I made this whole meal in real time, except for the 20 minutes that the fish took. Right. That's yeah. how easy it is. That's and true, really good. Yeah. I love it. I like the flavors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Never yeah. thought yeah. I liked to do this joy. recipe. Yeah. Yeah. You don't cook a wow. lot. She has a cooking even show. Savannah, I okay, have confidence that I can do this. Mm -hmm. So good. I can eat a whole plate of that box. Oh, that is yeah. Yeah. Really, really good. Really good. Thank really good. you. Thank Thank congratulations, you. by the way. Yes. Thank you so Folks much. Folks who tune in tonight for the finale, what can they expect? Yes, they can expect a lot. We have three contestants who all have different styles of cooking. And we're in Tucson, which is a UNESCO food heritage site. Tucson? So I'm very excited. Tucson? Yes! 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 People. I loved it. That's my home. Yeah. It was yeah. so Tucson. nice. Pablo yeah. Lakshmi, thank you so much as always. Thank Congratulations. You.
day food. Summer does not have to be all burgers and hot dogs, you know, and it can still be delicious. If you are looking to bring more veggies into the rotation, you're in luck all the way from the Butcher's Club at Palm Beach's PGA National Resort. We've got Top Chef Season 13 winner, Jeremy Ford with some veggie recipes to spice up the dinner. Hi, good yes, morning. Hi, I'm I such a huge fan. Change. I'm a yes. fan. <laughs> all right, veggies. Now look, I'm a little skeptical because I'm a carnivore, but this all looks delicious. But all this goes with carnivore stuff. Okay, so you're great. Good. So show um, me what you yeah, got. Yeah, this is one of my favorite dishes from the Butcher's Club at PGA. And we basically take these beautiful sweet Vidalia onions. Yes. Um, and we put them in a pot, okay. skin on. Oh, skin and on. And we have a little bit of milk, water in there. Mm -hmm. uh, some aromatics such as thyme, a little rosemary, some black peppercorn. You just put it in sprigs and Whee! all. I love that. Uh, yeah, how easy can that be? I mean, I'm into the ease of that. Okay. <laughs> and the reason we do this is because we're, we're basically poaching the inside of the onion mm -hmm. slowly. So we'll bring this up to a boil and let it cook for like five or six minutes. Okay. And then we'll just check it by, you know, pulling it out and doing a little squeeze. And what do you want it to be kind of soft? Just a little softer than a, a raw onion. Okay, so like great. five to seven minutes. All right, we got our tasters over there. Wow. So we'll get the oh verdict. Oh, oh, we already got an OMG. This is wow. so good. Okay, yes. so now what happens? So basically now we take off the root end. Mm -hmm. um, without taking off my finger. Yeah, right? that's always tricky. <laughs> you need those. And then we just pull the center out. So it's really, really oh, easy wow. once it's soft Yum. to pull this out, right? Oh, Take off the outside. Because we're going to stop There what? we go. I know, right? So we'll pull all these layers off and okay. leave the outer two. Wow. And if you want to make it look cool, you leave the little top yeah, on. Yeah, that's neat. A little hat. Okay, and then we're going to stuff it with this yes. looks like potato salad yes, of some yes. sort. Yes, so, yes. So in here is a little bit of horseradish, mm. some heavy cream, oh, potatoes, good. you know, a light lunch. Oh yeah, I know. My goodness. <laughs> you said, we didn't say it was a low fat. We just right. said it was vegetarian. We just said it was going to be easy and fun. Mm -hmm. So Yum. we stuff our gratin in okay. here. Yeah. Oh, it's a like gratin. Yeah, gratin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> gratin, as we would say hozy. Exactly. Yeah. Hozy. I actually learned this from my mentor, <laughs> Dean Max, taught me this years and years ago. It's so. a beautiful recipe. Okay, yeah, then what, now him. what do we do? So now um, that that's stuffed in there, are you trying to stuff some? Well, I feel like this guy needs you to be get stuffed, okay, doesn't he? I don't right. want to waste my time here. Okay. okay. I mean, I don't want you to oh, you know, so waste you the onion. Not my time. I meant to say I don't want to waste this beautiful onion. I have all the time in the world. Oh, okay. love um, it. All right, let's do it. So then what, we roast it? So then we just pop this thing in the oven, let it get oh all crispy goodness. and delicious oh like that. Is and it then, so yummy, you guys? Oh, this is so, so yummy. Good. Fun, right? Like there's Nuts. gratin, but you never had gratin in oh. an onion. Horseradish is yeah. perfect. Wow. Yeah, okay. Um, cool, and then we bake that off and we roast it. So okay. So we can move on. And then you can serve it with this cream spinach. So how do we make that? Yes, the cream spinach is my so claim good. to fame. Uh, at the Butcher's Club and PGA, mm. this is our top selling dish. Oh, okay, wow. Everyone loves this dish. It's amazing. Even at Sovereign Seed in my other restaurant in uh, mm. South Beach, we run this dish. Okay. So everyone's had cream spinach, right? So uh -huh. simple, shallots, You see from a box, but... to be honest. <laughs> no! Yes. I will come to your house and cook it okay, for you okay. so you never do that. <laughs> oh, I'm going to learn from you okay. right now. Okay, okay. good, good, So good. what are we sauteing there? So that's shallots, garlic, and onion. All right. Wow. Right? So you'll get that nice uh, base, oh which is kind of like the base for most cream spinaches, mm -hmm. right? We're adding a little flour. We're adding a little is flour. Is this a roux? This is a roux. <laughs> okay, you're hired. Second French word, <laughs> roux and gratin. Okay. Uh, and then we cook that out for like five minutes. Now it looks kind of dry and crumbly. Is that all right? It's dry and crumbly We're until we go, ta-da. We add the heavy cream and let mm. that cook for a little while. Okay. What makes ours so cool though, yes. right? So typically you have your spinach and your cream, okay. oh which is this cooked down. Yes, and you already cooked your spinach. We already cooked our spinach in boiling water, shocked it in ice water so we keep that beautiful green color. Mm -hmm. But what makes ours funky and cool funky. is tarragon, basil, and dill herb. Oh. So it gives you this you oh, she, she knows. I mean, I mean, we're about to be finished <laughs> over here. Oh. oh my gosh. Yeah. But wait a minute, you take these herbs and you just put them in the blender of the food processor? Yes, and then also ice it. So yeah, so I forgot okay. to tell you, you gotta ice it before you oh blend gosh. it, that way it doesn't continue to turn brown. Oh, Because okay. you want nice bright green spinach like this. Okay, right? we're gonna put all these specifics. You're gonna share this recipe. It's of right? course. Okay, yes. The secret has been revealed. Mm. So it the has world that will know. Guys, have it a kit? Does it's that great. Chef, how do you make it so it's not too soupy? It's got perfect yeah. texture. The right amount of flour into your heavy cream mix. Mm -hmm. That's what's gonna give you the perfect consistency. Okay. So I was like a little bit more just in case so it doesn't it's get great. too runny. Right? Okay. This is amazing. I'm glad Actually, you're enjoying. You're cooking it up, and then here's a dumb question. Do you then put it in the oven after this step? Yes, okay. if you want to. You could serve it hot out of this pot right here okay. onto a dish, but I like I like these little casserole I dishes know. to get it really hot. Yeah, you know? hot, and then does it like brown off on the top or something? Could you put a little cheese on top? You could put a little, hey, you know what? Let's put some cheese on top. Oh my gosh. Let's go. 
Yeah. Listen. And then you bake it off. Bake it off a little bit. Bake it off. Oh. Get it, yeah, maybe even put the broiler on. Yeah. Why not? The broiler. Yeah. Now we're talking. So, Guys, so what's happening? Years. Clean plate club. Listen, I was just about to say. No. It's like, <laughs> I don't even miss the meat. No. I was about to ask you, does anyone it, it miss no. the meat? No. That onion was insane. Yeah. I've never had anything like it. Yeah. Okay. It's such a fun reiteration of our classic favorite two things, right? Graton, creamy spinach, but just done a little differently, right? Yeah. Wow. Phenomenal. Say Graton again. Graton. 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 Mm. <laughs> Gracias for yes. the Graton, mm. Chef Jeremy. Thank you so much. If you want to find these recipes and a lot more, go to today.com slash food. And we are back with today's food. This morning's guest, Kwame Onwachi, a James Beard Award winner. You may have seen him as both a contestant and recurring judge on Top Chef. He's also, by the way, opened five restaurants, all before turning 30. And now he's out with a follow-up to his acclaimed memoir. It actually is his first cookbook. It's fantastic. It's called My America, Recipes from a Young Black Chef. Kwame, so good to see you. Man, I'm, I'm so curious about how you, in this book, have taken your whole history, like from Nigeria to mm -hmm. the Caribbean to Louisiana to the Bronx, and how have this book has been just basically your lifeline. For sure. You know, it's my version of what... I found American cuisine as a kid. When you're a kid, you're not asking like, what ethnicity is this when you're eating food? You right. know, I know I'm in America and I'm eating something. So that was American food to me. So it shows a lexicon of how diverse American What do you remember is. about being in little Jamaica in the Bronx eating food that you're about to make for us today? Jerk chicken. <laughs> I remember sitting on the side of the road with my father, getting jerk chicken out of a barrel um, and getting sauce all over my face. What is jerk sauce? What is jerk? So uh, jerk sauce, you know, it started as an act of like preservation, but it's a, it's a sauce that has so many different layers of flavor. Um, it, it starts with a marinade, yeah. and you marinate this, this chicken or pork or, or vegetables in this sauce, and then it's smoked and let's get Let's get to it. So the, the jerk sauce, I always recommend making this from scratch. So I have a pepper sauce here. It's mm -hmm. pretty much a scotch bonnet puree. Um, we have thyme. We have... Um, a little bit of tamarind, we have scallion, ginger, garlic, and soy sauce, and then allspice, cinnamon, and bay leaf and clove. We're gonna put that in the blender, act yep. like this blender's yep. going. Yeah, no need to do that. <laughs> well, then the, the sauce comes out like this. So I like Is it to in make, like the barbecue sauce family? Is um, it? No, but you can make a barbecue sauce, which we're gonna do now. Okay. So we have ginger and garlic and onion sweating. You know, you add some ketchup to this, you add some brown sugar, and then you add your jerk paste, and then you let this simmer for about 30 minutes until it gets nice, 
deep and dark like this. I was saying when I went to uh, spring break on MTV, we flew into Montego Bay and there was, the weather was so bad, I had to drive to the grill. And uh, we stopped on the street along yeah. the way and I had my first jerk chicken. It's like a culinary thing I'll never forget. Your first real jerk chicken, Is it a right? street food? Is yeah, it's actually, it's actually a street food. Um, there's a lot of history in it and that's the beautiful thing about My America. It gets into the history of the dishes and why they stood the test of time. Perfect. So you got your jerk barbecue. You can blend it if you want um, to make it smooth. I like mine a little bit chunky. The difference between my jerk chicken recipe is I like to brine the chicken. Yep. I like to infuse the flavor deep into it. So like I have an overnight brine sort of thing? Overnight brine. Uh, you have your flavors of your jerk uh, paste in the brine as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And then you'll marinate it, throw it on the grill. I love it. We're in the studio. You like to outside cook this, though. Yeah, because you got to add some smoke to it. You know? What kind and of wood chips do you like? I like to use pimento wood. The wow, never heard of that. That, that you know, grows the allspice berries, right. so you accentuate those flavors. Let's see our little chefs over there. What do you think of the jerk chicken? Our plates are almost empty. Are you yeah. serious? Oh, now you don't. Come on. We, 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 so, we got oh plenty. My God. Oh, my right. God. No, we need more. You know what's interesting? A lot of times jerk chicken, it's just there's, it's too wet. There's too much jerk sauce. Yours is perfect mm. because it's just a little bit, mm. and it gives you that hit. You know? well, so good. It, when you do it properly, like, it's such a refined dish. You know? What is doing it properly? What are the cooking tips on the chicken? How does it differ from gotta, the chicken? You got to smoke it. You know, you got to cook it in the grill. You got to let it marinate. You got to make your jerk seasoning from, from scratch. Mm -hmm. And that's how you build those layers of flavor. Mm -hmm. Is this what well, you're going to make it? You got, but we have to plug the family reunion because it's so Yeah, cool. the Just family reunion. Just say what it is to everybody. So the family reunion is this, uh, you know, four-day food festival at the Salamander Resort and Spa. We get some of the best chefs together in the Ooh. country and food professionals and, and entertainers as well. So um, it's it's really exciting. Tickets drop today, everybody. Okay. Of course they I want to see all of you oh at the God. family reunion. <laughs> That's gonna be good. What is the side dish, by the way? The side dish is sautéed uh, cabbage and carrots. Oh my God. How's that, guys? Good. I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah. Amazing. You know what we need? We need rum punch. A little, a little rum oh, punch. I got well, some. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on everything, man. Thank Looking you. forward to Thank the you. family reunion. The book is beautiful, too. Yeah. So much. Uh, great writing, great recipes, and this looks delicious. So there's a good lesson on jerk chicken. Kwame, thank you. That recipe, Yum. by the way, mm -hmm. is on our website, today.com slash food. And for the cookbook, check out today.com slash shop. It is awesome. Hello. Dawn Burrell made a name for herself competing in the long jump at the Sydney Olympics. Look at her. Back in awesome. 2000. <laughs> The next year, she won gold at the Indoor World Championships before she tore her ACL and decided to turn to another passion, which was cooking. Well, yes, as I... a chef, Dawn's been nominated for a James Beard Award, wow. a finalist in season 18 of Top Chef, and set to yes. open her restaurant late August Yay. in Houston <laughs> later on this year. But first, she's here to show us how to eat like an Olympian. Hi, Dawn. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I mean, I guess you're just a star at everything you try. <laughs> I mean, I've been told to do the best that I can in every endeavor so nice oh, okay just like you do we are not olympians at anything except for eating, <laughs> eating yeah we actually excel at that yes, sport we do. Awesome. so what we want to start the day with breakfast right you say there's three things we have to have every single day um, so I like to say that you should have some nuts for, for really rich proteins mm -hmm. um, and nice proteins and good fats you okay. know for your body mm -hmm. um, raw fruit and um, and some grains that are also rich. So um, what and is will this? Help you. This is a chocolate granola. Ooh. Chocolate um, granola. Yeah, and so this is granola? sort of fun on mm, on sure. vanilla yogurt mm -hmm. or you know in you know on top of a maybe oh, like wow. a little mm. chia seed bowl mm. or something like that. That's great. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this is a power smoothie. Delicious. This mm. power smoothie is filled with protein, antioxidants, and good fuel for your workout in the morning. Okay. okay. Um, and it's a good grab and go like breakfast. Uh, the, the you know that you can take to the track mm -hmm. with you or too. on your run with Love you or whatever. Yeah, yeah some bananas there, dates, uh, blueberries, and um, and almonds. Love it. It's so delicious. Good. That's where you good. use the protein. And then mm -hmm. avocado. You say start your day with some good fat. The, exactly. So if you are a savory breakfast person. Um, this is a way to go as well because you have some nice protein from the. This is a chili paste with um, oh, almonds yum. in it. Yeah, and so, Al swears by yeah. this. Is this yeah, the paste that's you love? That's the Trader Joe red yum. chili. Yeah, yeah, pie. yeah. And then you add a little bit of um, almonds in there, and then yum. you have oh, some wow. a protein packed uh, breakfast for for yourself mm. with, oh, with some nice fat. Have a little avocado. Yes, have a little avocado toast. 
Now, once we move to lunch, uh -huh. one of the things we, we never had when we were in Tokyo were some greens. Oh, I haven't, had a, I haven't <laughs> eaten anything green in three weeks. Help uh, us out here. Well, well I'm going to help you out with that yes. because we all need them, right? Um, so here we have um, a vitamin-rich salad um, with um, great antioxidant qualities also because it's a turmeric and vinegar dressing. Mm, I mean, turmeric. it's a ginger dressing. Mm. And um, what you'll do is so. you'll... I'm going to top this off yeah. a little bit. That looks beautiful. Um, um, this is a versatile dressing. You can use it on chicken or fish. You and know, you it has seeds on your salad, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think it's interesting. Seeds are also like rich, rich oh, fats, wow. good fats for the body, and, um, and also some fiber. Some yeah. fiber that's, that's great delicious. for digestion. That looks digestion. so good. Yeah. Yeah. You thank you, thank you. Yummy. Sorry. And for um, dinner, you swear yeah. by this chutney. This is, um, yeah, this is a go-to chutney. It is Trinidadian um, as far as culture is concerned, but you can also puree it and make it into a glaze that is functional for, like, roasts and things like that. What we did here is we just used it um, as a chutney or a relish on this chicken. It's called cuchilla. Wow. It's made, it's a little bit spicy. It's made with mangoes um, and ginger. This amchar, um, amchar masala, which is a um, garlic very lovely peppers. spices, oh, garlic lovely. peppers yes. and everything like that. Dawn, thank you so much. Oh, my thank pleasure. You. Thank you. You can find the recipes at today.com slash food, and she's back on the third hour uh, to tell us how to turn an athlete's cheat meal into a breakfast of champions. Oh, by the oh, way, right. speaking oh. of champions, yes. our champion weather person, Dylan Dreyer. Dylan. Oh, a little birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We have a special uh, bubbly drink. Oh, yes. You get cider. So. Thank, you for, <laughs> you thank you for the cider. There you as go. I, You're going to drink in, while you have apple cider? Yes. yes. As I bring in 40. Wow. You're only 40? The big 40? That's it? Wow. <laughs> I know they wanted when to I say happy birthday, morning, too. But, oh. <laughs> How old are you, Hanode? Are you 21? No, you better no, not. No, no. <laughs> I can't drink. Hanode's just a baby. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Happy, happy birthday, Dylan. Happy birthday, Dylan. Happy birthday, Dylan. Happy birthday. We love you. You guys are so sweet. Cheers. Dilly, dilly. We love you. Yeah, like like they need a, a reason to drink. <laughs> I know. We are back with Today Food, and it is inspired by a trip to London, so we thought Nicholas Holt would like to stick around. <laughs> Plus, he said he's never had a popover. So we got Gail Simmons, our not culinary a, expert. Not as you know it as a That's popover. That's right. right. Food writer, permanent chef, judge on Top Chef, now in its 20th season, 16 former competitors from all mm. around the world head to London, facing off for the ultimate world all-stars title. Gail joining us now to make a traditional Sunday roast using lamb. Gail, good yes, morning. that's right. Good, good morning. morning. Good to see you guys. That's good right. Morning. So London. So London. Top Chef, this is the first time in 20 seasons that we did our entire season overseas. We lived mm -hmm. in London for two months shooting over the summer and fall. Must have been wonderful. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. Okay. <laughs> and most of all, I have to admit, like, I, I love British food. I think it gets a bad rap. But first of all, London is an incredibly global city. <laughs> yes. But I really Nicholas love Sunday it. roast. Yeah. What was the Sunday roast is a beautiful tradition, I Isn't think. Isn't it? And I'm Sun very excited about yes, this. Yes, and it really goes well with Easter, obviously, mm -hmm. coming up, or Passover, right. or whatever you may be celebrating right now. Um, this time of year, spring. So I decided usually it's done with a big beef roast, right. but I'm making a leg of lamb. Okay, okay. so this is a boneless butterfly leg Boneless and butterfly. Can you ask your butcher you, uh, to get this? 
You like absolutely this. can. Yep. It's very standard. Okay. And I'm going to start with making the marinade for right. it. So you're um, doing mint, which usually people uh, you know pair with lamb. Exactly. Mm. It goes so well. I'm using lots of fresh mint. I'm going to throw it in a bowl with lemon juice. And Al, okay. you're going to help me out okay. here. Okay. So in the bowl, I'm going to dump. You can dump in lemon zest, okay. garlic, and a little Aleppo pepper. You can use just chili flakes mm -hmm. if you have. Let's season it up. Is that spicy? Mm. They, they are spicy, but Aleppo has a beautiful, mellow chili okay. flavor. And then, Al, if you want to whisk, okay, I'm going to pour in some olive, olive oil. oil. Yep, okay. I got salt. This is absolutely delicious. Yeah, oh, you good. I'm glad you dig yeah. in. Like, got to yeah. eat it when it's hot, especially Thank the you. popover, which, Nick, you will know as Yorkshire pudding. Well, is it is it the same, essentially? As exactly what? the same. Okay. They just cook them in these crazy tins that we'll get to in a minute instead of in one big dish. Okay. Oh, okay. So you've got your, your marinade. So I've got my marinade. Now, pour it over my leg lamb, but not all of it. Save a little bit of it, which will act as the extra sauce later. That's okay. gorgeous. Okay. Thank right. you very much. You've done this before, Once sir. Once or twice. And how long do you let it sit in the marinade? At least four hours. Hours, you can put it in the fridge. You can leave it overnight okay. and cook it the next day if mm -hmm. you want. You're going to toss it around and make sure that it's nice and coated. Okay. Leave it, cover it, and then you're going to take it out, pat it dry, and throw it right on a very she, hot oh, grill. This is Gail, should, you let, wow. should you let the, the meat get to like room temperature before you throw yes, it on? Yes. You want to take it out at least 45 minutes, and actually you want to season it because there's no salt in that marinade. Uh -huh. But we'll do that as we go. Right. Um, Season with salt and okay. pepper. Mm -hmm. You want to pat it dry after it's after it's come to room temperature, and then you're gonna let it. Grill. I've never cooked lamb. Do you want a little redness like inside, or do yeah. you? a you little? Have to cook but it I yeah. find, and this is personal, that unlike steak that I like really medium, mm -hmm. rare, rare, like totally pink inside, lamb can be a little tougher, a little chewier. So I like to cook it slightly more medium right. than okay. medium rare. So now we're and gonna then make I make the my popovers, pop exactly. Over, which so is important. In one bowl, I have flour and oh. salt. In mm -hmm. the other bowl, I have four eggs. I'm gonna whisk with, I like to add a little maple syrup. Untraditional, Ooh. but I'm Canadian. This is ah. what I was excited about, because I took a bite, and I, I love Yorkshire pudding, but this has got a nice sweetness to That's it. That's right, a little crust. bit of sweetness. I like this Some addition. melted butter. Mm -hmm. Nicholas cooks, so he's taking notes. I am. I this love that, I love that. I, I feel it's very, um, oh. it's serendipitous that we yes. have a Brit to eat my uh, my Thank Sunday roast. Usually you cook it with beef fat, but this is a, a yes, wonderful. Yes, I'm using melted butter here. Um, mm. And then I'm just gonna put my dry ingredients whisked in it's like a very moist this pancake. Is like, that's yes. exactly it but like when they pancake. come out of the oven they're actually oh huge gosh. as you saw earlier um they and they deflate a bit but there's so much tell them about the shrinkage jerry <laughs> like a precisely pearl. all right so i mix that all up put it in a pouring tin now here's the key to yorkshire pudding okay. the key to popovers is you want to preheat this pan this is a fancy popover pan you don't mm. need it you can use a muffin tin okay but you can see that there's already sizzling melted butter mm. at the bottom because i preheated it take it out of the oven and immediately while it's still hot oh. pour in three quarters of the way because you don't want to pop over too batter much that's over. right because they so get huge over. yeah <laughs> and that's that is the name um so you pour it in and then you put these in the oven about 15 to 20 minutes at 425. This and they come delicious. out so puffed up and, and serve huge. Immediately. Serve immediately. I mean, already this they have. They I mean, deflate. But yeah. they are but they chewy so and I'm delicious. And they go with the <laughs> lamb. Are you happy, Nicholas? I'm, I'm very happy. I'm glad, glad I stuck around. And then you have the extra. Much better than the crickets. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yes. Sauce. Mm, mm, this mm. is. How's my that's Sunday right. roast? Delicious. It's incredible. Oh. Is this the best interview you've ever had? <laughs> it, it certainly is. I'm very happy. <laughs> oh, taking good. the bad taste of the crickets out of my mouth as well. Nicholas we came to play. I like that. All right. Gail, thank you so much. Nicholas, thank you so much. And thank for you. these recipes, head to today.com slash food. Mishama Bailey has become one of America's most distinguished chefs. She's working in kitchens from France to right here in New York City, but it was her love of Southern cooking that lured her back to the South. We're gonna cook with her in a minute, but first, a look at her culinary journey. All these breakfast items are real improvement. Like, they really kind of boost up the menu in a really good way. And it's so happy. 
Mashama Bailey has much to be happy about these days. At 48, Chef Bailey's career is booming, a double James Beard award winner, including Outstanding Chef. Her debut restaurant, The Gray, in Savannah, Georgia, is a destination, and she recently opened two more eateries in Austin, Texas. We connected with this city just like we connected with Savannah. Austin was a good fit. A New York City girl who spent her formative years in Georgia. Chef Bailey is a French trained chef who leans hard into her Southern roots. My mom is Southern and spent a lot of summers there. I've been pretending to be Southern all my life, you know? I just love, I love the camaraderie of the South. I love my family's history and I love how it shines through in food. And it was that time spent in her grandmother's kitchen which made Chef Bailey fall in love with cooking. She could turn something out of nothing. She always had a pot on the stove. It came from so much love, and it didn't really come from like this an abundance of having. It was like what she had, she shared. And I really tried to embody that. After an internship in France and a short stint as a personal chef, she landed a sous chef position in New York City. My most transformative time, me becoming serious about this profession, was my time at Prune. I think working for Gabrielle Hamilton was very eye-opening. Her food was very comforting, very classic. And I thought that I was becoming not only a better chef in that environment, but a better person. And in a male-dominated field, it was mostly women who impacted Chef Bailey's culinary journey until she partnered with Jono Morisano in The Gray. When I met Jono, it was kind of serendipitous. It was like, oh wait, I lived in Savannah as a kid. I want to move to the South. I want to be an executive chef at a restaurant. Okay, let's go see what this is about. But the location Jono chose for their joint venture gave Chef Bailey some pause. I've never seen a Jim Crow era bus station before. It was segregated, it has a dark history, but me standing in the segregated waiting room for colored people, I felt like there was some good vibrations in that space and I felt like I was gonna do good things there and I wanted to try. They chronicled that journey together in their memoir, Black, White, and the Gray, the story of an unexpected friendship and a beloved restaurant. Ticket, order fire, meatball, clam, and a fish toast. And that beloved restaurant, featured in Netflix's Chef's Table, continues to delight diners with fresh southern ingredients along with special touches from Chef Bailey's childhood. After the guests have dinner, we clear their plates and we give them a thrill. Locals would come in and be like, what? You know what a thrill is, what? That made me feel good because they understand that I have roots here. It's a little part of my history on the plate. Oh my okay. God, we're so excited that you're here. I'm just so in awe of what you've what you've created. Um, it's like roots and wings, man. You have it all. Yeah. You said your mom didn't want you to become a chef initially? No, or my father. They yeah. both thought that it was domesticated positions, oh. and they just felt like I was going to be broke for the rest of my life. So, <laughs> so <you're laughs> now, hey, now, what do they think? <laughs> they think uh, they, they're very proud, oh. very proud. You very know, proud. I, I, what I love is that you're, what, first of all, you brought us these thrills, yeah. which we want, yep, yep, but yep, you yep. learned all of your your love of cooking from your grandma. Yeah. Yeah, because it was, you know, we didn't mm. have much oh my God. and we um, well, let me tell you what a thrill well, is. Yes, tell us. So, tell. a thrill is something that women from the neighborhoods in Savannah mm. would make for the children of the neighborhoods in Savannah and usually made of very inexpensive ingredients like Kool-Aid, sugar, water, yeah. maybe like if you spent 25 cents on a thrill instead of 10 cent, mm -hmm. then you would have fruit cocktail in it or something uh -huh. like a nice surprise. Yeah, yeah. But it was, I mean, the Savannah summers are brutal yeah. and they last forever. And so it's really nice mm. in the summertime when the humidity is high and the heat is high that you can actually have something to cool so you what, off. What's in this one? That's a grapefruit, pink grapefruit it's thrill. It's delicious. So it's um, some grapefruit juice and um, this is not, we don't do Kool-Aid at the restaurant, just to clarify. <laughs> 
So it's just grapefruit juice, a little bit of syrup, uh, simple syrup, sugar and water, and um, some ginger. delicious food from po' boys to beignets and every single thing in between. Yeah, and of course, one of the most legendary restaurants here is Commander's Palace. This woman right here, Meg Bickford, is the executive chef who is not only creating unforgettable food, but lasting memories. Take a look. <laughs> only in New Orleans is your meal accompanied by a three-piece band and a second line through the restaurant. Or at least that's the tradition at world-famous Commander's Palace. Opened in 1893, it's a New Orleans institution. Chefs from Paul Prudhomme to Imre Lagasse have created staples in the kitchen. But now there's a new top chef at the helm. That's Stephanie Chandelier, Eggs Benedict. Meg Bickford made history in 2020 when she was named the first female executive chef of Commander's after starting her culinary journey back there in 2008. I started as a garmage cook. Um, I was working hot apps and salads um, straight out of culinary school. And food has always been her biggest motivation. I grew up in a big South Louisiana family. My family, we grieved over food, we celebrated over food. I just knew that that needed to be a big part of my life. So beautiful. Her culinary style is inspired by the rich culture around her. Louisiana is a sportsman's paradise, right? So what we have access to, produce and seafood and game, is kind of unmatched. We in this industry are so lucky to be here because the city celebrates what we do just so wholeheartedly. The same way that the city celebrates music. Every day, Chef Meg brings her leadership skills to the table. This restaurant is a place of learning. Hey, hey Chef, what can I do for you? Chef Meg has this kind of grit in her hustle. She listens to her team. She celebrates their, their accomplishments. But if she sees a deficiency, she's going to nurture that. She's really one of the best role models that I could have ever asked for. Um, she's always encouraging me to uh, try new things and to just do better. And it really is a recipe for success. I want to create a memory for someone that when they think about it or they smell bread pudding, it brings them here. They could just be in this moment and be here and let us worry about everything else. And you just sit and enjoy. Um, can we just toast? Royalty! Can we toast? It's about time. The first <laughs> female chef of you Commanders. Do you made this cocktail for us. It what, is, what is this called, This Meg? is the Tequila Mockingbird number two. Right? Okay. So oh. super simple but fantastic. We like that pun. And great for this kind of weather. Cheers to you. Mm. Thank mm. you, ladies. Oh my God, Tequila, Meg. Tequila, limoncello, a little Ooh. Angostura bitters. Oh. Let's put this down. You know, I like work. my big girl cocktails, right? That's a big I girl. I do, cocktail. I do. All right, what are you cooking up for us, man? So, we're going to do uh, Louis Armstrong eggs. So, okay. this is one of my all time favorite brunch dishes at Commander's. Looks like you put the Trinity in there. Is we that put right? Trinity in there, of right. course. All great things start with that. Um, we're going in with some garlic. That's a lot. Hit it, it is. Girl. 
going in with jalapeno a lot again. And we're going to cook all this down until it's opaque, right? So okay. a little translucent. Okay. Then we're going to add one of my favorite ingredients to our red beans. What? Pickled pork. Ooh, How do you so pickle it? We don't know what pickled pork <laughs> means. So it's kind of like salted pork, okay? okay? So it's going to season a lot of this pot. So we're not going to actually season our beans until they're nice and tender. I'll help you stir. Thank you. Into that go our red beans. So you, those are uncooked. You just plop them in. Right? You I soaked them overnight. Yeah, exactly so right. Done. So they don't take, you know, all day to cook. What's but going they will on with that broth? What is that? Ooh. That's some chicken stock, chicken right? Stock. So we're building lots of flavors Look here with our oh. trinity, with our garlic, with our jalapenos, our chicken stock, our pickled pork. We're going to let this cook for hours and hours and hours. Hours. Right? Okay. So okay. we're moving on. Bye. So we so what have is that here. What's in there? This is a dirty rice cake. So we've got Trinity, again, lots of garlic, house made smoked on Dewey sausage, and our po Louisiana popcorn rice. Okay? Yes. Form that into a cake. We're going to go over here. Wait, what, what are you putting that? on there? This is our red beans. Oh. We pureed them super, super look at that. smooth. Amazing. Right? So look they're nice plating and velvety. It. Wait, look what's happening. Yes. Look at right? that, Jenna. Yes. Are yes. you seeing it? And this is rice. taking too long, so we're going to move on. Okay. We've got our beautiful crispy rice cake Ooh. here. Now, you said there's an egg. What's happening? There's the poached egg. So you poached it. It's brunch, honey. We're all about the Girl. eggs. Now, Same what's this delicious sauce on top? Yeah. So, over here we have mm, um, that. Hollandaise. hollandaise. Look, look, look. Our hollandaise is studded with smoky house made mm. tasso. Mm. Here, we'll share. You want to share? Yeah, let's share. And we're going to do some. Wait, is there more? Beautiful green onions right Come on, on top. Meg. Come on. Meg, this is Meg. delicious. Good, right? Meg. Mm. Oh my God. I'm mm. so glad y'all mm. enjoy it. I mean, mm. that is amazing. Oh my. The best part about brunch at Commanders, yeah. outside of the food and the cocktails and the service and all the environment, is the second line. But you can't do it without your own second line umbrella. Oh my Wait, gosh. No. What? Wait. So, no, you didn't. Jenna! Uh -huh. Oh my God. I've always wanted Wait. one of these. Come on. Thank you, Meg. Oda. Are you kidding? <laughs> Oh my God! Personal. Second line and we style. love you, man. Thank you, Meg. We and to love get you. these delicious recipes, head to day.com slash food. Okay, you know that in that moment, Hoda, where you take a bite of something mm -hmm. so delicious, you can actually taste the love that went into it. Well, that is the kind of food that Harlem chef Tammy Treadwell makes, and her cooking is just part of what draws the crowds in. Take a look. That's love. Wait till you taste that. Right in the heart of Harlem in a 15 square foot food truck. I got four po boys here. Yes, that's me. You'll find po boys, shrimp and grits, and a whole lot of good vibes. I tell people all the time on my corner on 125th Street, there's nothing but love. Love and Harlem are two things that are part of Chef Tammy Treadwell's DNA. This neighborhood that's in every part of who you are. We are sitting in the Harlem Rose Garden. This is like so surreal because I've often said I'm that flower or that rose that will break through the concrete. No matter what you pour on me, I'm gonna emerge stronger and stronger. Throughout Tammy's sometimes challenging life, food has been what she calls her love language. I cannot talk about food without talking about my grandmother because her spirit is with me everywhere I go. I got my love of cooking from hanging around in the kitchen with her, not wanting to go outside because she was cooking and I wanted to be first in line to get the plate. There was a lot of people <laughs> in my house. After surviving cancer and getting laid off from her job, Tammy felt a calling to feed people. I'm taking care of all the flavors. In 2016, she broke through the male-dominated food truck industry and opened Harlem Seafood Soul. The idea that you had, like, all the things you had to overcome in your life. At your core, are you an optimist? Unbelievably. We live in a world of possibilities. I'll show you it can be done. Then in March of 2020, the unthinkable happened. Tammy was forced to shut her truck down. Then her husband, Greg, passed away from COVID. What did you lose that day? I lost my best friend. We had 38 amazing years mm -hmm. together. One thing I know for sure is that man loved me. I have never had a doubt that his love is real. There's a period in between fetal position mm -hmm. and standing up. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And there's mm -hmm. something that happens in that moment where 
it changes. What made you say, it's time to get out from under these covers? Mm -hmm. I started seeing the faces of the people in my family. They were looking at me for the first time like they were very concerned. Every time I would hit a wall emotionally, or I felt like, you know, I'm, today, I, today's not the day, I'm gonna lay back down today. Mm -hmm. And my granddaughter would say to me, Grandma, mm -hmm. when are you going to cook for the people again? <laughs> this time I looked at her like, hmm. you know, that's a good question. You know what we love about you is that you're not only sharing your love through your food, you're also sharing your love through helping others. Mm -hmm. That was the only motivation I had to cook, was to do something for someone else. I had to put my grief on the mm. side and move forward. Mm. And that's what I did. When, when the doors opened, <laughs> and did you wonder, are they gonna remember me? Yeah, I stood there for a little while like, okay. <laughs> I know y'all smell me. <laughs> and I literally turned around um, to, I guess, stir the grits or do something. And when I turned back around, there was a line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a line. And there had to be, you know, at least a dozen people standing yes. in line. And they were waiting for me. <laughs> and they were smiling. And they were like, where you been? Oh. And we're glad to see you back here. Harlem is a village. That's how I was always raised to believe. There's a lot of love in this life. Mm. Just wait till you get the experience. Wait. Let's go. All right. Yes, let's go. Today, just shy of 60 and after a lifetime of hardship, Chef Tammy says she's in her prime and she'll remain on that corner as long as the community allows her to stay. Jenna, I'm going to give you a little tip. Thank you. Okay, ready? I have worked so hard for so many years and now I get to do what makes me happy. Is she, she's amazing. We love her oh, so much. Is it difficult to, to make this walk? One block is over three years of work and grace. This moment for Martha Gilreath has been years in the making. Where did you live? Uh, right on that side, right by these columns is where I'd usually stay. So this is your roof? It's dark and it's kind of chilly and it's, it's dismal. After years of addiction and homelessness, Martha is finding gratitude in this second chance. It's surreal. A lot of it was really, really rough and ugly, and it just gets more beautiful every day now. My childhood was unbelievable, and I have five siblings. My parents have been married 43 years. We always had fun, and there was so much love. Someone hearing that would wonder, what happened? I thought people that were alcoholics or addicts 
came from a certain background. Girls like me who went to Cotillion and went to a good high school don't end up like that. And the truth is, this thing that I have, it, it doesn't care. It started, someone had some cocaine in a party, and I thought, this, this is fun, and it was scary, and it was exciting. Eventually, that progression looks like, for me, going to harder drugs and violence and homelessness and jails and hospitals. I was in active addiction for 16 years. And at some point, you wake up and it's living under the bridge. It's the scariest, because you're never safe. When did you make that decision where I'm willing to put in that work? I'm gonna turn it around. I think that the willingness to put in the work and then a moment of grace have to align. I called my friend, Jesse, and I asked her if I could come home. I cannot live like this anymore. In December of 2019, Martha entered into a recovery center in Charleston, South Carolina, and that's where everything changed. Food for so long for a lot of us is survival. And so when people start to get sober and they start to enjoy food again, there was a kid there turning 21 in rehab. Someone had told me that he loved cheesecake, loved cheesecake. So I'm like, I'll make a cheesecake. You know, I, I can figure that out. And then I see him with his new friends and he is smiling. After watching this kid enjoy the cake, I had never had any direction. I never followed anything through. And I said, I'm going to go to culinary school. So Martha returned to New Orleans in September of 2020 and received a scholarship to Noki, the New Orleans Culinary and Hospitality Institute, just one block from where she once lived underneath the bridge. It was very scary, but also it required all of the same things that sobriety requires of me. Following direction, patience, taking your time, doing it someone else's way. And it was through baking where Martha thrived. Defying all odds, she graduated as valedictorian of her class. When you look at, at who she's become, in the kitchen and out, what do you think? Pride. I'm really, really proud of her and really excited for her and not too surprised, honestly. It's everything that's inside of her that, that's come out. In the years since graduation, Martha has become an executive chef at a local restaurant and has started her own pop-up bakery called Nolita. We're gonna do a play on a morning roll. Yeah. Beautiful color, oh, it's really goodness. fragrant. Oh my gosh! <laughs> that's amazing! And one of the chefs that has always inspired Martha is restaurateur and Food Network host, Guy Fieri. He's about bringing joy. Mm -hmm. He wants to make people's experiences and lives better all around food. And Guy had a special message for Martha. Chef Martha, your buddy Guy Fieri here. You are a warrior. You have been through it all. And to just think that I make you happy and I make you smile, that you love food and enjoy it the way I do, well, my sister from another mister, I look forward to meeting you. I make it through New Orleans. I'm coming to Nolita. I'll be looking for you. <laughs> a lot of surreal things have happened to me lately, but that's at the top of the list. <laughs> Thank you for that. What's next for you? I don't know. And I think that's the exciting part. I, you know, one day, I hope Nolita becomes brick and mortar. What food does for us is its service to making memories. And so if someone could come in Nolita and then 10 years from then say, well, oh, it's where my dad used to take me. I just want to keep being hopeful and grateful. If there are any parents watching, I just want them to know that their babies can still come home. There is always hope.
It's a sisterhood of restaurants with a purpose, run by young women finding inspiration in their own stories. Chef Zyla Cadillo taps into her Mexican heritage to create her cuisine. My restaurant is Etheria. It is a mess camel bar with vegan-inspired Mexican dishes. Chef Shanari Freeman leans into her southern roots for recipes. My restaurant is called Caden. It is southern soul food, plant-based focus. And Chef Amara Garib, daughter of an Ecuadorian mother and an Egyptian father, gets her inspiration from her father, who operated a pizza parlor. My restaurant is called Soda Club. It's a wine bar, and it's a plant-based uh, Italian fresh pasta. Did you catch this detail? All three skipped the animal products, but not the flavor. Okay, I have to say, when you hear Italian food, when you hear Mexican food, when you hear soul food, I mean, there's a lot of cheese in those. There's a lot of meat in those. I'm Mexican. I grew up with my mom making Mexican food. How is it to make these particular types of food plant-based? For soul food, one thing you have to definitely focus on is the flavor profile. So just playing around with textures a lot, uh, different flavors, cooking techniques. I think the Italian food, you just stick with fresh pasta, you can't go wrong. Mexican people are indigenous people, and a lot of our food is from nature and from the ground. So I feel like it easily translated to being vegan. Raise your hand if you're a vegan. Okay, so Amira, you're not. What was this process like? I mean, were you like missing the cheese at all on top of a pasta or no? It's really easy to just cover something in cheese and it's delicious. <laughs> and then it tastes good. <laughs> yeah. It was more challenging because I was just trying to find substitutes to make it more traditional, but not traditional at the same time. Yeah. We also have a group chat where one of us will be like, this is a whack cheese, don't use it, or this yeah. is a really good one, you should try it out, <laughs> stuff like that. You're all under 30 and you have the titles of executive chef at restaurants in New York City. I mean, how cool is that? It's pretty cool. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> How's this been to go through together? Better than going alone. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. We're able to learn a lot from each other mm. um, and also learn a lot about ourselves, how we cook, and how to run restaurants. Their boss had full faith they could do just that. Ravi DeRossi, founder and CEO of Overthrow Hospitality, who owns all the restaurants, decided to give them a shot at starting their own culinary concepts when they were working at the company in different positions. Was it this purposeful decision to give three women of color this opportunity to be executive chefs of New York City restaurants? I think subconsciously intentional, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. They were already in the company and the best suited for these positions. Over 65% of our 300 some odd employees were women and people of color. So we made the very clear decision to put more people of color in places of authority. So as they're hiring, they see through the lens of their selves. Of course, a taste test had to be part of this assignment to see how they stand up to the real thing. First, plant-based Italian from the Soda Club. So where should I start? Definitely with the ravioli. With the ravioli, okay. That's my favorite, yeah. That is amazing. You good? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm having a moment. Next, vegan-inspired Mexican food from Eteria. The mango salsa looks delicious. It was so good. Oh my goodness. And finally, I had to try a dish getting rave reviews. Fried lasagna, a soul food favorite at Cadence. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm blown away. <laughs>so excited to get started with cooking and today food but before we do before we do that we're just going to take one second and shout out our new executive yes, producer Talia is in the house we just want to say hey welcome Happy to today it's her first day of school Yay. go Talia we're so 
happy you're here. She's here. And you know who else we're so happy to have? Oh. If, well, she's not at the ranch hanging out yeah. with her family or filming <laughs> episodes of her hit Food Network show. Reed Drummond is busy coming up with easy and delicious meals for you and your family. Reed's the star of The Pioneer Woman and a best selling author of seven cookbooks. Her latest is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks Super Easy. It's 120 shortcut recipes for dinners, desserts, and more. We've missed yes, you. Reed, we're so we're happy, happy you're here. It is so, I just feel like I'm seeing old friends, and it's just so happy. I'm so happy to be here. Well, we love it. Reed, okay, first of all, we have to say congratulations. Yes. Your, your daughter got married. Oh, my gosh. How thank sweet. you. How I was know. that? It was so much fun. I mean, oh. it, it was. we did it on the ranch, which was a crazy idea. We <sighs> sort of built this huge tent out there. But... It was fun, and the the great thing is it was a lot of work, but the day of, we were just able to let the process happen and enjoy it. It wasn't stressful. Did you do any, did, you didn't do any cooking for it, did you? No. Good, you just no, relaxed. No, no, no. I, know, sure. I was going to say, who does sure. rehire as the no, That's why I was able to relax and have fun. Yeah, right? And to so. watch your husband walk her down the aisle. Oh, we yes. know he's been recovering yeah. from an accident. It must yeah. have been special. It, it was wonderful. I mean, it was a blessing. We, it, that's my favorite picture of the two of them. Um, he was a little stiff then. He's, he's doing much better. He's on his horse today, so everything's okay, great. Back We're on the horse. Very, very All right, All right. What are we going to cook? Oh, my gosh, okay. Okay, so now that Hoda has eaten a whole chocolate cake today. I know, today, what? That um, is really good. Why was everybody making fun of you? I don't, I don't appreciate that. I don't, thank you, Jen. If I think I you would have there, supported me. Out. It was really quiet, and then all of a sudden, the cake was gone. And <laughs> But you I, should see what she does to chips. Oh, I well, you know, <laughs> you know it's morning. It's happening again. <laughs> you have the rest of the day to work it off, right? Exactly. So will. after the cake, I thought it'd be great to make some vegetables. So I'm going to do a sheet pan gnocchi Yummy. dinner. And okay. what I love about it, my cookbook, really, I'm not afraid to use shortcut ingredients. So. My favorite ingredient is this is store bought gnocchi. Oh, so and is this frozen or you just no, get it? No, it's actually shelf stable, believe oh. it or not. So you can uh, you just buy wait, it. Throw it in there. Wait, yeah. are you, is this a joke? <laughs> what you just gnocchi. did? You just dumped everything on the sheet everything pan? Everything on the sheet pan. I thought you had to boil All it. Oh, just... no, no, no. Because Oh. So then What's I've that, got pesto. Yes, pesto. <gasps> I'm going to mix it with olive oil. Oh, I'm trying not to get pesto, pesto on you, so I That's moved okay. it away from Don't your you beautiful Marie, can white Can you buy suit. the pesto, or did you make that? No, bought the pesto. Oh. See, so, I like everything so yeah, far. She's this speaking happened. our language. Yeah, I mean, during the pandemic, you know, I I mm -hmm. kind of burned out on cooking a little bit because there were Didn't so we many all? kids around. Is that it? Yeah. So they, that's it. Because pesto is so flavorful, it has garlic and and you know. And do you of course, need to oil the, the pan? Did you already oil it? You don't it? have to because there's oh. plenty of olive oil in the pesto mixture. So you basically, just mix it all around mix like it all that. Around, and then look how Wait. beautiful it looks. Oh my gosh! Jenna. We have to pull taste. it out of the oven. So I like to do a little. Balsamic do you want us to help you? Oh, yes, yes. Glaze. Help me and grab there you some go. Parmesan shavings. So do you just that? I love balsamic glaze. Yes. I do too. everything I do. on anything. And you know what? I used to make my own by just reducing balsamic mm, for yeah. hours and the house would smell like vinegar and my kids would be like, what, what is that smell? Doing? This so, is kind of crispy. It's delicious, isn't it? And see how all the oh veggies got beautiful color. Mm. Mm. But it's such We're, an easy meal and I would totally just eat this. But wait, we could do this too, which is huge. Look at what we just in did. In one second. Put it in the oven. Is dress this basil? It. What did you? I tore that? basil. Oh, tore basil. Yep. And I, I'm so lazy. I don't even want to chop basil anymore. Just stop <laughs> it. By the way, I, I like it on exactly. There. Oh, the should we go around the back? Yeah, more? we have another recipe. Okay, okay right. great. Honestly, so mm -hmm. sheet pans are kind of my thing. I okay. love them. They're they're just I I get nervous if I don't have 20 ready to go at mm -hmm. all times. So this is a sheet pan salad, and I love this concept mm. because you basically roast. Any veggie you want, it's it's the squash time of year. Okay. So yes. this is a mixture of cubed butternut squash Yum. and delicata squash. I love delicata what squash. Is that? I'm know, what is that? I'm obsessed with it. Me too. Do you ever so put it on it? toast? Oh, Wait. yeah. Mash, mash yes. it. Yes. What are you talking it's about? It's just so a squash. At, this is what it looks like. And oh, it's basically store? kind oh. of an heirloom type okay. of squash. But the great thing is you can eat the skin. It gets really tender. Ah. So butternut, it can be a little bit tough, Should not I do, very tasty. Yes. Some? Drizzle and then we're salt gonna do pepper. another roasted vegetable situation: salt and pepper, Italian seasoning. This is so brilliant. Wow. And this then is just so toss. brilliant. But here's what's fun about what? it: so roast it, and it's like 450, 25, 30 minutes. Okay. And look how gorgeous. So that's delicious on its own. But I build a salad oh, out of this. Thank you. So you make your own dressing too, don't you? Well, sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes I doctor up bottle dressing. So. But I'm using the roasted vegetables as a base for mm, a salad. That's delicious. Mm. Isn't it good? Yes. Oh, and the dressing mm. is tahini, mm. mustard, lemon juice, olive oil, honey. Okay. And then, isn't it pretty? 10 okay. plus. 10 plus plus. Pomegranate seeds. Yep. 
Mm. Yep. Pistachios. Pistachios, pomegranates. Mm. So this I love is, pomegranates. It's pretty at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then goat cheese, which Hoda Great. doesn't love. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Hoda well, likes it. It, it just doesn't love her. Yeah. Okay. There's a Thank lot of you TMI so in much. this segment. <laughs> There's a lot about Hoda. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much for these recipes. Head today.com slash food. And for Ree's new book, it has recipes just like this one. Head today.com slash shop. I predict a bestseller. Me too. Okay. And we're back with today's food. Thrilled to say good morning to our next guest. Finally, after all of those teases, the pioneer woman herself, <laughs> Reed Drummond, has made it all the way from her ranch in Oklahoma. Are you near Blake's Ranch in Oklahoma? Not so much. Not so much. But, you know, we're in the sta same state. Yeah. So, you know, we, we know each other. When I was there marrying him and Gwen, I would have stopped by your ranch. Seriously. And next time. Or yes. your 25th wedding anniversary. I could have you, you, renewed you. your vows. <laughs> oh, well, we're also out pretty. with a brand new cookbook. It's called Super Easy. It features more than 100 mm. shortcut recipes, which we like the sound of that. Actually, lots of them going on in the ranch in Oklahoma. You look absolutely stunning. You've got oh, a daughter who just got married, right? Yes. Hard to believe. Yeah, and you're about to celebrate your 25th anniversary, and Carson's going to do your renew your vows for you. That, that's that's hard to believe too. I know I'm only 29. I don't know how I can <laughs> get married. For you look 29. Years. What happened you do. To you? during COVID? All I did was eat and drink and not work out. And, and listen, same. I I was wearing pandemic pants this time last year. I don't know if you remember, but. But uh, yeah, I just, you know, the wedding was a great inspiration and motivation. But then once I started kind of uh, exercising more and getting healthier, it felt so good yeah. that I just kept going. So I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm over that hump. And now it's about just maintaining and, and yeah. enjoying. Well, I don't so. know if these delicious recipes are going to be um, on any maintenance, but they are really smell good. Uh, speaking of my wellness journey, yes. let's eat some tots yes. Yes. Uh, with cheese let's. all over them. So, yeah. It starts with chicken. Yep. Yes. So, I'm going to make tachos. Now, do you know what tachos are, Carson? No. No idea. You need to know. So, <laughs> tachos are just like nachos, but they're made with tots. Oh. Yum. So, oh. I, baked, I baked some tots with a little we cumin have the gang and eating chili already. powder. Oh, Cook right. some chicken. Add some celery. So, these are buffalo chicken tachos. Yum. Celery, garlic, and green onions. Did and you make up tachos or is that a thing? I never heard of tachos. It's kind of a thing, but it hasn't okay. swept the nation yet. Yeah, so it's going now to. Will. I'm It'll. kind of hoping uh, It'll that be anything trending by the end of the segment. on nachos, you can put on tots okay. and call them tachos. So Love it. Then, of course, buffalo sauce, and then you just let oh. this simmer. Mm. I started Delicious. with raw no. chicken, but you can do rotisserie chicken to okay. make it easier. Yeah. Mm. So simmer that until it's luscious. Have you and changed saucy. what you cook now because of your sort of wellness journey as it has it put no. you on a different path or you <laughs> no and you know the thing is is I have I have teenage boys college students uh lad right a, mm -hmm. ranchers know, yeah cowboy and so I have to make food that everybody loves right. and yeah. I don't I'm not good when I deny myself yeah. you know whole Butter categories of food so I'm just kind of learning to eat 
I like to say I eat a Rhode Island sized piece of cake instead of a Texas sized piece <laughs> right. of cake. That's the best way you get the flavors in the taste. It's How does that just taste? It's delicious. Really good. Everything's good. So, yeah. good. so yeah. you, you pull the tots out of the oven. Mm -hmm. They're seasoned, so they're a little bit elevated. I mm -hmm. kind of push them into a pile. Yeah. Pepper jack cheese yeah. all over. I okay. mean, this this is what life's all about right Oh, here. right here, yeah. And then you spoon the saucy chicken all oh, yeah. over. Mm -hmm. And so you Woo. can do ground beef that. and got some hit. you know right. black beans and do sort of a is the chicken mix. gonna because it's hot melt that cheese or are you putting this back in the no, oven? No, it's going back in the oven. Okay, yeah. I so because okay. okay. you want to melt the cheese like uh, nachos. So mm. all the cheese you want, melt it. Mine? Oh, here we go. That's oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cheese. Actually, Pepper jack cheese, the yeah. buffalo sauce. Mm. It's, it's hearty. It's, it's got a kick, uh -huh. but oh jeez! Did you know redheads can tolerate uh, spicy food more than anybody really? else? Really? Is that true? Yeah. So yeah, so this is good. Is that true? We love it. That's we'll delve good. into the genealogy Chicken. of that some other time. But, wow. but basically, you garnish with. Uh, Blue cheese, mm -hmm. and to make blue cheese dressing, I just take ranch dressing and mm -hmm. add blue cheese to it. Oh, wow. and clever. It's Another very shortcut. easy. You can oh, do yeah. bottled ranch or you can make your own, but Brilliant. nice little shortcut. Mm -hmm. So this is what, uh, this is why my teenage boys love me. Oh, I can see I mean, why. that is delicious. Hey, Carson. Really, yeah. really good. Hey, this is gone. I mean, just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wham. What happened? Oda. Oda's eating a whole bundt cake already. Oda, we have wow. not started the cake at, segment yet. <laughs> hey, take a breath. No one's missed these eating <laughs> segments more than Hodes. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Remember, Rhode Island, not Texas. <laughs> <laughs> She's going state by state. <laughs> All right, well, that does bring us to our piece. chocolate cake. Now, this is your secret recipe, right? Okay, yes. Yeah. So, confession, my, my top secret ingredient in my top secret cake is dark chocolate cake mix. Oh, okay. And what? listen, I had my house full of humans during the pandemic yeah. and large six, you know, six foot five humans yeah. and football players. And I had... I was making so much food that I was about to lose my religion. I mean, <laughs> every day I was just like, I can't do it anymore. So I'm not afraid to whip out the chocolate cake. I doctored it with, uh, you know, bittersweet chocolate chips just to make it a little bit more uh, rich. Wow. But the thing is, this is the secret. It's a box cake. Well, it's what, oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. But the thing is, I'm topping it with ganache, oh, no. which is Ooh, heavy cream wow. and good oh, well, quality go. chips. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. all two ingredients. Yes. And then it turns into this Here. luscious. Ooh. And are these oh, inside too, yeah. or is this like a topping this thing becomes, situation? So, well, you can just eat one if you like. So you just but, made, okay, yeah. So you made the, the we cake. Gotta go. Oh, we're out of time. Okay, yeah. I really want to understand this. And then drizzle. Drizzle. Uh, I do sprinkles on top, <laughs> but after Halloween, you can take Beautiful leftover cake. candy, chop oh, it up, and top. put it on top. So oh, yeah. Hold on. Oh, my God. Happy plate. She's Wait a minute. The plate. Oh, yeah. Show it. Clean Literally. plate Literally. club. Clean plate club. Clean plate Done. club. Yes, you left a and she's going to eat owls. <laughs> and also, she's going to move in with you. And she's she's giggling. She's giggling a lot over there. Congratulations on everything. Love your show. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, of course, you can find all these recipes at today.com slash food and Pick up a copy of Super Easy at today.com slash shop. This morning on Today Food, lasagna two ways with layers of pasta, meat sauce, and creamy cheese. Lasagna is one of the ultimate comfort foods, but get ready for something a little new this morning. Reed Drummond, a.k.a. The Pioneer Woman, has created two recipes. They're going to become your favorites. Her latest book is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks the New Frontier. Reed, good morning. Hi, Savannah. It's good to see you. Now, I, I can't, you're doing something really different with lasagna, which is risky. Well, it's a little risky, but when you see these recipes, you will totally understand. I like to mash things up, and yep. you know, you don't want to make lasagna over and over and over. So we are going to make shrimp scampi lasagna roll-ups. I like it. Which mm -hmm. are as good as they sound. So okay. I cooked some shrimp in butter, onion, garlic, a little thyme, and... Um, Chopped it up. Okay. So I'm going to make a sort of a shrimpy, cheesy filling, and this is cream cheese, ricotta, egg, and parmesan. I mean, what could you, what could possibly go wrong? I know. It looks I so mean, good. it's all right. Sign me up. Yes. So I'll let you stir this together, okay. and I'm going to start on the white sauce. Um, my new cookbook has lots of fun recipes like this. Yeah, where, I like that. It's different. Yeah, and buffalo chicken quesadillas, for instance. I have two teenage boys at home. Yeah. Um, my girls grew up and left me. So, so, <laughs> so mean. you got those brutes at home. So see. rude of them. You still got Charlie the dog? Well, Charlie's not with us oh, anymore, but sorry. I have... Oh, Walter. And I have a couple of other little bassets running around. Look at so. the whole crew over there. It's like, so oh my God. Could you ask that? But, okay. Oh, no, it's okay. Charlie lives on in his books. Yes, and, he does. We read his book all the time. Oh, I love hearing that. Okay, so I, I stirred it. So that's all stirred together. And I am making just a beautiful white sauce. And okay. it's, I started with the roux, and it has cream and milk. Gosh. And so you cook and cook and cook until You're this You're trying is to thick. thicken it up, right? Thicken it up. 
Is that thick enough or not really? This looks great. Okay. This isn't quite there, but right. I have I have Magic some already television. finished. Yes. So I'm going to have you help me build a oh, roll up. Okay. So this is the filling you just stirred together. Mm -hmm. Take about a generous third a cup. Okay. And put it on the end of the. Oh, this has the. Okay, the whole thing is in here. Our yeah. shrimp, our everything. And these are cooked lasagna noodles. Mm -hmm. I cooked them about half the time mm -hmm. that the package says. Right. And then just roll it up. Yes, the name lasagna oh roll ups. They're so cute and pretty. What they are saying? so cute. Oh my Amazing. God. Are you dying? Oh my yeah, goodness. Not. Between bisque and a lasagna. Oh. Uh, good oh. point. That's exactly what it is. Oh. And then I always put the seam side down. Yeah, of course, to make it look pretty. I poured the white sauce in the bottom of the dish. Oh. And then I'll let you pour and the then rest of it. Am all I pouring over. or am I drizzling? No, pour. Okay, pour, pour that sucker. Get in there. Okay, yeah. Why not? Look at that creamy yummy. It is Isn't that so gorgeous. Good. Yes. And then top it with mozzarella. Mm. And you can see the finished dish right here with parsley on top. That doesn't look crazy difficult either. No, it's not. And my daughter who lives in Dallas now uh, saw my new cookbook and she said, when I come home, will you make me the shrimp oh. scampi lasagna roll-up? So I mean, why not? Look at it. It's okay. gorgeous. I want to taste that. So that's lasagna one way. And the now this shocked way, me. Lasagna soup. I mean, it's it's really earth-shattering. Okay, it's, tell me, tell me. I'm gonna have a bite. It's beautiful. So started with ground beef, mm -hmm. sausage, uh, onion, oh. garlic, yeah. thyme, oregano, and I just cooked it, and then added. Mm. Oh my God! Let's try that. Wait, Crazy. Savannah, just take your Delayed time. Reaction. So good. Take okay. Your time. And just turned it into a really delicious uh, whole tomatoes, tomato paste, mm -hmm. uh, parsley, and you can see the whole tomatoes. I actually like to let them cook down a little bit. Yeah. And then break them up because oh. they're a little softer. Mm -hmm. Anytime I try to squeeze them with my hand, it winds up in my eye. Yeah. Or, <laughs> that's not fun. Or on my shirt, which is even worse. Even worse. Exactly. <laughs> so you just kind of, you browned up the the uh, beef and oh. then. Yes. Then you put in the drain tomato. the excess fat and then turn it into a beautiful soup. Mm -hmm. And then I cooked some broken up lasagna noodles. Oh. So this is that there. and down at the bottom. Mm. It's like a hug. In. It is. <laughs> oh, so really wait, what about point. the cheese? Where's the mm. cheese? Okay, so okay. once you simmer away the soup yes. and the noodles are perfect, I make this little ricotta dumpling mixture. Oh, wow. And all it is is ricotta, parmesan, salt, pepper, basil, and oh, parsley. Mm -hmm. Stir it together. Mm -hmm. mm. And then when you serve up the soup, you just put little dollops right in the middle. Oh and God. it's just, mm -hmm. if the soup is really piping hot, the yeah. ricotta dumpling Starts just kind melt. of melts Can I come it. over to your house, mm -hmm. Reed? Yes, yes. Is this yes. what we make there? Because it <laughs> sounds fab. Bring your kids and uh, Lad will put them to work on the ranch. <laughs> yeah, I would love it. I love it. Thank you so much. We, how do you like Fantastic. the soup? It's amazing. amazing. Which one do you like I better? Love I love the oh. soup. Yeah. It's crazy. We, we're torn. Can you uh, tell? Yeah. I got I like, one vote for soup. and uh -huh. Well, you know what, though? And then you get a piece Switzerland of shrimp on this yeah. one. That's the thing. Oh. And all that shrimp scampi oh. flavor is in there. You really redesigned it. lasagna. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's next level. Yeah. My wife I, loves your shit. I get bored really easily. <laughs> so I, I have to have some fun in the kitchen. Thank Thanks, you so Rhea. much, Rhea. I know you're coming back for the fourth yes. hour. More food. You can find all of these recipes at today.com slash food. And for more on Rhea's book, go to today.com slash shop. You can buy it there. Thank you, honey.
Reed Drummond is busier than ever. Not only is she a mom of four, she's a New York Times bestselling author. She has three million Instagram followers, and she's a star of the hugely popular Food Network show. It's called The Pioneer Woman. And somehow she's also managed to find time to put together a new cookbook called The Pioneer Woman Cooks the New Frontier, which features a couple of recipes that we're going to be making today. And she took all the photos for the book. It's, of course, she you does did everything. That too? She did that too. My Please. camera's a mess. My camera's sticky. Yeah. <laughs> I it all over it. So she's got roast chicken for us. Look at this. Yes, I. I'm so happy to cook we're, with you both. So I'm a big happy. fan of both of you. We so love thank you, you for having me. So wait, I can't cook. Yeah, me either. But wait, you're based in Oklahoma, and you just do your sh everything from your home. Is that pretty much? Works? We we film the show at our guest lodge, so yeah. at least they don't have to trip over my teenager's laundry, <laughs> yeah. you know, dirty socks in our real I house. I was telling but. her that my daughter Christina is like she is the most incredible woman. I her oh, voice puts me to sleep. I watch her. Her life is oh, idyllic. Yeah, she, my voice puts my husband to sleep too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're making chicken today. Yes, I just want to show you my favorite way to roast chicken. Okay. Uh, I'm wearing gloves just for the spatchcocking. Yeah. So do you know what spatchcocking no, a chicken is? No, no, so no. it's super no. easy. Basically, okay. you have to put on gloves, cut okay. the backbone out, which is just snip on either side. Okay. That's the unpleasant and part. it out. But then you splay it out, and the whole point is to kind of... <laughs> Oh. The whole point is right. to get it as flat as possible. You can use your palm and uh -huh. kind of push, mm -hmm. but that way a chicken that would normally take um, a lot longer to roast yes. just takes uh, really a fraction of the time. So then you wind up with uh, a beautiful roasted chicken. So what I like to do is make sort of an herb dressing, Ooh, and it's just uh, simple olive oil mm -hmm. herbs, cut some baby gold potatoes in half and just toss them in the herb mixture. How long does this take you to make? You want to help me oh, just sure, kind of scatter sure. them around? And then you'd brush the same mixture on the chicken. Now, is this Good a job. greased pan or is this not? It doesn't have doesn't to be have because to be. the chicken has so much so uh, beautiful grease as it cooks. Okay. So just really about 30 minutes total. You start with a high heat and then lower it and then look what you wind up with. <laughs> wow. Halfway through, I add cherry tomatoes mm. and zucchini and then put it back in and finish it up. And you have this beautiful roasted chicken, which I like to serve as roasted chicken, mm -hmm. but I also like leftover roasted Can chicken. Can we try this? Yes, of Maria, course. this is like your perfect meal, of by the way. That's right, that have is, a yeah. Chicken. I mean, I like French fries, but yes. that, we're not having that. But I'm sorry, Maria. No. <laughs> I should have made no, we're fries. Not, we're not allowed to eat that. Mm. I think roasted chicken is the perfect mm. food. That and is yummy. It's good for weeknight family mm -hmm. meals. But Are you surprised at how your cooking, your passion, has turned into this incredible success? Well, you know, I think you nailed it. Just passion. If you if you are passionate about what you do, mm -hmm. it can you take you in directions you never thought you'd, you'd go in. And that's, um, I've had so much fun with Pioneer Woman because it started as mm -hmm. blogging. Mm -hmm. So come around um, and I want to show you what you can do with the chicken okay. if you don't want to slice it up and right. serve it as roast chicken. So you can shred it, mm -hmm. which is my favorite thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a beautiful chicken and wild rice soup. Soup? Oh, Onions, yum. celery, and carrots. Okay. And then I'm going to deglaze with some white wine, which okay. I love in any soup. It just adds mm. beautiful flavor. And it's okay. getting to be soup weather out there. It's, yeah, it's getting to be. Finally, did you have a hot summer here well, like we did? We had, we had a scorcher. <laughs> it seemed to go on forever. And then add some flour just to thicken it okay. up. And then you'll cook this for a bit. Do all and your then, kids cook? No. Oh, <laughs> Sadly, no. My daughter Paige loves to cook and she's a great cook. The rest mm. of my kids love to eat. So, uh, welcome to my plight. But I love to cook and so it's, it's, uh, What's it's that? chicken stock. Chicken stock okay. and then water. Mm -hmm. And this is so easy what wild is, rice. It's, oh, I didn't know it was that color. Yeah, it's not the mix that you buy in a box, oh. it's real wild rice. Um, Minnesota Look has that. has wild rice okay. that kind of comes from Minnesota, and then you basically cook it until the rice is done. And mm -hmm. look how beautiful it looks. That's gorgeous. Oh. And then you add the chicken in, obviously. Um, and I like to kind of cream a it up a little cream. bit. Yeah, you got. I to. mean, I, d I can't think of many dishes that I make that aren't made better with a little cream. <laughs> exactly. So you can add a little or a lot, and then let it simmer some more mm -hmm. with some aromatics, sage, and rosemary and thyme. Yes. 
And then I love to add Ooh. kale also. To at the, the soup? To the soup, oh, yeah. At the end, is that kind of the last Kind of at touch? the end, you yeah. just let it uh, simmer in the last few minutes. Tell us what this pasta situation yeah. is. Okay, so again, what you can do with the leftover chicken yeah. is make a chicken spaghetti casserole. And it's, I think, casseroles are just the ultimate comfort food and mm. this has mushrooms and mm. a little bit of wine mm. of course so mm. if you can spatchcock a chicken you can do anything in life. <laughs> you can spatchcock a chicken. We need a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> yeah. But really you can make soup and casseroles, enchiladas. Marie, so. this was these were all delicious, awesome meals. I mean they seem easy enough too. Very easy. Thank if you. it's not easy, I won't do it. Awesome. Oh, that's good. For these recipes, head to today.com slash food. And for more about Reese Cookbook, go to today.com slash shop. <laughs>Welcome back. We're back with Today Food. This morning's guest, you know her, you love her, Ree Drummond. She is known as the pioneer woman, and today she's showing us two easy recipes for a family feast. You've got a, a simple, easy pasta recipe. What are we cooking? Yes, so I am so into shortcut homemade ravioli, and what makes it shortcut is that I use wonton wrappers. So these are just in the store. And I made a little mixture of ricotta, parmesan, salt, pepper, lemon zest. Wow. And I just put a little, I mm. can't get too close to you guys, but put a little dollop in the middle of the wonton wrapper. And then I just take my clean finger mm -hmm. <laughs> and rub a little egg wash around the edge. Oh. And then take a second wonton wrapper and put it on top, line up the edges. And then you just want to press it together. Oops, I grabbed three. That's okay. It's, I'm doing this on the fly. And then just force all the air out. And honestly, if you can't make, make homemade pasta dough or you don't have time, this is such a great shortcut. I like that. And then you just can get an assembly line with your kids, make as many of these as you want, and then just drop them into salted water one by one. And look. All right, I love those. Little pieces of ravioli. Just Delicious. Fresh hey, and ready to go. Hey, Ree, can we, we only have a minute, but we want to get to that dessert, that, what is it? Ice it's box, ice yeah. box cake. Oh, yeah. Blackberry ice box cake. So the frozen pound cakes that we all know and love, I shave the top off, crumble it into crumbs, pour in butter, very easy, and then just put this on the stove top, toast the crumbs, mm. and then the cake that's left, you slice the cake into three slices lengthwise. I already started a layer, and it's cake, a mixture of jam, blackberries, and lemon juice, Yum. and lemon zest. Yeah. It's so fun to use a frozen pound cake because then you cut that whole well, step. Oh my gosh, uh, it you doesn't know, even look hard to re, re, It looks delicious. Something Savannah so, I could make. We're happy. Yeah. All right. We you just layer it kind of like lasagna. All right. Cake, jam, Cream, Re, we up. love you. We love you. We can't wait for your book to come out. Thank you for cooking for us. Uh, you can check Thank out her recipes girl. at today.com slash food.